my alarms, plugged in my phone, laid back, watched one minute of an episode of Seinfeld, and then I was in the dream state. Do you state, have an actual dude. clock? Like an alarm clock? One you, you gave you me. Oh, okay. I did give you a clock. But I, that's like a wind-up, like uh, old school. Yeah, dude. You actually use that? I sleep with it on my chest. Nice. No, I gave him for Christmas, like an actual, you would see in a cartoon. Yes. Uh -huh. With the two bells Tom on Tom and Jerry, top. yes. Yeah, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. My grandpa had that top. alarm clock. Yeah. Do you use an alarm clock or do you use your phone? I just use my phone. I use my phone as well. You know, if you turn it sideways, like if you have your phone on the charger sideways, it becomes a clock. Oh, really? I didn't like know it becomes that. like it's got the digital readout. That's awesome. Pretty neat, right? Yeah. Pretty the future. Neat. Tim bought one of those illuminating alarm clocks where it wakes you up with the actual. Um, sorry, this is my stupid computer. Um, it wakes you up with the actual daylight. So, like, it starts to increase its daylight vibes. As what? You, yeah, like it's. So it gets brighter and brighter and brighter? Yeah, but it's natural. It's in quotes, natural light. How long does it take to do that? I don't know. He he just right. You know, the man just awakes. I don't know. I wish I knew more about that. Because once the alarm goes off, I I'm I don't wait around. I, I spring out of bed. I think it's kind of like remember in uh, Coming to America when Eddie Murphy's getting awakened and they start like playing the little orchestra oh. comes into his yes. little balcony in his room. I think it's like that. I think that's how my husband wakes up every oh, day. So it's like naturally, just naturally. Listen to the rhythm of your body. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. So just not just an abrupt <laughs> like, my, like mine's an abrupt. Uh, like a submarine is... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mine's an angry uh, panic. Going down. Mine's Welcome to the Jungle, the song. Really? That's my panic. When it gets to Welcome to the Jungle, I'm late. So that's my last... Hell yeah. That's badass. Yeah. How do you do that? You just add, you know, whatever songs you have in your phone. You can just make it your alarm. Nice. Well, I have mine on... Sh sh I, let a, I let the Lord decide. Mm. I, let <laughs> D I let DJ Steve Jobs decide. I just go into my Apple songs and... Every morning. Oh, it's on shuffle, huh? Different song wakes me up. Yeah. Right on. Huh. Yeah, mine is as if a submarine is going down and That's my that's my final. Yeah. My final panic button one is like because I know that'll wake me up because it's annoying. Mm -hmm. If I, that one goes off where it's like eh, 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 and then I'm like, I'm ready to punch somebody. I come up swinging mm. almost. Yeah. I had to do one that's pleasant. So I have living with a hernia from Weird Al. Oh, okay. That's what gets me up. All right, right out of bed. Mm-hmm. It's cool. That's cool, man. Whatever, hey, whatever hey. does it. And we're all here. We're it's all beautiful. kind of well rested. I have a long mm -hmm. day today. Why? I'm, uh, I'm doing the career fair. Oh, that's right. At my right. daughter's middle school. Neato. Oh. oh, you look nice. Is this what you're wearing? Yeah, I wore a, you know, a button-down shirt. You're kind of cool, kind of professional. Right. Yeah. You nailed it, bud. Right. So they asked me last year to do the career fair at the middle school, mm -hmm. and uh, I couldn't do it last year for whatever conflict. And so they put me on hold for this year, and here we go. Yay. Here we go. The day is here. This is a big deal. They gave me a whole questionnaire. Like, oh, all right, good. the kids. Here's what they said here. They, the Dude, kids ask be, these questions? I'm going to be molding minds today. I'm like a mentor to these kids. Let's not go to <laughs> <laughs> First off, I don't know what other parent I'm going to be with. Doctor. Probably. Yep. Physician. Doctors, lawyers, nonprofit yep. cancer work, radio guy, former yeah. pro ball player. All right, let's see, eighth grade students uh, are learning about different career options. They will attend the district wide event, which is comprised of presenter panels representing 12 career clusters. Oh. Students have selected three areas of interest and will attend three 30 minute sessions based on those choices. Students have been provided with a list of questions to help them prepare for this experience. A copy of the questionnaire is included in the attached information packet, along with a detailed schedule and a map to the event location. Okay, because not it's not at the it's not at the middle school. It's at uh, one of the Wild community Wood. colleges. Yeah, St. Louis Community College. That's right. Nice. So, eighth grade career fair sample questions. What are the responsibilities of your position? And what are the responsibilities of my position? I, I should be prepared. You you wake up St. Louis. You entertain. That's exactly what I was going to say. You wake up St. Louis. You entertain people before they go to their jobs. You are literally the, the, you set the tone every day. I set the tone for people's days. Yes. Yeah. And I wake up St. Louis. What do you like about your job? The people oh, you work with. What do you with. find challenging about your job? 
the people you work with. <laughs> yes, in both cases. What is a typical work day like? I get up at 2.30. I'm angry. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's 2.30, cry for 15 minutes in the shower. Daddy's crying room, the shower. Yeah. Cry, and this way the water... You know, the water cascading over my body and the sound of the shower uh, will not, and my crying will yes. not awaken the rest of the house. Um, Jam out to a podcast on my way into work. Sometimes I lose my watch on the highway. That's it. <laughs> Are you able to work remotely? Yes. Eh. Yeah, you say that's why, actually what I do, a remote. You did a remote Ooh. this weekend. Dump out before anyone's in the building. Make sure and put that in there. Yep, and we're going to do it from the beach soon, so yeah. That's cool. We should do a beach podcast. Uh, what skills are helpful for success in this field? What skills? I'm sorry? What skills? You must be able to read. Reading comprehension. <laughs> reading, yes. And uh, Kids, stay in school. Communication. Reading, writing, arithmetic. Mm. <laughs> yes, a lot. Too much of... homework makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to someone considering this career? Don't. Any classes, extracurricular activities, or part-time jobs that would be beneficial? Start your own podcast. Yep. Now. In what grade is this? This is eighth grade. Uh, right now. Kids, you need to be asking for all the podcast mm -hmm. equipment right now. And then by the time you're of my age, which is super old, they're going to think you're super old, you will also be Although, successful. Yep. What kid wants to be on the radio? No no kid. But they no all kid. want a podcast. They all want to be no a social kid. influencer. Everybody knows podcasts. What, and unfortunately, what kid coming up wants to be on the radio? Let me say this. I bet there's some. You need to tell them that you are an OG social influencer. That's how you're going to connect to these kids, because you are. What's my social media? This right here. This right here. Yeah. I mean, radio. This right here. This is the OG social influencing career field, is radio. Look at you. You created it all. Trailblazer. Yeah. And you got Riz. Make sure you drop oh, that in. Oh, a lot of Riz. Have you heard about Riz, Yeah, kids? the kids will understand that. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I need to get down on that level and relate to them. Tell them that that's where it originated. You, you are the yeah. epicenter of Riz for. The I world. should just lie. Just like, tell I them it's a podcast it. that's on in everyone's car. <laughs> really freak them out. <laughs> they no, are not no, going to understand what you do if you don't say that. No, they can relate to that. Yeah. Like I am the host of a most popular podcast in St. Louis that is on in everyone's car in the morning. Yes, and they'll be like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" whoa. Do you know? Do you know Mr. Beast? Yes. You know Tommy Avocado? <laughs> What's that guy's name? <laughs> Nick, Acava, Nick, Nick Acado Nick, Avocado. Nick, Nick Acado Avocado. Do you know Mr. Beast? Dude. I don't think eighth graders sound like stoners yet. Um, I don't know, Ka. Uh, say Ka a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. say Ka a lot. What up, cuz? Hey, cuz. You printing out some words that you can drop just occasionally? Like the terms that we've talked about it on the show, I think you need to bring them. You know. What do you mean, like? Like all the different terms that the kids are saying. You're gonna need to. Yeah, you want to be. You want to be hip. Here. You want to be hipper than everyone else there. I need to be professional. Make sure to say like a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, what career-related accomplishments are you most proud of? <laughs> Missouri Broadcasters Award. That's right. Want Throwing a couple of those. First pitch. Want a couple A-lists. Want a couple yeah. uh, RFT awards. Are you going to bring them? Throughout the first pitch at a at a Cardinal game. We won't talk about that. <laughs> I know we won't yeah. talk about uh, that. I thought, How'd that go, Mr. Rizzuto? That didn't well. go well, kids. Ooh, sold out a comedy club, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, sold out the pageant a couple sold weeks ago. Sold out the pageant uh -huh. a couple weeks ago. Uh, does your job allow you to be creative? Yeah. Travel? No. Spend time with family? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, is your no. daughter going to be looking at you the whole time that this She's happened? really not thrilled about this. I'm sure. Not thrilled. Are you going to be like, I'm so-and-so's dad, and like wave to her as... that's That girl there is mine. That girl right there. What would be funny is because I guess the kid... So there's 12 different... I guess 12 different career fields. Mm -hmm. And each kid gets to pick three. She probably didn't pick the one I would be in. So if she she's smart, if she if she was if she's smart and she is, she probably wouldn't pick the one that I'm in, as to probably avoid all embarrassment, all embarrassment. Or she wants to watch you and make sure you don't mess this up. You know, she's kind of like you. She already warned me. Good. And she told me, "Don't f this up." <laughs> Does she want you to those lie? words? No filter. Those words, as I was driving her to cheerleading yesterday. Don't f this up. I go, whoa, man. 
Are you feeling it? You feeling like good about dudes? sure? Kids intimidate me. I'm very intimidated by teenagers. <laughs> and eighth grade is the worst. Yeah, seventh and eighth graders. Yeesh. The most judgmental people walking mm. around are seventh and eighth graders. They're well behaved. Kids though. do intimidate me. I uh, yeah, I, I I freak out in front of them, and I, yeah, listen, I got two at home, but other other, <laughs> other kids. I just want to be cool guy, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I want to be like, I want the kids to think I'm cool. Well. I'm going back to school today. It's pretty cool. Randy Randy Dangerfield. Man. Just start handing out money like he did in that movie, Back to School. Go off the high dive. When was this money? Eighth grade edition? I just want the kids to think I'm cool. That's it. Are you going to bring any of your face stickers to hand no, out? No, they said uh, you could bring visual aids, handouts. And other professional slash company related materials. Hand out your face. Uh, what am I going to hand out my face for? Hand out my face. Mm-hmm. Hand yeah, out kids, all of our faces. Sticker. This is our show. People are, are have them pick. They probably yeah, pick kids Team love Scott. stickers. It's, and mine's a scratch and sniff. So yeah, that's I'm fun. sure the, that I'm fun. sure the teacher's is going to love me handing out stickers. <laughs> what, we're, why they, wouldn't they? You know, it goes on lockers nicely. What are you getting out of this? We need new listeners. We what am I getting out of this? Teaching yeah. these kids right. I'm getting to mold minds. That's what I'm doing today. Hmm. Yeah. I'm getting to mold minds. I can't wait to hear about this tomorrow. I'm getting to be, yeah. You know, I'm I'm going to be an influence on these kids, a positive influence on these kids. What are you going to leave them with? What's going to be your? I don't know. Statement? I don't know how this is going to go. I don't know how this is going to go. Hmm. You got- this could go, you know, swimmingly well. Where the kids all leave whatever session I'm in, we're like, whoa, That's man, cool. that guy's cool. Do you have like other parents? Like, someone going to have to follow you, or are you going to have to follow somebody else? I have no idea. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Better hope you don't get. Should I just should I tell them when I get cool. there I'm the headliner? Yeah, the like queen I, opens yeah. for nobody. Yeah. Are like, you, I'm, I'll be your headliner tonight. Do you have a list of cool people that you've talked to on the phone? Or oh, you, that'd be hippie for kids. kids. You need to drop some any, names. These kids, if I drop any name. That's what I mean. You, these kids, if I say I. Sift through it. If I say I, uh, you know, got to interview one of my music heroes, Billy Corgan, from the Smashing Pumpkins, uh-huh. they don't know who that is. I know you need to select uh-huh. people that they will I don't know. No, I never. I don't do anything those kids relate to. <sighs> this is gonna be bad. Unless it's like Twenty One Savage. Did you interview him? No. Crap. I'm sure we've had someone. No, that they, they don't know to. anybody. Huh. They don't know anybody that would be an R over it. Jeremy's checking in in the chat. As a former eighth grade teacher, stickers are a must. Okay. Do we have stickers? We do. Yep. I have some in the office. Mm. All right. Give me stickers before I leave. Okay. We'll see. I'll let you. I'll let you know how this goes tomorrow. It's gonna go good. Again, it could be. It could be great, and all these kids leave there like, "Wow, man, that was cool." Mm-hmm. So that guy, that guy's got a cool job. Maybe I want to get get into radio one day. If things go south, do you have a backup plan? Do you have something There's cool no you're going to do? There's no backup plan. I don't go like juggle or, okay. or they, you know, Or they could leave going, wow, what a loser. Yeah, you're going to have to take some times before this whole Tell thing. Tell the kids you know Steve-O. Do the kids know Steve-O? Yeah. Can you say jackass to the kids? You got to, oh my God, you're going to have to censor yourself. Yeah, you could do some name dropping, dude. Dude. Name drop. You could start dropping some big names. As I said, who, who? That's a name. Drop! Yeah. The, Make, if I just, name drop anybody, the kids don't know. Well, think about it. You're going to talk to kids who are interested in radio? No, not necessarily. I thought they had to pick their groups they were in. That's true. So they are picking you. So if that's the case, these are folks who probably know Mark Norman. They know a lot no. of these. these are, remember, these are 12, like 12 and 13-year-olds. Yeah, but whenever I was that age, I was in. What 13-year-old is going to know Mark Norman? Really I was cool in all one. that weird <laughs> stuff. I mean, I was a fan of Emo Phillips, all that by that age. <laughs> Say you know Rafe. Be like, hey, you know the yeah. guy from the commercials? Yeah. Bring a oh, picture of Ray Williams. Yeah, Powerhouse. Powerhouse. You guys ever the, heard uh, of Young Grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. <clears throat> I'll, I'll give you the full All rundown right. tomorrow. Uh, hey, speaking of schools, uh, Fontbonne University, done. I know. Fontbonne University. Enrollment is down and financial issues, right? 101-year-old Fontbonne University announced they will close in the fall of 2025. Well, That's it. 16-acre campus on Big Bend and Wydown will be bought by uh, WashU. 
That makes sense. I'm trying to think where that is. It's right. It's behind Wash U. Yeah. And it's a beautiful area it's as gorgeous. well. It's gorgeous. It's right crazy. on the cut. Like, you know, um, Wash U, that big campus. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's on the back south. It's like the west southwest side of Yeah, Washington. what's that road that takes Wide you over up. to Del Mar? That's, well, Big Bend. Big Bend, yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so... Um, it's a great, I mean, and Wash U, that's great. That's perfect for them. Because honestly, it almost seems like it was Wash U. I always the thought it was. And then I thought it we was went to the Wash U campus for the first time uh, over the Christmas break because my nephews were in town. They're looking to go to Wash U. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. Never been back there before. Not bad, huh? Yeah, Not bad. You can bad. afford it. It's a cool place if you to could, be. <laughs> if you could afford $80,000 a year yeah. or whatever it is. I wonder what they're going to put there because they, they just built this whole new wing of the Wash U campus. So I wonder if they'll make that into housing or, or what. Uh, Fontbonne mm -hmm. uh, will be closing after the 2025 summer session. Uh, over the past century, 20,000 students have graduated from the school. Uh, Wash U has made an agreement to purchase the 16-acre campus in the next month or two. This is all from Fox 2. After many years of declining enrollments and a shrinking endowment, the school's board of trustees voted to cease operations. The school will not be admitting freshmen in the fall of 2024, but there will be classes through 2025. Uh, students who are unable to finish their course load by that time will be assisted with transferring to another college. Uh, the two uh. final summer terms and any credits above a full load next year will be tuition free. Hmm. Uh, the school says that this will help as many current students as possible to complete their degrees and graduate. Staff and faculty will remain employed until the university closes. Uh, university plans to offer severance packages to all employees. Uh, in November, Fontbonne announced significant changes due to a nearly $2 million in budget cuts. So they, they lost 21 academic programs, 19 faculty positions, but now they've decided to close up, border up. Wow. That's it. After 101 years, Fontbonne. Yeah, and they. It's done so. I guess they took over St. Joseph's Academy, so if you combine that, it's 183 years. Hmm. Wow. Because that was their first. Hmm. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's kind of sad. Very sad. Ah, oh, and uh, uh, what's his name? Bob Cas. Uh, Cass how do you say it? Uh, Castley. He's the uh, the city uh, city museum that's guy. That's his school. Hmm. There's a lot. Yeah, a lot of history there. That why Ray? Have you been up to the Washu campus? Yeah, I did the um, the 2016 Trump Hillary debate. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. As Ronnie Jenkins. <laughs> oh, that's right. Fun, you went man. there. It was fun. I went there as guy right. and got a press pass there, somehow yeah. from him. I don't even know how I managed to finagle that. But it was fun. It was and that campus is cool. So they kind of rolled out the red carpet. I got to see a little behind the scenes at Wash U, and that's an old campus. Yeah, when we were there. There were no. I guess the students were gone for you know winter break, so it was pretty empty. Mm -hmm. But I could imagine the hustle and bustle of a, of a you know of a daily. Mm -hmm. You know, of a daily student. What a cool place if you weren't from St. Louis to move and stay on campus Jeez. at WashU and then have Del Mar there and just being and able Forest to. Forest Park. Forest Park. I mean, what a great college area. That cool it coffee is. shop. Yeah. The yeah, it's a, it's a city in there. I never even knew. It's like a city within yeah. a city. Mm -hmm. I'd always driven by. And I don't know if they're booking shows anymore, but they used to have the Gargoyle. That's right. And there was so many good concerts over there. Yeah. Hmm. I forgot about a, the gargoyle. But it's such a funny room because it's basically just a little food hall area. Yeah. You know, as far as the uh, as far as the kids go, I was reading an article, um, and this is from a teacher in this is a teacher out of Virginia. It's a high school teacher out of Virginia. And uh, the headline of this article is why you should stop texting your kids at school. I guess it's become a problem for teachers. Mm -hmm. So I, I you know some schools have you check your phones. You know, have you check your phones mm -hmm. when you get to school? Um, you know, a lot of the schools like, hey, put your phones in your bags. I don't want to see them. And the problem is you have parents who are constantly texting their kids. Mm. Well, they're best friends. And the, well, and, the, and the teacher's like, hey, parents, knock it off. Yeah. A Virginia high school teacher keeps track of the text messages parents have sent students while sitting in his economics and government class. Huh. Text like... What did you get on the test? Did you get your field trip form signed? Do you want chicken or hamburgers for dinner tonight? Right. Hmm. This is parents not wanting to work. I'm going to just text my kid real fast, find out what's going on with them. And, and, and the teacher has a plea for parents. Stop texting your kids at school. And even when schools regulate or 
ban cell phones out, outright. It's hard for the teachers to enforce it. And the constant buzzes on watches and phones are occupying, and as the teacher says, critical brain space regardless of whether kids are sneaking a peek or not. Right. It's interrupting their flow. Like they'll hear the buzz and they can't... Not look at it. They can't not look at it. Right. They can't not look at it. Many parents stay in touch with their kid by, by texting, but school is a place for focusing on learning and developing independence. And teachers say, you can still reach your kid if you have a, a change in plans or a family emergency. Uh, how'd you do it before? You contact the front office. Mm -hmm. If the message isn't urgent, it could probably wait. Yeah. Can't and, imagine. And the teacher said, think of it this way. If you came to school and said, can you pull my child out of calculus so I could tell them something not important? We would say no. Right. <laughs> Emergencies I get, but everything else. Yeah, how'd you do on your calculus? You'll find out later, Ma. We're going to talk at dinner. And, and the teacher emphasized, like, hey, they're not saying parents are to blame for, you know, for school cell phone battles. Just they could do a little more to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like do, a little, like, do a little bit to help us out. Like, we already got a problem here with these kids and the cell phones. Made us halfway. Yeah. I wonder, I bet, I bet it's very minimal that that's the, it's not the majority you of parents. You think it's minimal? I do. I think that it, there's, hmm. the majority of parents do not text their kids. I don't, I mean, I'm just assuming. How often do you text your kids, Riz? Yeah. Zero times. Do they, te do you text back when they text you from school? Uh, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping they're on a break. Right. If they text me, I'm not texting. What do you want, hamburgers or chicken for dinner tonight? <laughs> they can wait. Plus, I'm making the decision anyway. I was going to say, I don't think... They don't get a choice. Yeah. Lucky. They don't get a choice. This not, yeah, this is not a restaurant. You're getting what I put on the plate. That's what you're getting. Um, when your kids are texting you stuff that could wait, like, can I go to Brett's house five days from now? Don't respond. <laughs> Is everybody trying to be efficient? So the kids are probably talking at the lunchroom. Oh, do you want to come over this weekend? They want to get that plan set because they're excited. And same thing with parents. You know, maybe there's something in their mind and because they work so hard. Oh, I'm thinking of it right now. I got to text my kid. Everybody's trying to just not forget whatever it is later. Uh -huh. <laughs> is that what it is? I or just, do. you know, thinking about it. I'm just going to text little Thatcher. I mean, I do that with Tim. I, he's in the, he doesn't text me at all during the day. Yeah, but he's know? an adult. I know, but... He can. It's not like he's got a teacher looking at him like, don't text your wife. You know, and sometimes I got questions and I text him in the minute, but then I got to wait a couple of hours, which is fine. Well, and, and the teacher's telling parents like, hey, tell your kids not to text home unless it's, unless it's urgent. And if they do, ignore it. <laughs> ignore it. You have to stop engaging. That's feeding the problem. Let's see how the parents are going to feel about this. Uh, Are you going to text your kids to tell them that you can't text them? Cut the cord from 8 to 3 o'clock. I just assumed they couldn't take their phones out. <clears throat> I guess I'm... E well, they're saying even if the phone is in their bag next to them. Yeah. Or in their pocket. They're still getting the buzz. Yep. And they have their wrist... Yeah, you know, if they got their Apple Watch on. I'm just imagining it looks like the classroom in Clueless. Remember that movie? Where they're all on their cell phones in the middle of... Whatever his name, Mr. Hand, his oh, class. Mr. Hand was... Uh, fast times. Fast times. I don't know. Uh, teachers out there, is this a problem? Is this a problem with parents texting kids? Parents, how do you feel? And the, again, this teacher's like, please, cut the cord from 8 to 3. And he says, many parents got used to being in constant contact during, you know, COVID. You know, when kids were, were doing, you know home online school mm -hmm. they have kept that communication going as life has otherwise returned to normal we call it the digital umbilical cord parents can't let go and they need to parents might not expect their kids to respond immediately to text although many do but when students pull out their phones to reply it opens the door to other social media distractions And then there's a whole anxiety over it. So I text my kid. He don't write back. I go, <laughs> something was happening. Is he sick? Right. What's up with him? What's going on? What's going on at the school? <laughs> yeah, why are we like that?
I, I, if somebody doesn't text me back, I'm like, oh my God, they're mad. Oh my God, they're I dead. Go, they're in a ditch somewhere. Straight, I go yep. straight to the negative. Of course. They say okay. parents are contributing to kids' anxiety by sending messages, tracking their whereabouts, and checking grades daily, which doesn't give kids space to be independent. Hmm. They don't need independence. Yeah, I tell you what, the whole, the whole uh, checking the grades constantly, because we have a program, I think it's called Infinite Campus, where we could go and like see exactly what the grades are. Like as a, like so if a teacher, if they get a test uh, and the test is done, we can go on to this to this website. Oh, that's and brutal. Tr- yeah, it's brutal for the kids. I tell my wife, like, hey, we you know, we can't be doing that all the time. Oh man. Wow, that's a weird situation. Because your kid has to, at some point, also figure out how to handle things for themselves. And they screw up a test. The teacher's going to tell them, like, hey, you got to change this. And they need to figure it out. I don't know. It can't be mom and dad. Imagine your parents being able to check your grades at any time. The only time my parents asked about grades or found out about grades was either the uh, the progress report or the report card. Right. Yeah. Cause you had, and I liked that because I had time to get my crap together. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. That's what the whole thing. <laughs> kid has to adjust and... Yeah, oh my God, I'm, 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 I got a, I, I got a C. Right. I got to write this ship here. <laughs> I got to write this ship before, you know, my parents find out. And you take it upon yourself to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and maybe do some extra credit. Yeah, but is that the right yeah. way? I mean, I maybe watching it happen in real time. Hey, your, st- your GPA is starting to slip. Let's, let's nip it in the bud now. I could see both ways. Me too. Okay. I wish my parents would have given a crap mark. I was a terrible student. And, you know, and I just had to try my best but at midterms. It just didn't go well because now I got all this extra pressure on myself. Did you, were you an interceptor of your report card? Like, yes. Did you know what, the day the report card was coming? Uh, yeah. And I got, I opened it up first. You know, you got it in the envelope. <laughs> You're like, oh, no. God. And then when, going back to Clueless, I love that movie so much. What if she tried to argue her way into a better grades? Like, I tried that, didn't work. Yeah, that don't work. That's <laughs> well, a movie. it did. Damn you, uh, Cher for Horowitz. Me. Seventh grade, it worked for me as well. Yeah, I got, did it all the time. <laughs> you did? Oh, you argued yeah, yourself time. a better grade? <laughs> all the time. Dude, that's great. That's, that's great. where I had that philosophy throughout until my last uh, class of college I flunked out of. But uh, it was, you can't flunk a friend. So I thought, if I'm a great talker through the class, you know, like volunteering, I'm sitting on a front row. You can't row, flunk a friend. And we have good communication all <laughs> time. We're at this. Like, I had teachers that I would flunk every test and I'd still get in. Dude, that should, be, that should be your <laughs> your epitaph. You can't flunk that, a friend. That should just be like an online course that you teach. You can't flunk Welcome a to, friend. Welcome to King Scott's Can't kids. Flunk a Friend. You may not be the smartest person in the class, but you can make the teacher think. That you like them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it did not work because I thought my math teacher in college was That's like... That's so homies, funny, dude. Nope. He, he gave me a note. What a philosophy. I love Sit that. Sit up front. Always cooperate. Yeah. Just try to get by on pure amicability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Your charm, kid. the whole thing. It's the only way you're getting through. Yeah, because it started in seventh grade whenever I was in this math class and our teacher was gone most of the time. Mm-hmm. So we always had substitute teachers and they were expecting me to study and stuff and i was just terrible so i was getting f's and so my mom just had me go in there and ask him ask the teacher whenever she was there if i could just at least get a c and she's like yeah, yeah and she gave sure. me a c wow oh, that's I like, nice wow. i was not that's a good like- homework doer yeah i would lose points because i didn't turn in my homework but i would do good on the tests mm. Mm. so i would go and lobby for myself in that way and then I would also, like, I had a couple of teachers, man, that, like, if you could make a strong argument, Mr. Cheek, my English and Spanish teacher, dude, I'd go up two letter grades. But but you see, if they logged all your homeworks, like, so if you didn't do well in the homeworks and they logged all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's a different time. Par- and your parents had access to that, they would go, oh, my God, Rafe is doing terrible in this class. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you turn it around by the end of the... Yeah, so by the end of the yeah. semester. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, you know, I'd make arguments for like, I'll do extra credit. I'll, what if I went back and did all right. my homework assignments? I, I, I was lucky enough to have the neighborhood, like uh, the neighborhood over from us, got their report cards and progress reports the day before us. <laughs> so I knew. You'd hear the beatings. I knew when it was coming. <laughs> so I knew to get home first. 
<laughs> and make sure I got that mail. Is it like the end of Ferris Bueller? You like jumping yes, over hedges? Jumping, yeah, I'm <sighs> jumping on trampolines, over fences. Making sure I get that, make sure I get that report card first. Right. I mean, that is a feeling I forgot about. Yep. The anxiety. That was my first level anxiety of, per, you know, disappointment. Oh, God. A it's D. coming. A oh, D. my God. Uh. And then I had to prepare myself with what I was going to say, you know, because that's a conversation. Just hand it over. Yeah. And I, start, I started trying to negotiate, like, here's why. My yeah. mom didn't have it. My dad yeah. was a little easier on me, but my mom was like, absolutely not. No, and then my mom was like, uh, you know, I don't want this to open up until I get home. Oh, uh, that rule? Yeah, they were, that rule was enacted. <laughs> it's okay, Mom. That rule was enacted. That legislation was passed. Yeah, that uh, legislation was passed. Did you figure out how to the 33rd open it meeting. And close it? No, because it would come on like, uh, uh, you'd have to tear the perforations on the three <laughs> sides. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. In high school, it was to tear the perforations at the, you know, fold uh, yep, and then tear right. yeah. on the three sides, and they were... They were sent home that way. Aye. Ah. Now you just go onto a website and you and you can see what the kids are doing in real time. Mm -hmm. Access to too many numbers sometimes. No privacy anymore. Access to too many numbers can drive a parent crazy. Sure. And therefore drive the kid crazy. You know, some teachers say they, they get emails from parents right after returning graded exams before the class is over. Before the class <laughs> is over. Yeah, the stress for teachers has to be immense as well. Yeah. Gosh. Because, the, you know, kids feel the need to, to report grades immediately to parents now. <laughs> it could tell, be on a uh, delay. I would tell my, you know, my daughter would come up. She'd go, I didn't, do, you know, I didn't do good on a, on a math test. I go, okay, two things here. Number one. You got to study. You got to do better in your math. Number two, it's Friday at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Why are you telling us this now? Right. <laughs> well, this is when I'm home. Like we weren't gonna look. Like we weren't gonna look. Why would you tell us now, right before the weekend starts? <laughs> she's doing what you did to your mom by looking yep. at the card. You're. She's trying to get ahead of you guys. No, I would hide the card. <laughs> but she, your mom would. I would find hide it. it and give it to him on Monday because oh. I want to have a good weekend. That's my point. I see. I'm you got to be smart. Oh, man. You got to be smart. Well, Why are you yeah. telling me this on Friday? <laughs> but you wouldn't want to hear it Monday We all want to have good weekends. You want to have a bad week at work? Now you're thinking about that. Now you're in school. She's trying to let you marinate on that for a little bit. I'm just saying. There are a couple lessons to be learned here. <laughs> Ray, if you feel me on that? Sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you should study for math. You should get good grades. But if probably, you don't, more importantly, why are you telling me this on Friday? For your own good. Does she get more loving right before she tells you a bad grade? Like, I really love you, Dad. No. Oh, good. Okay. Hmm. Maybe she thinks there'll be a reward for the upfront. There's no reward honesty. for honesty. <laughs> There's no reward. You're just supposed to be boss. honest. You hear it from yeah, me you're first. You're supposed to just be honest. Well, maybe just she thinks if, if you hear it from me first... There's some integrity points right, to be yeah. scored. You're gonna yeah, see it integrity. Anyway. There's no reward for that. It's like, hey, good job. That's what you're supposed to. Well, you're good. My son the other day, hey, dad, I took out the garbage on my own. I go, good. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> give me a medal. You're supposed to be doing that. Right. That's your job. You have a couple responsibilities. <laughs> That's in him indirectly saying, you're not telling me you love me enough. Get out of oh. here. Yeah. I do everything oh. with Tell that kid. Tell your son that you love him oh, more. Oh, man. <clears throat> you need to be hugging your son. I more. do everything with that kid. <laughs> Dad, I took out the garbage on my own. You'd have to tell me. Yeah, good. Have you said thank you to him in a while for doing that when he doesn't tell you? No. Oh. Maybe you should start saying thank you a little bit on your own. I'm an advocate Each for the kid. Each kid has their, their jobs at home. Okay, the girl's got to bring in the mail every day. Uh -huh. The boy's got to take out the garbage. You know, there's little things that they're responsible for. A little thank you goes a long way. I'm just saying. Your thank you is not me yelling to do something. That's the thank oh. you. <laughs> that's that's reward enough. Am I right? Well, anyway, listen. Hey. Parents, stop texting the kids at school, right? They're driving teachers crazy. Mm -hmm. It's on you a little too, parents. Yeah. Don't be complaining. Oh, the kids are on the phones all the time. Kids are on the phones all the time. Yeah, you're texting them all the time. 
cut the cord from eight to three. Let them do their thing. And you need to work too. What are you doing, mom and dad? Like, you need to. You have a job you're doing too from that time. Every little stupid question you have doesn't need to be answered immediately. The yeah. kids at school. I also find it kind of hard to believe that the majority of the texts are from parents. I feel like those phones are buzzing from kids mm. texting in other oh, classes. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, I'm sure there mind. is a. I would say the parental texts are probably secondary, the, yeah. secondary or. Because if you're maybe, maybe by far the, the least amount of texts you get are from your, from your parents. Yeah. They're just saying, parents, you are the adults here. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be feeding into this problem. That's it. Man, right. you know that kids, though, their best friend or someone they're texting all the time, their no name in their phone is probably mother or dad. Oh, yeah. So a teacher looks like, yeah, it's my mom. My mom's well, and, yeah, and, and, you're probably right. And listen, every, if you got a kid, you know your kid spends too much time on their phone. And, and do kids realize, that, realize this? Some kids do. According to a new report by the Pew Research Center, 38% of teenagers acknowledge, yeah, we spend too much time on our phones. I spend too much time on my phone. 27% admit they spend too much time on social media. Teen girls are more likely to admit they spend too much time on those things than, than teen boys. That's interesting because all they've known is the phone. A lot of these young people <laughs> have only existed when the smartphone is available and they've started on their iPads because that's okay. Yeah. Parents need that every now and then when they're little. And so it's good that there at least 30, 40 percent of kids are acknowledging that. I'm surprised that it's that high. That they even know that it's bad. To, yeah, because yeah. it's been second nature to them literally <laughs> their entire lives. Mm. 39 percent of teens say they've cut back on social media, although they didn't ask how many of uh, those cuts have stuck. And that said, more than half of them say they spend the right amount of time on, on the phones and social media, and more than 60 percent haven't cut back on them. But a whopping 95% of American teens say they have access to a smartphone. And in a separate study, about 33% of teens say they use at least one of the five major social media platforms. YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook. Almost constantly. Mm -hmm. Do you guys get excited when we all have iPhones in here whenever you get that little update on Sunday and it says your screen time is down 15%? A little bit. I do too. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, good job, lady. Do you think you're on your phone too much? Yes. Yeah. Rave, do you think you're on your phone too much? Yeah, of course. I'm on it right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Monitoring our stuff. Yeah, like, but that's for work. I'm still on it. You're still, there's part of me that when I am in my little station here, 10% of me is checked out because you're, i got to manage all these things. And so I, I get mad at myself sometimes. Even on the air, where I'll just be like, I just missed the last two things Learn said. Or I oh, missed what King Scott. You know, you know what I, what I mean? I get mad at myself. And it's because my brain's not, it's full. I get mad at myself. Here's what I get mad at myself when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm on my phone, is if I'm on my couch, I'm watching TV, You're on your other and phone. I got something on, and I'm on my phone. Me yeah. Too. Yeah. Then I get mad at myself. I go, what are you doing? So, that, so whatever is on the TV, whatever you put on... Out of the million choices you have on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and YouTube, you picked exactly what you want to watch on TV. Right. But yet you still, mm -hmm. still cannot keep that damn phone out of your hand. Well, I want to see what everybody's posting on Instagram. Are we going to go to a split screen one day yeah. where I can just magically, my half my TV is Netflix, stupid stuff I'm watching there, and then I got Instagram on the other side, and I can just one Priority eyes over can. here and yeah, one eyes Apple over there. I'm sure we have that. That technology. The Oculus thing. I get mad the most, probably, same as the both of you, when I'm at home and I know I have stuff to do. Like, I know that I'm like, oh, God, I got to send these invoices out. I need to get this done. It's like stuff that I know is like to keep my life in order. And I'm like, I just don't have time. But then I look and I'm like, oh, bro, you've been on Instagram for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Doing nothing. And you get yep. sucked into it without even realizing. Sometimes I'll go into another it's room. that way. Yeah. And then I'll mm -hmm. see my phone. And then I'll go, oh, man, I want to see what's going on. Oh, I got a text from somebody. Oh, hey, somebody put me in their close friends on Instagram. And then I'm. it's an hour later. I go, oh, I did not fold this laundry. Yeah. What's yep. And we are brainwashed Or, or it could way. be even the phone is, pre is preventing us from actually relaxing and not working. Yes, absolutely it is. Yeah. That too. Emails coming in. Emails coming in. What I find myself looking at is news stories. So I'll have... Yeah. Seinfeld on. Mm -hmm. And I'll be sitting on the couch, my feet are up, and I'm 
scrolling for news. But at least you're doing that for work, even though I think that you should turn off and not But I got to shut it off. But also, um, you know... That, I mean, when you think about how brainwashed we all are and how it is second nature to just pick up your phone and see, oh, what's happening and how it's the psychological experiment that they did in the 60s where they ring the bell, Pavlov's dog, right? Sure. We are all psychos and we yeah. are addicted to our phones and we, I know we say that and there's headlines about that and we're talking about it on the radio right now, but really think about that. Yeah. That's well, what, I, I think, mean, they're made that way. Even the algorithms of like Instagram, though. Like, I took a, you know, because it also, the other thing that sucks is it's part of our industry, especially as a comedian. Like, I have to be on this, these, all these platforms. Yeah. You can't just be funny and go to the club anymore. You need to be present on all these platforms. So I feel like an obligation to be on there sometimes. And I'm like, man, it'd be nice to just, if I quit comedy and I got out of this, I'd probably like, my friend list would probably be like nine mm. people and I'd be chilling on a mountain somewhere. Well, I'm going to tell you this. When I'm doing this career fair day thing today. Mm hmm Someone had a good idea. And about a kid that. pulls his phone out. What are you gonna say? Give me the phone. Give me your phone. <laughs> oh, I don't know if he yeah. said this earlier. Give me the phone. But someone did email in and say, "Don't even say you're on the radio. Just say you're on YouTube." Oh yeah. Just oh yeah. Like, I do a live stream on YouTube every morning. Every morning. Point. Yep. And he's, he's like, they'll at least they'll tune in for that. Which every they, kid wants to be. A which YouTube they player. simulcast on the radio. Don't even say radio. That, that they simul <laughs> yeah. podcast. On to I'm a I'm a I'm a YouTuber podcaster radio radio yeah. <laughs> great exactly radio that's how you should because the they are young hilarious. people that's I am a no I'm I'm being honest you are well, that being is honest, honest. You yeah it is honest still, yeah you, yeah that is honest I can't wait to know how this goes when is this what time today uh noon do you want me to come in a tracksuit and like a boombox and be like your hype man oh dude be great that would really ladies and my gentlemen. Daughter. Do the splits, ow, ow, ow. and you can come out, and we can like hold hands and do that worm yeah. thing back and oh, forth. Yeah. Right. She would that love that. Dude. This guy's cool she would as love that, dude. dude. Your daughter would love it. Yeah. If Uncle Rave so, showed up, yeah. If Uncle happy. Rave showed up, then I called her out in the you'd audience, raise. and I was like, "Where's my little flyer at? Yeah, we'd, you'd Where's my little cool, flyer? Get out of here! Cool, the cool factor for sure." And then I just toss her up in the air. During so your entire gonna be, presentation. It's going to be radio personality Riz, probably, you know, by somebody's doctor, dad, or mom. <laughs> Some kid's dad's a pilot. I'm a gynecologist. What do you do? Oh, boy. Oh, do, uh, speaking of pilots, <laughs> did you hear about the uh, the latest thing? With the... The sleeping pilots? No. Oh, boy. Once again, <sighs> my point being made, but go ahead. What point? Just that I think pilots get a little too much credit, but I haven't even heard the story. But go ahead. Let's talk about the sleepy pilots. Headline, captain and co-pilot fall asleep for 28 minutes during the flight. Oh, my God. And the plane didn't crash, did it? No, but it went off course. I'd say so. But it went off course. So the captain and co-pilot of a flight in Indonesia carrying 153 people fell asleep for about, you know, 30 minutes. It happened back in January. We're hearing about it now. This is on a return flight from uh, Kendari in the Indonesian province of southeast Sulawesi. You know exactly where that yeah. is, Scott. Yeah, it's near uh, Sulawesi. This is on the, uh, the, the, so they were flying from Kendari to the country's capital of Jakarta. Okay. 32-year-old captain of the Airbus uh, A320 took a nap after getting permission from his co-pilot while the plane was at a cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. Captain goes, hey. Co-cap, I'm going to just, you know, take a snoozer. You got this from here. So about 45 minutes later, the captain wakes up, and he's like, hey, co-pilot, if you want to take a snoozer, I got you. But the co-pilot said, no, I'm good. Why don't you go? No, you could still rest. So captain goes, all right. Hey, if you're offering, I'm going to go back to sleep. So the first officer, the co-pilot, uh, spent roughly the next 20 minutes communicating with air traffic controllers and flight attendants before... Uh oh! Inadvertently fell asleep too. Hmm. Golly. Uh oh! So now you got the captain and the co-pilot snoozing. Twenty-eight minutes later, after the co-pilot's last recorded transmission, the captain wakes up, sees the second in command asleep. They had flown off course. <laughs> After waking the co-captain up, the captain answered another pilot's call on air traffic controllers who were trying to get in touch with him, claiming, oh, uh, radio communication problem. Good. See? Well, how did they know they were sleeping then? The bad grade. Because 
air traffic control and other pilots were trying to get a hold of him. And they could but if he said if it was a communication problem, how I don't know how out? I don't know how they figured out they were sleeping. Oh, okay, I'm sure they could. Isn't everything recorded? <laughs> the snores. Yeah, the snores. <laughs> the plane later landed in Jakarta without any further issues. Investigators didn't. Yeah, have not revealed the pilots' identities, but said they were both Indonesian nationals. Uh huh. And at least they're well rested. And I'll say this: if a Greyhound bus driver falls asleep for 28 minutes. It's problematic. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. You said it yesterday. I'm just we're not giving that we're not giving those Greyhound bus men and drivers. women the respect You're they right. deserve. These yeah. guys are just air bus drivers. And they're not even doing a well, good job. This, you know, they, the, the pilot the plane was probably an autopilot maintaining, you know, cruising altitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure she went off course. You know what they gotta start doing? What? Making the seats less comfortable. How about don't oh. sleep yeah. while you're flying a plane? You know, right. How about nobody sleeps while the plane's in the air? <laughs> I'll, I'm cool with that. What do they make? Two hundred and what a year? Yep, uh, too little. I'm yeah. going to go ahead and institute some new plane cockpit legislation. <laughs> that both dudes stay awake, or gals, or whoever's up there. Yeah. And if not, if someone's going to sleep, they shouldn't be able to lock the door. Like, they, if someone's going to sleep, there needs to be a second person. There always needs to be two awake people in the cockpit. Whether it's a flight attendant goes up and sits shotgun just to be to shake the captain right. in case they fall. There should always be, like, there should be some sort of uh, fail-safe besides, like, you good? I'm going to snooze. You good? You good? All right. You sure? All right. I'm going <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take a Z quill yeah. and knock off real quick. Is Bradley Cooper from A Star is Born yeah. driving this plane? Tate. Turn around. I just want to look at you one last time before I fell asleep. <laughs> Tell me something, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so the report, I guess the safety report acknowledged uh, the safety actions taken by the aircraft <laughs> operator and considered uh, that the safety actions were relevant to improve safety. But it did make some safety recommendations after over, you know, Insane. Adding guidance on checking pilots' physical and mental conditions and carrying out uh, cockpit checks. Mm. So, that yeah, happened. That, another thing, wow. like, flight attendants, how often do they check the front? Well, I mean, you're assuming that at least one of the pilots is awake. But I thought they check quite often, don't they? I have no idea. Just to make sure they're, you know, no one passed out up there or something. Right. And I have no idea. I don't know how any of that works. I listen. I just I'm along for the ride. I bought my ticket. Go to yeah. my seat. I don't know, I'm man. In your hands now. The way things are going, I'm just anymore. I'm I'm not in the sky. I'm a land animal. I'm not going out on a cruise. No. My stuff going out on planes because these people man. are nuts. Between the people pooping in the aisle, the pilots falling asleep, the bolts not being on. Do you enjoy driving? No. <laughs> yeah, but you, we're getting the. This is just like the. The twenty four hour stories. news cycle effect. Getting the bad stories. We're only getting the bad. But you can't but but you have to admit. Uh -huh. There's a lot more bad stories now than there have been. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that's because we know around the clock. Yeah. I kind of want to go back to the time where I didn't know, and I know that makes me an a hole. <laughs> a very privileged a hole. But I'm like, I don't need to know everything. I don't think anymore. I think I've had enough. Ignorance is bliss. Too much information. I'm checked out. Too much information. I don't even. I'm not even on my phone reading the news. I get it from you. Yeah, but how can you solve the world? <laughs> and every problems? day, there's. Yeah, I'm, I can't. Riz News. All the news fit for crippling fear. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Uh, yeah. Hey, Justin on the instant feedback says, "No offense, but isn't Riz attending career uh, attending career day literally reenacting City Slickers Billy Crystal scene where he attends his son's career day and has a mental breakdown?" <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> well, we have that to look forward well, he to. He was 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 Billy Crystal in radio for City Slickers. Was that his job? No I don't think so. Way. I watched that not too long ago, and I did, my ear, my radio ear. I don't remember the up. beginning of the movie. I don't know if he was a radio guy. Was he a radio guy? Did he have a mental breakdown at his kids' career fair day? Let's see here. Because I'm well on my way. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Can happen any moment. Let's see here. Lack of sleep. Saltiness. I don't know. All right, so you may be done with flying. You hear it all the yeah, stories. Yeah, he's a radio ad salesman. A radio ads. He that's was no in. Way. Okay, that's a different stress. Yeah, radio sales. Yeah, it's that's close, a different though. stress. Yeah, not this. Although in the same field, which is wild.
Yeah. Um, Airbnbs. We've all stayed in Airbnbs. Yes. Yeah. Every experience good. Yes. Good on my part and theirs. I'm a great guest. I have five stars. Whoa. Good on your part. You've had some pleasant experiences, Rafe. Uh, you've stayed in Airbnbs. Every every experience good. No. Okay. Not. Uh... I don't think I've had any nightmare Airbnbs, but I've had a couple that were, like, suspect for sure. Some sus Airbnbs. You? Every experience has been good, but do you wonder about cameras inside? I do. Mm -hmm. You just got to look for... The key to Airbnb or any of that stuff is, like, if you're getting one that has doesn't have a lot of reviews, you're rolling the dice a little bit, you know? Yeah. You got to kind of look and be like, all right, this, a lot of people stayed here. There's 186 reviews. They're all good. All good, yeah. You know, but I've had to roll the dice. <clears throat> I've also, like, as a comic, you know, save money. Early on, I've taken, yeah, so I've taken for the, some. Looking for the cheaper ones. Yeah. Yeah, where it's like a shared room. Yeah. So, oh, or nice. it was like, there was like a comic that was renting out. <laughs> I don't even know what it was, dude. It was like renting out a closet for people to sleep in. So it's like, gets pretty wild. I'm that. talking specifically, you're worried about cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Uh, mm -hmm. I just assume I'm being filmed. Either yeah. in the sleeping area, and I get in a bathroom. Mm -hmm. Again, access to, to too much information. You go to YouTube, and you can look up, and there's a million videos of people finding cameras at Airbnbs. Right. I don't know, staged or whatever. And now, And now they have ways where you could... You know, try to find the cameras. We shine a flashlight, a, the smoke detector, and if the, you know, if the, if it's blue, uh, you know, there's a camera up there. Oh, you've yeah. seen, you've seen stuff like that, right? I right? have. I actually read it I, recently. It's crazy that you're bringing this up because I just, while I was on my phone and should have been working last night, I read an article about this, and a guy actually went and tested all the methods that everyone says online. And all these devices you can buy, like these radio and like shining lights and wow, all. Wow, so the little scanners and everything. And they they hid. They literally tested it. They hid like 150 cameras in this Airbnb, and they sent them in with all the tips and equipment, and found like 12 of the cameras. Hmm. Oh, because he's like this flight thing. It, ha it has to be perfect. It has to be perfectly parallel. If you hit it at an angle, you can't see it. Yeah, so yeah, if it's yeah. hidden in anything. And basically debunked that, like, he's like, yes, some of these methods work if the cameras are lazily hit. But he's like, mm. you're probably not going to find them if they're Listen, even remotely I, I, hidden well. Again, I'm already assuming I'm being filmed, so I'm putting on a show. Same. Me Either too. Way, yep. Putting on a show. I'm doing a little dance. Mm -hmm. mm. Strip tease, whatever. Hey. Yeah. Man. Somebody's watching. I'm in show business. You know? I'm, I'm always on. So you aggressively those... masturbate in the common areas. Yeah, yeah. So always, you win. Yeah. Now, in the common areas, I have seen cameras. And so, is that okay? Not anymore. Really? Because it was okay up until yesterday. Oh. Legislation? Airbnb said they are, the Airbnb has come out and said they are banning use of indoor security cameras in listings globally. So some homeowners, or so homeowners, will not be able to spy on guests indoors. I wonder if they'll wow. push back and say, well, what about hotel lobbies? Because when you go to a hotel to stay, yes, there's no cameras in your room. But in the hotel lobby and all of the common areas, there are security cameras. Great yeah. argument. Yeah, but that's for the security of the hotel staff. As well as the building, if there's yep. destruction to the building. Right. But in Airbnbs, though, like, almost all the ones I stay at with, like, pools, they'll be, like, there's a camera. They just put yep. up a warning. Like, there's a... The camera outside. Security yeah, camera facing the pool and patio and common areas outside. When we stayed, we were up in Wisconsin. was the last Airbnb I was at. There was a security camera in the living room. Mm -hmm. In the corner. And it wasn't hidden. Yeah. Do they tell that? Tell it to you in the description? Uh, it, they may have. I, I, didn't, I didn't book it. Uh, but I saw it. And I understand that, hey, we don't want parties. Yeah. It's also wild. You have to... Definitely watch what you say in Airbnbs. Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that, man. You, you can tell if someone's having a party without filming the living room. Like, people, if you're sitting there with your family, like, watching TV, and you're on vacation, you paid money for this place, like, there should be some expectation privacy. of privacy. Uh, privacy? Yeah, yeah, well, man. 
Because they so, could do the outdoor. I guess the camera. Well, could, outdoor cameras are allowed. Yeah, it's like so your little kids too, man. Like your little lobby. kids running around. It's your kids, your family, your kids running around in their underwear or something. Like somebody's just got footage of that. Like that's, that's weird to me. Outdoor weird. security yeah, cameras, yeah. And, and it was a little weird. I, to be honest with you, I'd be thinking about it the whole time. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in that house. I forgot about it. I I went. I saw it because dude, it was sweet Airbnb. It had Big Buck Hunter, like the game. <laughs> yeah, it, it had like two video games, like full size arcade games. In the living room. That's cool. And the camera was kind of trained on on the games. I guess maybe for the safety of the games. Expensive equipment. And you kind of, dude, big buck hunter. That's cool. It was awesome. You have to pay quarters or was no, it free? No, free. <clears throat> Damn. Damn. Free. You're like Tom Hanks and big. And yeah. yeah, and you and you forget about them, but they were there. Uh, again, outdoor security cameras, doorbell cams will be allowed. But hosts will have to disclose them in the listing. So guests know they're there. They previously had a similar rule for indoor cameras. Uh, they couldn't be in private areas like bedrooms and bathrooms, but they could be in common areas mm -hmm. as long as guests were notified. Even if they promised they were, quote, switched off during your stay, that's no longer the case. Airbnb, Airbnb it says most homes did not have security cameras, but hosts who do have until April 30th to get them out of there. After that, any host who violates the policy will face consequences like being kicked off the platform. Dang. So that's it. But the, uh, what's the other one? Not Airbnb, the... Uh, VRBO. VRBO. Yeah, so that's still good to go? They're owned by the same company. I think oh, is it? Seriously? Pretty sure HomeAway, VRBO, maybe, that, maybe, it's, maybe those two are the ones that are separate. I know a lot of them are the same. Parent company. Uh, like there's HomeAway, VRBO. Those are under the same banner. Let me look it up real quick. Expedia Group. Wow. Ah. So no more indoor cameras. You're right. I Airbnb still, and I Expedia still Group. will put on a show, though, because that's the way I roll. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, before we hit the break, just a little fun exercise before we uh, before we go for the team rhythm of the day. And uh, had our first break in the morning. A uh, little would you rather. Yes. We'll go around here. Would you rather. Real quick answers. Have a whole bunch of these today. All right. Learn, would you rather have spaghetti for hair or sweat mayonnaise? Spaghetti for hair. Rafe? Spaghetti hair. Oh, spaghetti hair. Spaghetti already hair have... for me, too. All right. I already have spaghetti that. Spaghetti hair Even though is. I do love mayonnaise, but I don't want to sweat it. Yuck. Mm. Would you rather have eyes that can film everything or ears that can record everything? Oh, eyes that can mm. film everything. I'd love to be able to rewind and go back to some moments. And not be able to hear them? Yeah, uh, just see them. Just see them? Mm -hmm. I'd rather just yeah, see them. I don't know. That's tough. I think I'm going to go. I think I'll do the visual as well. Rafe, eyes that could film everything or ears that could record everything? Uh, probably eyes that could film everything because I could get an interpreter to read lips. Read lips. Well, what? But you could only see it. Well, what's the point of the recording then? That you could find the only one that could hear it. It's like watching old home movies. No, yeah. oh, I would. Head. Yeah, I'd say. I'm gonna go for the visual. Same. I, uh, Isaac can film everything. I'm gonna go for the visual. Would yeah. you rather uh, never be able to go out during the day or never be able to go out during the night? Ooh. Probably. Oh God. Would you never? Would you rather <laughs> never to be able to go out during the day or never be able to go out at night? Probably the night. Never be able to go out at night. Mm. I love the sun. I, mean, it kinda has I love to the be. moon too. Damn it. I feel more alive at night, but there's something about the sun that makes me feel good. I don't know. You have to now eliminate all outdoor activity all outdoor activities at night. Right. Like what can you not get during the day that you can only get at night? But I get kind of scared at night. So if I wanted to go out by myself, I'd want to go out in the daytime. So I will I'll be out in the daytime only. Fire pits are out now. I know. Everything's out. The stars. Oh, You'll never see the stars. Oh. Oh my God. Or you never You'll see, never see the, the moon. Sun. I know. Yeah. You're a moon gal. But I am a moon gal. Let's see. It's this tough. is a hard one for me. I don't know. This I'm is tough. You have a very dual personality in that way. That's very tough for you. It is. Scott. Uh, never be able to go and uh, never be able to go out during the day or never be able to go out at night. 
Well, I love sneaking around to stuff, so nighttime's really good for that. It's but... hard to peep during the day. Yeah, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah, that's yeah. It's hard to peep in people's windows during the day in Overland. So. But I think, uh, yeah, I think I got to get rid of the nighttime, and I'll just be stuck in there, and hopefully yeah, no fire Yeah, I got to get rid of night, too. Please, uh, no fire oh, tonight. It pains me. It pains me. I love the night. Ah, oh, great. The nighttime is the right song. time. Yeah, daytime's I, I love the night, too. I guess I'm at night. You're keeping night? Yeah. Are you uh, eliminating day? Damn it, yes. Like you're like a vampire. Because the so stars. Dude, that's what I was going to say, dude. I'm going yeah. full vampire. At least that's kind of sexy and like, I've just leaned into that. I've and leaned I am into the sunshine, vampire lifestyle. Right? You are. I'll promote my own. I'll glow. It's cool. I'll be like Mr. Burns. I'll get a little sense. I'll get a little vitamin D yeah, bed or won't something. Don't you get yeah. like seasonal affective disorder? I will. I'll be super depressed, but man, I'll be writing some great songs. Emo. I yeah, said dude. To my, I said full, to full emo. Full emo. I'm with you. Let's do it. You know, it's been nice out. The skies have been clear. Now, you know, the sun's going down after seven. I feel happier. When it's night? Mm -hmm. No, I feel happier in the day. In oh, the so, day. You're, so you're staying in the daytime. Okay. All right. Would you rather celebrate the 4th of July with Taylor Swift or Christmas with Mariah Carey? Christmas with Mariah Carey. Hmm. Yeah, Christmas. With you rather spend Christmas with Mariah or then the 4th of July the 4th of July with Taylor yeah. Swift Travis will be do, there with the fire. How do cats so. respond to Well fireworks? do I yeah maybe if I get Travis I might celebrate go the 4th of, the 4th of July. I'm assuming Travis is coming along Nick Cannon will be with me and all the kids with Mariah 4th of July with Taylor Swift or Christmas with Mariah I will Mariah. also be having Nick Cannon's now, babies She is now the self-appointed queen of Christmas Yes hmm. How does Jesus feel I feel uh -huh. like I would be able to last around Mar Mariah Carey maybe a half hour and then go, this is enough. I've, I've had enough of this. Okay. Yeah. I feel like the fourth with Taylor would be my would be my thing. That's your move? I think that's my move. Yeah, and I right. love Christmas a ton. Yeah, how do your cats behave during the fourth of July? Hate it. They're And they hate, well, they love Christmas they because claw they, claw the, stuff they the climb loud... the trees. No, they hide. They're okay. sad. Man. So Christmas with Mariah for you. Oh, yeah. Christmas with Mariah for you. Well, you guys kind of got me on this whole Travis being it. Because if Travis comes, my home's might show up. And Bob Seger's probably going to be there, too, because it's America. So He may or may not. Bob Seger's not going to be at Taylor Swift's barbecue. You, you know. can't keep sweetening the deal like that, or I'm taking fourth for... If Bob Seger's there, I'm going fourth of July. Yeah, you, sure. know that you, are, you, know, you know that you're going to Taylor Swift's fourth of July celebration. You're not sure if, if Travis is going to be there or not. He may show. He may be there. I'm gonna go. I'm changing. I'm going T Swift only because I think more celebrity guests are likely to do a Fourth of July party. Everybody has Christmas with their family, so you're only going to get Mariah on Christmas. You don't know who's showing up at that barbecue, dude. But we're doing Mariah Carey unplugged from the '90s, so she will sing the stupid song. But then it's going to be all of her hits after, like I'm "Always going, Be My Baby." Yeah. Oh, I'm going T Swift. Who's fourth. to say she's singing? We're just hanging. Oh well, I would like her to sing, to man. Me. Yeah, I think you gotta. Yeah, I'd rather, if I'm going to have to spend dedicated time with one of them, it's going to be 4th of July because Christmas, I'd rather have the option to do whatever. Okay. So I'm going to T Swifty. All right. Would you rather labor under a hot sun or extreme cold? Ooh. Wait, acid? Would you rather labor under a hot sun or extreme cold? So work outside. <laughs> yeah. They both Swamp suck. ass weather or... Probably hot. Cold as ass weather. I, I hate yeah. being cold, like way cold, and I feel like I'm not as productive. And at least if you're hot, at least you're getting a tan. <laughs> and you're sweating. And you're, you're getting sweating. rid of toxins. Right. And... I'm going now, the hot. other way is you could put on clothes. You could bundle up. Yeah. Yeah, it's still miserable, though. And you can't get both, as much done. Both are miserable. Both are miserable. Is both are miserable. Fun? I'm going cold just from military alone. Like being out. <clears throat> I've done both. I've been out when it's like an 18 below and you're out for three weeks and it sucks and the ground is frozen and you got to dig foxholes in the ground and it's terrible, but you can sleep at night because you can, you can get warm. You can get in a sleeping bag and get yes. warm. Like you can have a reprieve from the cold. There is no reprieve from the heat. Well, I have an ice bath in Dang. my fantasy. Where you, I just jump when in. you're hot and then you lay, you're sweating all day. And then you lay down at night and try to sleep, and it's still like swamp ass, ninety Sticky. six degrees and humid at night in yeah. Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and your bugs crawling. Balls are you. sticking to your leg, and you're yeah. just like, this is the worst. Mosquitoes are getting on your eyelids. Yeah. It's the no, miserable. But just, but just think strictly about the work part of it. I know, but I'm just saying, like, I can't get, I can't, can't separate the two, man. You can't feel your hands. 
If it's too cold out, you're wear trying gloves. To, at least you can you feel your gloves. balls, you know. And you're it's also hot. working, so you're you're creating heat. You're generating. I, I would go the extreme cold for me because I'd rather ball. You can't yeah. when Same. you're hot. You're hot. You're hot. There's no one doing it. You're just hosed. Yeah, cold. Cold that makes more sense. And it'll be brutal. I'm not even trying to say that I won't hate it. I'll just hate it a little less. But my world, it's still got that perfect snowfall everywhere, so it looks really nice That's the nice. whole time around. Oh, it's just cold. I love your brain. Would you rather have a hamster-sized dog or a dog-sized hamster? Hamster-sized dog? Are you oh. kidding? Oh, my God. Yesterday, I was on a walk, and this little... And I'm... Chihuahuas are cute, but I, they're not, like, my top-tier dog. I love them, but... This itty bitty little baby Chihuahua dog comes running out in the street, and I like, of course, swooped down. And this little girl, it was her little puppy. It was so freaking cute, and it made me want a little itty bitty dog so bad. So yes, itty bitty hamster. I dog. would say hamster sized dog because if I saw a dog sized hamster, that's a capybara. Yeah, those things exist. And I don't want one. They're so. You cute. want one? No, Hell no, dude. You, would you want they a capybara no, like running mean. around your house? No. They're so cute. No way, dude. I feel like those things are going to do damage. Yeah. Well, sure, but... I don't know. You could probably bring one in the Hamster house. Hamster-sized dog. Hamster-sized dog? Oh, yeah. Same. Yeah. All right. Would you rather get lost in the wilderness or in a dangerous city? Oh, no. Bears or gangs? Oh, so no. So you're lost either in the wilderness or a dangerous city. We'll end on this one. Oh, no. I go... All right. Fine. One more. One more. I guess I'm going... Oh, man, I'm going to regret it. Getting eaten by a bear, but I'm going wilderness. I don't want any weird men coming at me. <laughs> wilderness or dangerous? Wilderness yeah. all day, man. That's the dream. To get lost in the wilderness? Just to be out there and never return. Yeah, it's going to be good. You're nah. assuming you're alone in the wilderness, too. I am alone, yeah. Yeah. I got my... Uh, my weapon nah, I feel like I could talk fun. my way out of trouble. <laughs> Can't talk to a bear. Nah. But I have a kookery knife. i got to take it somewhere. Rafe, dangerous city of the wilderness. Uh, neither really frightens me that much. Um, maybe city just because I'm assuming it's like the wilderness where you're so remote that you may not make it out. And you can't control the weather out there. Like if I'm dangerous part of the city, I could probably. I, think I feel I could, like I could find safety there. I could schmooze my way out. That's I mean, right. I, I might get the crap beat out of me or something, but hopefully survive it. I don't know how dangerous either. Are we talking like Escape from New York? Yeah. Like Haiti? <laughs> oh, like yeah. Haiti now? Now I'm going wilderness. Oh, by the way, the guy that's in charge there, he's not the butcher. His name is Barbecue. Oh, damn. Yeah. That's He's, too fun. I saw a great meme. Let me tell you something. That's too fun of a nickname for a guy eating people. Right. Let's go butcher. I don't like that his yeah. name's like Barbecue. Uncle Barbecue. Right. Well, there's a good meme out there with uh, the movie poster from Barbie, and it's him driving a car and his barbecue, and it's pretty awesome. The guys, they call him Barbecue. Sick. Not in a good way. I'm going Dangerous City because I believe my uh, my skills as a master linguist. You did pretty good in New York that time you got robbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know. As a woman, I'm going wilderness because the bears won't hurt it. me in the same way the man can. Well, so. yes, we get that. All right, one more. Would you rather have, would you rather always have B.O. and not know it or always smell B.O. on everybody else? Oh, God, I will have it and I'm sorry to everybody. Yeah, me too. Oh, <laughs> heck yeah. I don't want to smell everybody else's B.O. No. Yeah, me neither. I don't even like, nah, I can't handle it. <laughs> I yeah. literally can't handle it. I, I can't had somebody. Stinky people. Yeah, I'm kind of getting to the point where, <laughs> yeah, I'd rather just stink to be damned than have to smell. I can't even. I can't handle it, man. Like, I'm starting to get... I've had a good run of... Uh, or a bad run of bad breath. Is it me? Is it anyone on the show? It's Tell not us. anyone on the show. You're super paranoid about it. I'm super paranoid about it. I think we both smell amazing. Thank you. I want to say that. <laughs> uh, and no one in this room, no one in this building, in fact. But I have have had run-ins in the comedy scene where I'm like somebody, and you're in the back of the club, somebody's trying to tell you a secret and whisper, and I'm like, get the hell out of here. Yeah. Your breath, I'm getting to the point where I'm ready to start telling people. And I know that that's going to be problematic in my life, but I'm ready to be like, hey, man, this halitosis is a problem, brother. Mm -hmm. Like, you, mm. it. I don't know if you're a smoker or if you, like... It's a lot of my friends that smoke weed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, really, like never stop. 
Right. A lot of comedians are just smoking weed. They're lighting joints off joints and smoking weed, and they get that like that dry mouth weed yeah, breath. And they're drinking like, coffee. Get the hell, yeah. it's they're smoking weed and drinking coffee. Just it's fine. Do that, but cigarettes. like brush your teeth. Yeah, pop Might as well in. somebody take a dump in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gross. Like, do you remember the outside. teachers that or just do do. Do you ever have teachers as a kid that would smoke cigarettes, drink coffee, and then come talk to you? You know, yeah. it's like, gross. I remember that. Or it's just straight up, there's something clinically going right. on. Right, yeah, halitosis, it's a thing. Halitosis is pretty cool. All right, listen, be careful out there, everybody. Careful out there. <laughs> All right, it's uh, brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill. St. Louis is home for Blues Hockey from Columbia, Illinois. William Goodrich is yeah. out. Yeah. Columbia. Uh, William listens to the show every day on his way to school and always checks out the podcast for what he missed. Loves the chemistry between all the members of the show, the games, and the variety of topics that are discussed. Uh, William looking forward to meeting the Riz Gang very soon at upcoming point events and rocking his team Riz jersey with pride daily. William Goodrich from Columbia, Illinois, is our Team Riz member of the day. Get super sweet Team Riz member of the day soccer jersey. Get yourself signed up, 1057thepoint.com slash Team Riz. All right, we got news after the break. Uh, topics to be discussed. Coffee, I'm sorry, California may ban a certain type of coffee. Uh, here's what to know about the latest bill threatening TikTok. And new car? It might be telling your insurance company you're a bad driver. <sighs> yep. It is 719. It's the Riz Show. No, I don't got to say it anymore. It's the Riz Show. Not presented right. by anybody. Oh, yeah. That's right. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, guys. We are no longer presented by the Fast Lane. <laughs> Uh, traffic and weather, learn coming at you. And it's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening on Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets. Get yours at WWTRaceway.com. An accident on the shoulder of northbound 270 before Doherty Ferry. Also, emergency vehicles westbound 44 just before Big Ben Boulevard. The left lane is closed there. 74 will be the high today. 49 is low. Kind of cloudier than yesterday, but still kind of gorgeous. Right now, 50 degrees at 720. this place for eh, a little over a year now and every time I come up here I discover something new whether it be a new structure or just something hidden in, in part of the woods here so a couple months ago just spotted something in the woods and I what the hell is that so I went exploring and let me show you what I found check this out Other people walking in the park. You're walking in the park. And then you see off in the distance a man get down on one knee. Oh, he's popping the question. And he takes the ring out. And she's looking. And she's looking. And she's disappointed. Because um, he didn't get the ring at Mortuary's Jewelry. Mistake number one. Mortuary's Jewelry, they've been around for 40 years. And I love hearing the stories from John Royce or Dan Royce about people traveling from places like Chicago. They come from Chicago to St. Louis to go to more tourist jewelry. You don't think they got jewelry stores in Chicago? They got jewelry stores aplenty. But more tourist is so good. It's an experience like nowhere else. They will travel five hours to come to St. Louis. They will become your family jeweler. If you are looking for that engagement ring, I understand you want to do your due diligence. You want to shop around. Fine. But do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Go to more tourist first. Give them your budget. They'll work within the budget. Get a nice ring. Okay, here's what they have to offer. Then go around. I guarantee you'll be back. It's Moritz Royce Jewelry. Go to ninjabling.com. Get the phone number. Get the address. Make an appointment. See what we've been talking about for a lot of years now. They've been my jeweler for 15 years now. Moritz Royce Jewelry, ninjabling.com, where you get the jewels, not the shaft. It is a very, very big day in the land of uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper fans everywhere, and I am so unbelievably honored to be joined today by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea, St. Louis is saying hello to you. I love St. Louis, and I fondly miss the raucous nights, the Mississippi nights that we used to have over there. 
and um, hello to everybody. Love to one and all. Man, it's it's really great to hear your voice, but also, too, it's wonderful to have a new Red Hot Chili Peppers album that is out today, and John Frusciante back in the Chili Peppers. Flea, can you kind of talk to us a little bit about how he got back into the, to the fold with you guys? And I know that you guys had maintained a friendship even when he wasn't in the band. Were, you know, were you guys still jamming and playing together when he, you know, when he wasn't a Chili Pepper? You know, we occasionally jammed, um, and we always were friends, and we'd get together and talk. And, um, you know, it, it was difficult, too, because he left, and, you know, and we got someone else to replace him who was his friend. And it's sort of like, you know, when you break up with a girlfriend and then you start dating their friend or something. You know, it's like being in a band with someone is a very emotional and, you know, close experience. So um, it, it was you know, our relationship has always been intense. Um, but, I, you know, I remember there was, I think there's a lot of things that led up to him coming back all the way around. But I remember one particular evening, he and his girlfriend were over for dinner with me and my girlfriend. And we're having dinner and he and I were like off in a room talking. And um, I remember I just kind of said, like, I never really touched on it, even though I would think it. And I, I said, John, I, I... You know, sometimes I really miss playing with you, man. Yeah. And um, and I said it. I couldn't help it. I just burst into tears, you know. It was so emotional for me to say it. And and he looked at me, and I saw him do the same thing. Like, we're both looking at each other, and he's like, me too, you know. And um, in that moment, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I was just like going, going to Anthony like a few days later, and I was like, I think John would come back, you know. And um, just kind of open that conversation, and one thing led to another, and next thing you know, we, we made that decision, wow. you know, and, um, uh, you know, all together. And it was very difficult to part ways with Josh, who's a beautiful person and a great musician. Warm weather is just around the corner. In fact, it might be here right now to stay. And that means you're going to be outside a lot, and you got to start thinking about your yard right now because with the spring coming in here, that means a ton of rain. And that also means you're going to have a lot of weeds popping up in your yard, including crabgrass, which with a massive amount of moisture, you'll see that the oldest crabgrass can actually come back to up to 15 years. So that's sitting in your yard waiting to destroy it. But you can get ahead of that right now by reaching out to Green Envy Lawns. And it's super easy to reach out to Green Envy Lawns. All you got to do is go to their website, greenenvylawns.com, and uh, request them to come over to your house and get control over your yard so that way you can really enjoy it. Because Green Envy, they use products that are formulated for our soil right here and our weather conditions, turf types, and they don't use some generic national you know, product. They use one that's formulated for St. Louis area, the Missouri soil. So c- reach out to Green Envy Lawns so you can have a beautiful yard all summer. And not worry about the crabgrass. Plus, all their employees are screened and background checks. So you're going to have professionals on your property, and it's fantastic. I love Green Envy Lawns. I've used them now over a year, and uh, I encourage you to. So go to greenenvylawns.com. That's greenenvylawns.com. To, well, let's get to Moon's uh, list of things he likes to achieve. Before list. There's some cool ones on here, man. There's a couple cool ones. Let's, so let's start with number one. Moon wants to drive... A monster truck, which oh, is rad as hell, heck and yeah. I also want—I at least want to ride shotgun. Yeah, heck yeah, man! Growing up in St. Louis, big, big Bigfoot fan, as everyone should be. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, we've gone to this Monster Jam. You know, Monster Jam always invites mm-hmm. me out and has had me out for years and years. And uh, take the kids, and it's just been the most fun experience. Every single time it comes through, we do a whole family event with it. And every time, it's, you know, Scott and I have done this, where we get down on the on the uh, on the track on the dirt beforehand for the pre-show. And when you're next to one, how can you not be driven to want to drive it? You, you, you sit there and you go, one. I am compelled. Yeah. You have? I Oh, yeah. I drove the tailgater. Dang. Uh, a couple years ago. Did not know that. Uh, it's There's no second seat. It's only one seat, so you can't ride shotgun. Dang. That's fine. Man. That's better. Uh, it and I want to go. Probably, and I have pictures, uh, probably one of the coolest things I've done. I got to drive it over at the, uh, the racetrack. I didn't know. I didn't you get did. to crush any cars. You didn't? No, just candy. They let me they, uh, by myself in, in the car, bum, like here. Yeah. Now they did you have the foot pedals and everything. Uh, the whole thing. Oh, wow. see, 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 see. This is what I want to do. The whole thing. Dude. Now the guy who whose truck it was did have a kill switch, and they have those. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. 
You and they have those just in case it got out of control. Just, try, like, just in case drove it got out of control. Like a remote kill switch. He's going wow. for the backflip. Yeah. All That's the trucks dope. have them. Can I ask was, this? That is a great bucket list item. And yeah, that one's that awesome. is great. In my head, every monster truck has that gas pedal that looks like a bare foot. Yep. <laughs> With a claw. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like it just looks like five toes and a bare foot that like, says life rips on it or something like that. You got to <laughs> climb in, you know, through the bottom. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, doors man, don't open. dude. I am jealous no doors. of this. <laughs> yeah, this one's so cool. I hope Corey All Rummel. Right. Is the one that lets you ride or I'll drive his truck. Now, would you drive the old Bigfoot that I see sitting? Yeah, but that ain't what I'm looking for. You want a I modern? Mean, that that would be sick. Like there is big, modern Bigfoot. Yeah, they have the, the modern, the Hot Wheels one. Oh, okay, it's I haven't in the seen the Hot Wheels circuit or whatever. Fence and deck. Oh my God, with the nice weather, hanging outside. I uh, had a neighbor over on uh, Sunday, and he goes, "Man, your deck is awesome." I go, "Oh, somebody's got deck envy." Oh yeah, you love my big deck. You want what I got? Well, if your deck is in is in disrepair, I mean, think about calling Chesterfield Fence and Deck up and doing a, a complete rebuild. That's what we did. So we bought the house. The deck was it was okay. It, there were loose railings, and it got to the point where enough is enough. Let's get a new deck. They did a tear down. We did the Vecca deck. Uh, we did the underdecking. So when it's hot and swampy out, we got the fan going underneath the deck. They did all the concrete work themselves. We couldn't be happier. Uh, but before that, though, when we got Cat the dog, we needed a fence for the yard. Wanted to make sure the dog is safe and, you know, running around and stuff like that. And we got a gorgeous fence from Chesterfield Fence and Deck. If you mention the Riz Show this month, you'll get 20% off your next installed outdoor project. It's Chesterfield Fence and Deck online at ChesterfieldFence.com. After all, who doesn't want a bigger deck? All right, so uh, here we are uh, backstage, the Stiefel Theater. Mr. Nathaniel Ratliff, how you doing, sir? I'm great. I've heard there's been some uh, going back and forth about the pronunciation of the theater because this used to be the Keel Auditorium, right? It was Keel. Right. Then they changed it to the, oh gosh, what was it before this? It was the Peabody. The Peabody. And now the Stiefel. Okay, Stiefel. Well, what are you hearing on your side of things? I've heard people say Stiefel, Stiefel. Back to the program, phone number 314-624-3833, 618-398-3833, the Mick Ultra Studio Cams. 1057thepoint.com slash Riz, the socials, at R-I-Z-Z, show your emails. Riz show 1057thepoint.com, instant feedback through the 1057 The Point mobile app. What did you say the uh, weather's supposed to be today? Nice? Yeah, 74. 74. A little, a little like, hazy clouds out Man. there. Yeah. Get out there. It was awesome again last night. You know, sun yeah. went down after 7 o'clock. Windows open. Windows open. I know. I, like, was, I took a bath, had all the windows open, and my hair was, like, air drying with the wind. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm in a better great. mood. Yeah. Yeah. I feel good. Great. All right, now for the doom and gloom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Not everything's bad. Not everything's bad. <laughs> Thank you. I feel All great. Right. <laughs> I feel 18 great. 18 dead in an earthquake. I feel great. Now let's, let's ruin that. Time for some news. Oh, yeah. We're going to do some news. And your news, sponsored by... Your news is sponsored by Energy Stars Heating and Cooling, the preferred partner of Ameren, Illinois, to make your home comfortable and affordable. Now, it's important to remember that people who like decaf coffee are not psychopaths. Right. Uh. They just want to enjoy coffee without the side effects of caffeine. But maybe it's not healthier. Oh, check this out. Whoa. There's a report that lawmakers in California want to ban decaf. Hmm. Now, the issue is that many manufacturers use methylene chloride to remove the caffeine from the coffee beans. That's a chemical that's also used in paint stripper. Oh, no. Which has been labeled a probable carcinogen after being linked to several cancers, probable? including blood and breast cancer. <sighs> Uh, Coffee oops. manufacturers argue that the chemical is completely washed out of the beans uh -huh. after treatment. Plus, any remnants would be burned off when the beans are heated to 400 degrees dur during roasting. But in a 2020 study by a consumer group, 10 out of 25 decaf coffee brands they tested contained the chemicals. With brands like Amazon Fresh and Kroger's being the worst offenders. Uh. Even then, even then, the levels were low. 
They didn't exceed the FDA's max level for safety. The bill in California has several hurdles to clear before becoming a law. If it does, the state will ban all decaf coffees using this chemical by 2027. Why? Man, I'm glad I don't drink decaf. What a... Whew. Already, what's the point? Of decaf? Because it's then, still got a little caffeine in it. I drink it. Do you? Why? I like the ritual. I've been drinking coffee since I was six years old, and whenever I started having some That's heart issues so last short. year, no, we, I we, decided... We got it. I, That's a good point. I So, I love the ritual. I love the taste. And so now... And I hate it. I hate to admit, I buy decaf. And so, on the weekends, I have to have decaf because my heart rate gets too nuts. My wife drinks, drinks decaf, too, and I go, why? I know. Well, What's the point? I respect later. the ritual part of it, actually. That's a, actually a good argument for it. But I'm just like, why would you... Any chemicals. Like, why would you... <laughs> well, they're in everything, so it's unavoidable. I get that, but, like, if you're using paint thinner chemicals to burn, like, what... Why would why is why is there an acceptable level right. of that at the FDA? I agree, and I, this is the first time hearing of this chemical. It's going to make well, me rethink how I'm buying For what it's coffee. worth, for what it's worth, the National Coffee Association says the overwhelming weight of independent scientific evidence shows that drinking decaf is safe. Of course they do. Yeah, they yeah. also say that about the a FDA. lot of stuff that right. is banned across the globe except here. I, this will make me rethink how I'm buying my decaf. Already I do support local. Like, I buy Caldi's coffee all the time. Like, buy the beans. I love Caldi's, right? yeah. And so now that will make me look into their practices. What, you know, because I, to be honest, I didn't realize how caffeine was taken out of coffee. That's just something I accepted and didn't think <laughs> deeply about. And now yeah. I will think well, about And there that. are other ways to decaffeinate coffee, including uh, including processes using carbon dioxide and water, but they're more time-consuming and, and ex expensive. And who has time for that? Now, like it or not, California has been tough on potential carcinogens. Last year, California became the first state to ban four candy chemicals linked to cancers and other health problems. Whoa, let's not get crazy. This is candy we're talking about. There's going to be some susceptible carcinogens in candy. <laughs> now, there is a site where you could check your brand. It's called checkyourdecaf.org. Starbucks, Duncan, and uh, McCafe use He's on chloride. It. I'm logging in right now. Tim Hortons, Nespresso... Pete's and uh, Stumptown don't. Yeah. Tim Hortons for the win. See St. Louis, bring him back. No call these listed it. here. You're good. We should be good. You're golden. What else do I have? Stumptown, sometimes I buy that. Yeah, Stumptown's yummy. Pete's is good. They use Swiss water to decaf at Stumptown. There you go. Uh, the House Energy and Commerce Committee has pushed through a bill to ban TikTok on all electronic devices. TikTok could be banned from all U.S. app stores unless the app itself spins itself off from its Chinese link company, ByteDance. Yeah, the uh, Activision C former Activision CEO wants to buy it. But they say so this weird. once a year, dude. Yeah. This has been news for two years. Yeah, running. but I think this is the first time it's gone this far. Like ByteDance has around five months to sell TikTok. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll so see. the clock is ticking. Like legislation in the, the house. The clock is ticking. We'll see. But TikTok. I thought didn't Trump pass something where they had to do it somewhere in the U.S. Uh, no, I th I thought it was passed. They can't have it on any government devices. Right. Well, that was one thing. But this is such a funny thing that we can't that they want to ban this but yet everything else is made Listen, in stop. china I and don't know. do we like this because no i was like i was looking into this okay so legislation is headed towards a vote to the house that would require tiktok to be sold or banned in the united states this bill dubbed the protecting americans from foreign adversary controlled applications act would ban ByteDance owned sites and apps that would also give the president whomever that president is moving forward the ability to ban other apps in the future that could pose a national security risk or i think about that and i go Wait a minute, like, what? What else will be banned yeah. then in the future? Well, my phone was made in China, so. But the the this ban too is really weird because with the TikTok's one of the few platforms that doesn't seem to really suppress either side of the aisle, and so politicians hate that because there's no controlling like they could with all the other but stuff they, they can make you. TikTok is it? You are not free speech on TikTok. Like, if you have any no. words or you are talking about well, anything yeah. that is like considered violence, or violence, violence, like even sex, like you have, they have to spell oh, yeah. sex S3X. Mm. So the it's, right a little, it's, it's a little weird. TikTok so, will take your stuff down so fast. Yeah. yeah. It's like as a comedian, it's almost, there's times it's not even worth being on there just because 
they'll it's so it's the most restrictive platform i think hmm. well I, so I was, do you think it's good to should we do you think it's all right to get rid of I, it listen or? i don't know i i don't know the intricacies of this story uh i don't know what's on the back end of this app yeah i guess we I don't know either. i know the ceo of bite dance has spoken in front of congress before and says you know we're not stealing your info but of course, that's the CEO of ByteDance saying right. we're yeah. not stealing your info. Well, do you think that this oh. Activision CEO, Bobby Kotick, he's he's mentioned in a in passing that he might actually consider buying it? I, all I know is that that the kids were mobilized over the past couple of days to call their Congress people to convince them not. So this is what mobilized the kids. Sure, like this is what the got the kids interested <laughs> in politics. Yeah, or well, that's a good start. Yeah, hey, you know, if you if you know, you want this, you got to make a call. You got to call your congressperson. And they did. And they did. Hmm. The big thing a couple of years ago, I'm trying to find an article, and I found one, but it was like, uh, let's see, when this 2023 was that TikTok. There's a different version in China that protects kids. Yeah, it's, right. It's called well, teenage mode, and well, they, and they they're shut only allowed it down. They're only allowed, yeah. They were only allowed forty minutes a day, and, and, and they shut down. shuts down. But here, <laughs> and they were saying like that was on purpose. Mm, yeah, they're like hooking kids. That's why everything on TikTok's geared towards young kids. It's geared towards like the dances and the, and the goofs and the. But and it's to keep them on the app and not learning. Right, I, wow. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but aren't there yeah. kids? Are, aren't the kids in China banned from using social media after a certain hour? Yes, that's what I've heard. But yeah, and also. Steve Jobs, remember his kids weren't allowed to play on the computer during the weekday. They had no cell phone access except on weekends. Yeah, that's every every successful tech company. Yeah. That's the one thing they, they all share in common is they don't let their kids use. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, use the tech. Yeah. <laughs> um, you might want to practice your carry on bag game before your next flight. Delta has become the latest airline to raise the check baggage fee. Seventeen percent price hike raises the cost of checking luggage on Delta uh, to thirty five bucks in the first bag. If you bring a second bag, the fee has gone up from 40 to 45. Remember the last couple of weeks, American United, Alaska, JetBlue Airways also raised their check bag fees. Hmm. Man. Southwest holding strong on that free check bag, baby. And Young when democracy. Is, when is that going to change? I don't uh, know, but it's groovy now. So is your new car, you know, with a touchscreen and, and it's got smart features, mm -hmm. is it? Spying on you? The New York Times just did a big story on how your or how car companies have started sharing our driving data with insurers. They So insurers pay for the data. And if they don't like how you're driving, they will up your rates or even double them. So the article mainly talks about GM, but, but most of the major car companies are doing it now. They basically trick you into using free apps. And the fine print, which no one reads, says they could share your data with third parties. One app called OnStar Smart Driver is pushed as something to help you become a better driver. GM confirmed they use it to share select insights about hard braking, hard accelerating, and any time you drive over 80. Oh, my god! If you enable it, you can, you can unenroll at any time, but you might not even know you signed up. Right. So car dealers get bonuses now if they if they sign you up. You wouldn't know unless you looked at the fine print like really carefully. Folks in D.C. are aware of it. Just last month, uh, Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey uh, said it could be illegal under the Federal Trade Communication Act as deceptive business practices, but so far nothing's been done. Industry experts say if car companies want to do this, they at least need to be upfront about it and give us a warning we'll actually see. It's not a rare thing, by the way. They're they're tracking millions of drivers. So if your insurance rate went up recently, that might be why. <laughs> really? Well, Dang. they need to disclose that to me then. That's like, the whole hey, problem. lady, wild. You're going too fast. All right. How do you know that? And then we can roundhouse. That's ridiculous that they can just increase without saying why. Yeah. The insurance that's company. Amazing. Yeah. All wow. because of what they deem is safe and isn't safe. Because eighty. Like, how Out in they... Montana, you're going 85. Who cares? Well, and also, like, maybe I have to get around somebody yeah. that's going 90. Well, I'm, I'm, if you do it once, they're not going to raise your rates. Well, well I'm, maybe if it's you very are consistent. chronically, <laughs> if you are chronically over 80, or I'm, you know, I'm, who knows how how far over the speed limit 
a certain amount of times, your speeder. rates are going up. That's wild. Well, um, back to the old vehicles. Now, the million-dollar question here is what happens when Americans inevitably start ingesting these things. Uh, Tide is rolling out a new product called Evo. Uh, that's kind of like Tide Pods, but they're tiles. Instead of, instead of pods with liquid, they're fiber tiles with six layers of soap woven together. Hmm. They don't look look that different from laundry tablets, but what do I know? Hmm. Uh, they're hawking them as a greener option. Uh, Tide Pods aren't great for the environment, and neither are those plastic jugs the, their liquid detergent comes in. Uh, but bonus, the new tiles don't look uh, nearly as delicious as Tide Pods. They look like oh, Triscuits. Good. They're all white and pretty boring to look at. I'm down. Now, Tide Pods debuted over a decade ago in 2012 and had their big moment when the Tide Pod Challenge hit in 2017. That's where the kids <laughs> on TikTok were eating them on purpose to get clicks. And they want to ban TikTok. But the original controversy was they looked like candy, so toddlers were eating them. Mm -hmm. The new tiles just debuted at South by Southwest in Austin this past weekend. Uh, Tide is rolling them out to stores in Colorado next month and the rest of the U.S. later this year. Um, end of an era. It's been four years since the pandemic first started. And while most things have reverted back, a couple things have settled into a new normal. Uh, and this is one you may not expect. Uh, chewing gum sales are down Aww. by a lot. By a lot. To the point where I should ask, do you know anyone who still chews gum? I do. I have no yeah. idea. I know a whole bunch of people. Yeah, didn't you see that they are trying to market chewing gum as an anxiety uh, killer? Reliever. Yeah. Yep. Which is interesting because I chew plenty of gum and I'm still full of angst. Uh, gum purchases dropped by nearly a third in the U.S. in 2020, which makes some sense. You know, for one, we didn't need our breath to be fresh since we weren't, you know, around anybody. But the weird thing is, gum never rebounded. Last year, gum sales rose less than 1% to 1.2 billion units, which is still 32% uh, fewer than in 2018. And globally, sales are down 10% from 2018. Sales in dollars is back to pre-pandemic levels, but that's partially due to inflation. Hmm. The average pack of gum cost 271 last year compared to 170 in 2018. That's a hefty 59% increase. I don't oh. like chewing gum, though, because of how it, you get air in your belly. You know? I love chewing gum. Yeah. So I kind of switched over to mints for a while, but then I missed. Yeah, I like the chewing. I like chewing gum because also supposedly it helps clean your teeth if you're eating the right ones. But have you guys tried pure? Yes. That is the best of the best, even though it lasts like 10 seconds. 10 but seconds. There's nothing in it. I know. Uh, it, it, it wasn't just COVID that broke people's gum habit. Uh, you know, four other contributing factors may be. Uh, one, there's, there's a trend of limiting sugar and eating foods with better ingredients. Even sugar-free gum often has artificial sweeteners. Two, people may be increasingly concerned about the litter from used gum or the grossness of it. Yeah. There could be changes in generational trends. You know, some experts think chewing gum peaked with Generation X, those born between 65 and 1980. Millennials have generally shown less interest in gum and candy, while Gen Z seem more interested in novelty candies like sour gummies. Also, the inflated prices may be cutting into sales. Maybe gum is just... It's just too expensive now. Yeah, sounds like at it. least at yeah. today's prices. Regardless of of how we got here, you know, some gum companies are changing their approach to marketing. And now, as Learn mentioned, they're hyping gum as an instant stress reliever and the occasional breath freshener. Well, see, they saw that the sour candy marketing said, "Oh yes, sour candies can divert your anxiety and your nervous system." Man, I hate, I hate sour candies. I love them. Sparingly. You don't want to burn your taste buds off. I don't go crazy for them like some people do. I like them, but I'm like, there's people that are like into them. Well, it's like, it, you mind. know, the kids, the kids like, you know, we'll, we'll go to a candy store and, you know, my son or daughter will be like, hey, can we get uh, this thing called toxic waste? And go, what? <laughs> <laughs> What is this? Oh, it's the sourest candy in the in the world. I go. Toxic waste. Yeah, you, you're not gonna enjoy this. Sounds good. Let me try this. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Get the sour face. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. oh. Hey, imagine seeing this in your rear, uh, your, <laughs> your rear view mirror. A woman in Arizona uh, found a rattlesnake in her car. 
and you want to move to Arizona. You make fun of me and move and want to move to There's Florida. There's snakes everywhere. So, yeah, I'm moving to Arizona. <laughs> this woman had a rattlesnake in her car, and she thinks it may have been in the car for two weeks. How did she not hear it? She lives in Phoenix, parks her car in a lot of desert areas, so it must have slithered in at some point. She's not sure when. Never heard it rattle. She was in the car with a boyfriend when, when he spotted it on her back seat. It was a diamondback, which are among the most venomous snakes in the U.S. And they make a great bike. Luckily, uh, the boyfriend saw it while they were parked. Uh, she says if she'd been driving, she definitely would have crashed. Here's, oh, go ahead. I was to say, I guess it's wintertime, so maybe that's the only way, but she's out there in the desert, and I could live in that car for two weeks with the windows up and all that. Guess so. Okay. My friend Anna, I told this story last year. She was driving down 44, and she's looking, you know, broad daylight. Her dashboard starts moving where the dash and the windshield connect, and there was a black snake that had elongated itself, you know, hot across day the hole. across oh, that God. little se seam of the dash. And she calmly, you know, pulled over on the side of 44 and like got out of her car and lost and lit it. Lit it on fire. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> calmly grabbed the snake, bit its head I would have lit the car yeah. on fire. Me too. Yeah. Can hmm. you imagine? I, I don't know if I'd have the composure to not just swerve and... Yeah. I'd now, be dead, I guess. I don't the know. black snake is a little... Different than a rattlesnake. Well, the, the boyfriend and the, and the girlfriend called 911. Ultimately, they just opened the doors, and the boyfriend used a broken tree branch to get it out. That's good. Uh, experts say snakes getting into cars is pretty uncommon, but uh, this woman's not taking any chances. She always checks under the seats before she drives now. <laughs> it's pretty fun. And uh, finally, uh, seven kids were treated for, quote, discomfort after someone released fart spray at a Kentucky high school. <laughs> this happened last week. Student resource officer at Oldham County High School in uh, Buckner, Kentucky, reported a strong odor around 11 a.m. Authorities evacuated the school while they looked for the source. It was at a natural gas leak. Local police said the smell came from, quote, a non-toxic concentrated liquid product commonly advertised online for use in pranks, better known as fart spray. A 17-year-old female student was blamed for pouring the substance into two trash cans. And that's my point here. Boy, if I was an FBI profiler, uh -huh. I would not say female. That's not a female <laughs> prank. Yeah. That's a dude prank. Well, that's how we commit crimes. You think it's all men. That's mm -hmm. a dude prank. <laughs> yeah. That's a 17-year-old boy that does something like that. All of the unsolved mysteries of the world have women behind them. I think so. That's awesome. All right, that is your news. All right, quick break. We'll come back with some of your emails. It's 750. It is Tuesday. Traffic and weather. Learn coming at you. And it is brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is uh, Sunday, June 2nd. Time to lock in those NASCAR Cup Series tickets at www.tracewaye.com. We have a stalled vehicle westbound 270 at 367. The right lane is closed there. Also, um... The right lane is blocked eastbound 70 at Highway K, and a three-vehicle crash. Oh, and that is the three-vehicle crash eastbound 70 at Highway K. The right lane is closed. Your weather is going to be great today. 74 is the high, a little cloudier than yesterday, 49 as the low. Right now, it's 50 out there at 751. Tim. How are you, man? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And, I, and I'm going to tell you that I did something today, and I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even bring it up that I'm doing. Okay. I wore a shirt specifically to impress you because I was interviewing you. And, <laughs> right. and normally I don't do that. But right. I, I, but I did. But also, too, and they can't see it, but I've got this awesome masked intruder shirt on. Uh, and I oh, just, I love it. Yeah, and I just figured that that would be one of those bands that you would be, you know, very cool, like, that, that were a band that Rise Against played with somewhere along the way. You know what I mean? Let's talk about Universal Windows Direct. If you've been cold in your home, and maybe it's getting hot in your home, you had to open the windows yesterday. Don't suffer through another winter or summer in a cold and drafty or hot and stuffy home. Call my guys at Universal Windows Direct. They got super spacer tech that helps keep the edge of the windows warmer, holds the windows seal longer, and makes the windows last five times longer than any other system. So get your windows from Universal they perform better, and they last longer. Plus, Universal backs it all up with a true lifetime warranty. 
the entire life of your home plus 30 years, all right, you're basically going to leave this in a will to the next homeowner. So call Universal Windows Direct at 314-334-2522 right now and schedule an appointment. And for every two windows you buy, you get two free. I'll do the math for you. That's buy two, get two. Buy four, get four. Buy 20, get 20. There is no limit. So if you live in a sprawling mansion, you can get a lot of windows for pretty cheap. Plus, They'll upgrade your new windows to triple pane glass for free. That means extra protection from elements, consistent temp in your home, increased energy efficiency, reduced heating and cooling costs, quieter, more comfortable home, and you get a tax credit. And if you call them right now and you give them my name, you get an extra 250 bucks off your project. If you need more than that, well, then there is no pleasing you. So call them right now. For the last windows you'll ever need, go to universalwindowsdirect.com. And like me, you will be saying, I love my windows! We are backstage at Point Fest, and we have the absolute pleasure for the first time of speaking to Ash from uh, New Year's Day. Welcome, and it's great to have you at Point Fest. We're so honored to be at Point Fest today. It was so much fun. You're, you had that crowd going. You know what I mean? How do you handle the challenge when you are coming into a situation where you know, you know, there's a headliner, we're playing a little bit earlier on in the day. That is not an easy thing a lot of times, but a lot of bands enjoy that challenge. We are one of those bands. Yeah. I love, I mean, obviously I'd love to be the headliner eventually and, and play at later time slots, yeah. but I really do enjoy being one of the openers, even though it was hot. Yeah, yeah. Even though it was so hot. But uh, we enjoy opening the crowd because, one, they're, they're energetic, they're ready to start the day, and I feel like I can really get them to rock out. Yep. They're not, you know, uh, five beers deep and have been in the sun for eight hours yet. <laughs> right, so right. I do enjoy that. And um, I just, I like a challenge. You know, I grew up, I love wrestling. Mm -hmm. So I always love the idea of being the heel and having to go out and turn the crowd and I let the crowd kind of look at you like, who the hell are these guys? Yeah. And then have them in the palm of your hand by the end. Absolutely. Even if they're booing. <laughs> Just kidding, but they weren't. But the power of the... You know what I didn't understand when I was a kid and, and watched wrestling so much? And get Are you it a now. wrestling fan, too? I am a wrestling fan, absolutely. The power of the heel. You uh, know what I mean? Like, I would rather be the heel than the baby face. Right? But, yeah. but when I was a kid, I would have never thought that, never got how cool right? that aspect of it was. But it's the answer. So as a wrestling fan, you got to play WrestleMania. I did. Yeah, um, WrestleMania 37. Right, yeah. So how many WrestleManias ago was that at this point? Because um, I'm not one sure. One WrestleMania uh, ago. So can yeah. you kind of talk about that experience and, like, how incredible... I mean, I know it was incredible, but, like, how did it happen, the whole thing? Long story short... Yep. Um, I was in a, doing a songwriting session uh, for our last record in New York, and it was with a, a songwriter that didn't really understand what... River City Tree Service. This is a website and a phone number that I think you should have in your emergency contacts. River City Tree Service does all things trees, every type of tree service you can think of, imagine, or dream of. They do it, and they do it well. Professionals, certified arborists that care about safety, care about tree health, and care about your property. RiverCityTreeService.com. I think you should have it in your emergency contacts for when, you know, any sort of storm damage may happen. Also, preventative maintenance. You want to make sure those trees are healthy and trimmed so those storms do as little damage as possible. Possible. They take care of residential and commercial, and as the buds begin to bloom and nature awakens here in the springtime, it's time to rejuvenate your outdoor oasis. Let River City Tree Service help. They're thrilled to offer an exclusive 15% off discount. 15% off all spring tree services if you mention my name, Moon. Tree pruning, tree removal, spring cleanup and maintenance, tree health checkups, they do it all. And listen, if you're not sure if they do it or not, call them. Get a free estimate. They're amazing people. River City Tree Service. Check them out online at River City Tree service.com again say moon sent you and you get 15 percent off whatever tree service you need rivercitytreeservice.com we're talking about shopping local right stlmattressdirect.com mattress direct right here in st louis campbell mattress made here in missouri missouri made mattresses why pay to get a mattress made somewhere else and shipped here when you can get such a deal right here from mattress direct and right now they're celebrating campbell mattresses 90th anniversary by giving you free sheets and two free pillows with the purchase of a campbell mattress at mattress direct check them out now stlmattressdirect.com
You know, I may not get the quantity of sleep that I want. On your car and your home insurance, uh, you know, Allstate and my agent, Tracy Bibb, who's the best, she got some great rates, some very competitive rates. Now, with Allstate and Tracy Bibb, you will get the personal attention from your agent that you will get nowhere else. Most people, and this is true, most people have never met or talked to their agent. They're just a name on the door. Now, Trace is going to work with you to make sure you have the right type of coverage for when something happens. Not if something happens, but when something happens. We are all going to have a claim in our lifetime with either our car or our house. And when claims do arise, Tracy is going to make the claims process easy and quick. In fact, that Allstate app is amazing. Unfortunately, I've had to use it before. So get a hold of Trace today for a non-committal quote. It's free and it's easy. Just give her a call, 314-328-4260. That's 314-328-4260. Uh, the Riz family, we have all our policies through Tracy Bibb. We got the house. We got the cars. We got an umbrella policy. We have both life insurance policies. 314-328-4260. It's no fib. You're in good hands with Tracy Bibb. Ever found yourself in the middle of your daily deuce and thought, huh, I wish this was funnier? Today's your lucky day. Welcome to the number two show. I'm your host, Rafe Williams, stand-up comedian plus size male model and co-host of the Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. What is the number two show? Well, it's me on the toilet talking to you on the toilet, just like it sounds. In each episode, we'll plunge into riveting topics that'll have you rolling in the stall with laughter so much so that it might freak out whoever's sitting next. <clears throat> I love uh, that people are emailing Learn to remind me about my anniversary. Yeah, I'm not his secretary, so I just, I, I know I'm the female on the show. <laughs> oh, and people assume oh, because I... Nobody went there. And I am there. very organized, but I am not. Nobody went there. I am not the secretary of this show. <laughs> just, nobody went there. I went there. You went there in your mind. You are not the secretary of the show. Learn, make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not wearing little blouses in here and typing oh, a lot. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They just said, as a friend, I guess, remind me. Yes, as your friend. Hey, it's happy anniversary, buddy. 18 happy years. And, and to my wife as well. Big happy hot date tonight? Happy anniversary, babe. Yeah, what's the big date tonight? Oh, we're going out. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're going to hit the town. Cocktails. No, we're going to have it. We're going to have a nice dinner. You going out like 5 p.m.? What is it? Probably 6, probably six o'clock dinner. Look at you. Dang. Very nice. Probably 6 o'clock. Kids going? No. Good. That was the good <sighs> no, choice. We told them. Uh, we're like, hey, uh, we're going out to dinner tomorrow. And the kid's like, oh, where are we going? Oh, you're not going anywhere. That's right. Both you jerks are staying home. And then became the, oh, cool, we'll get Raising Cane's. And then one kid is like, that place sucks. And the other kid's like, no, I like that place. And the other kid's like, you only like that place because of the sauce. And the other kid's like, you shut up. You get what you want. And it's like, this is why you're not going. Mm -hmm. We're stressed out. Show I want to get five guys. Show them they got to put headphones in tonight. Yeah. Did you warn him on that? Mommy and Daddy are going to be mm. sleeping in the basement tonight. We're going to be doing a little Kids rearranging. Kids, get that raisin canes, but then put your headphones on. <laughs> put your Beats by Dre on, because... <laughs> yeah, it's anniversary. Can it's it's Papa's anniversary. Ooh. 18 years. And Eight if we don't fill up on bread, she go get it. I'll be asleep by nine. <laughs> Stop. Ah... Uh, <laughs> oh, if I wasn't so full from that bread... <laughs> From that Texas Roadhouse bread. I'm a little bloated. I'm going to bed. 18 years ago, we <laughs> were in, uh, be getting it right now. We were in Jamaica. Mm. That's great, man. In Jamaica, it was a it was a it was a lovely day. The morning was great. Uh, we had about 25, 30 people on a resort with us. That's fun. Friends and family. We were all frolicking in the water, and uh, had our nuptials on the on the beach. Found a Rastafarian rabbi. Great. Tight. The ceremony. I broke the glass and everything. The you did? Traditional Jewish. That's sweet. You know, broke the glass. And then a storm rolled in. And it poured. That's good news. Thunder. It was thunder, lightning. We had to move the reception inside, which couldn't have been which couldn't have been better. That's awesome. It was it was actually better inside. Yeah. Yeah, we had like run of it was a, this was a new resort. And we had run of the inside. Oh. Gorgeous, and it was cool. It was a, it was a it was a great day. Does a memory stand? Is that the memory that stands out mostly in your mind, or is there a moment that you think of when you think of your from, wedding day? From my wedding day, mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those. You know, you see your wife walk down the aisle in a dress. Hits ya. 
it hit you. And it, and we didn't do the traditional you can't see her that day because I think we got married around five or six o'clock that evening. Mm -hmm. And we were all hanging out on the beach. And it was like, oh, my God, we're getting married in an hour. <laughs> Did you do like a reveal, though? She like walked, she just walked out casually and you saw her? No, she dress? walked, her dad walked her down. No, I, I know, but you said you saw her before the ceremony. I'm just saying she just walked out. Or did you turn around and then she turned you around or anything like that? <laughs> what do you mean, like? Like at my wedding, before we had pictures before. And so before Tim got to see me all dolled up, he like turned his back and then I poked him on the back and he turned around and saw me. Yeah, the reveal. Oh, no. The, I, we saw, I was standing at the altar hmm. or the gazebo right on the beach. She walked out. And then she walked out. She walked down like almost looked like a pier. That's I remember cool. it right. And I, uh, we do have our, our wedding video, which, you know, we did watch, watched it a couple of years ago. And there was a guy who was in a Speedo that walked in the background. Like, Heck uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Congrats. Well, thank you. And to, to my lovely bride, uh, 18 years of adventures for sure. And uh, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's keep going. All right. Um, I love... I love the videos that people post online thinking they thinking they're gotcha moments. Like they post them thinking mm -hmm. the internet's going to be on my side. And they are gotcha moments, but they got themselves. But they got themselves. And <laughs> there's a video making the rounds, and this is a guy at a Little Caesars. Listen, service workers are, are expected, right, to keep their cool when a customer decides to bother them. But sometimes that's not possible. And I think fast food workers have had it. Mm -hmm. They've had it. Because any time a customer has a complaint, the first thing that comes out is the phone. Ugh. Yep. First thing that comes out, the phone, the phone's in your face. Oh, we're going viral is what they <laughs> usually say. Oh, ho, ho, we're going viral. So one particular Little Caesars customer learned <clears throat> the hard way that filming an encounter with a manager doesn't always go how you think it's going to go. <laughs> right. Perhaps he expected some empathy or, or or at the very least for some people to take his side when he posted his video. But neither of those scenarios came to pass after his video ended up going viral, amassing 2.3 million views as of Sunday. And every single one of the comments is anti this guy. <laughs> so this was at a, at a Little Caesars drive through. Uh, it begins, the, the video picks up mid-argument with the manager challenging the customer's claim that he got staphylococcus meningitis from the partially eaten pizza's garlic butter. Okay. So he says he ate this, he got sick, and returned it. And here's where it picks up. Here we go. Staphylococcus meningitis. He got staphylococcus from all of this garlic butter. That's not what I said. You keep your napkin, though. Keep By the way, it's, so the pizza's half eaten. Hmm. Hmm. Of course, he got the phone out. Give your money back. You don't have to record me. I know what I said. You I said came in here to. Am I allowed? Can I say? It's all gone, and you've got garlic butter all over it. No wonder you got sick. All gone? Am I allowed to talk? Or? Wait, you just talked before you turned your camera on, though, right? Yeah. Even you need to know you're a liar. You need to work on your customer service. I don't let liars come to my store. I am not a liar. Am I supposed to ask? Kiss just because you bought a $7.99? No! Okay, I'm refunding I... you. Drop it. Thank you. No, you called me a moron. You called oh, me a moron. Oh, she, she also called baby. to Mr. I got food poisoning two seconds after I ate. All right. Oh, it hasn't even hit your belly yet, dude. Of He's course precious. not. You a-hole. Little guy. Am I supposed to kiss your ass because you bought a $7.99 pizza? <laughs> That's great. I mean... I, I hate that we're getting to this point in society where this is something, but also good on her for, like, not taking yeah. it. And also, hey. how smart is this? She goes, you were talking before you started filming, weren't you? Yeah. And she called, because that's one thing that whenever this first started happening, people record things, we all get really worked up. And then it's at some the point, story. someone's like, hey, wait, what happened before they started right. filming? I wish every yeah. manager was like this. I wish every manager was like this. Well, the video, listen, the video doesn't offer any clarity about the situation of all, but... People had their, you know, people had their, their thoughts. One person wrote, bruh, you ate it, then brought it back. 
Somebody else said, Kevin expected a deep apology, a refund, and a free pizza, I'm sure. Want a refund at $7 is wild. Going back for anything under 20 bucks is crazy. And then uh, <laughs> most of the comments are like, you're on the wrong, dude. Because their whole thing is, I'm going to put the phone in your face, I'm going to get it my way, mm -hmm. or you're going to get fired because it's going viral. Right. Your livelihood means nothing to me. I don't have that in me to get my phone out whenever something is. It's starting. not the first thing I think. I know no, it's not. I never think of it. I'm always and I get it. I have to have. I have to be professional. I represent. You know, I here. I Thank work you. here. I represent some, a brand that is beyond myself. So that's the first thing I go to. That's the, literally the first. And then I go to, am I in the right right now? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then, but I my phone is not coming out. No, and I and I sometimes wish that I would think that because. Yeah. <clears throat> There are moments that are so unbelievable in my life that I wish I had my phone out, but my first thought is not to get my phone out. No, it's to yeah. finish yeah, the dude. problem. I need to get used to that because whenever I argue with staff like this over a pizza or something and yeah. I want my refund, I should film it. I always forget. <laughs> I've seen some wild stuff go down that I'm like, man, I wish I had, kind of wish I had that on film. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To do it justice, to relay the information to people I, that I'm going to tell the story to and be like, check this out. This is crazy. I saw a dude this last, right after I gave that lady her purse in Denver, I went to this taco joint. It was on the roof of the hotel. <clears throat> and I, this dude just like, he was an employee of the place. They're going to start trivia. And he just like passed out off the bar stool, hit his head on the floor. It was like fishing out for a second, yeah. bleeding everywhere. Woke up. They just put a towel on his head, and he was just sitting at the bar, and I'm like, I'm just sitting there, like, eating a pork belly taco and a cactus taco or whatever, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> what, did, what just happened? Yeah. Why isn't someone taking this guy to the hospital? Right. Yeah, he's fine. And I was just like, hey, are you guys going to, like, does he need to go to the hospital or something? And they're just like, ah, Tyler's ah. crazy. Oh, pass out like, Pat. I feel like, yeah, has this happened before? It was wild, man. Yeah, I just, you know. It's, again, the first instinct for people is to take out the phone once they get in an argument, and if they don't get their way, they. This guy clearly thought that by posting the video of his interaction with the manager mm -hmm. at the Little Caesars, oh, yeah. that people would take his side. She'll be reprimanded, and somebody said, unfortunately, she'll probably have to go do some HR, yeah. HR class. Yeah, because of this, I think she should get a raise. Mm. I mean, she won't. That she won't, won't happen because the, I hope she doesn't get fired. People don't businesses don't want this type of representation all the time. Well, it sucks. Yeah, I wish people could be more forthright. I mean, she, the one thing I think that when you start cussing at someone, you are you're showing a weakness there, right? So her saying like, "I'm supposed to kiss your ass," like that was out of line. No, but the, but Disagree. the forthright attitude is good there. I feel like that's a weak argument. No, because that's Sorry, why the company the company is going to say we don't. We don't. We're not. Prof, we're not a profanity type yeah. of country. Yeah. That's what she's going to get. I got, I got that. But I got uh, a bunch of cucks email me all the time that try to do the same thing. They'll say horrible things about all of us, and then I'll be like, "You're a. You could lick my ass or whatever," and they'll be like, <laughs> "Do I can't believe you cussed at me." And I'm like, bro, you just said you horrendous said vile things. Thing. <laughs> you said the most vile, horrendous. Oh, because you didn't say a cuss word, you're better than me? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I disagree. I, I, I think more should... people should be cussing. <laughs> I thought she should have taken a step further, by the way, and thrown a Molotov cocktail in the car. Oh, my God. That's how I would okay. run my pizza Exactly, point. dude. Yeah. That's how Riz Pizza runs. That's right. <laughs> we have one pizza, and that's it. That's Rome burnt at the end, <laughs> if you remember. It's Little Caesars. <laughs> revolution, revolution. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get to some emails. Riz Show at 1057thepoint.com or instant feedback through the 1057 The Point mobile app. All and right. your emails are sponsored they by... They are sponsored by Class Furniture. Lowest prices guaranteed. We have something for everybody. Let's start here because we talked about it earlier. Hello, Riz Show. Hi. Hello. Hey. Former air crew and Marine Corps here and Super Stallions with 1,000 hours on it. Rafe is 100% correct. I had zero training on how to fly Super Stallions, and my job was just to shoot the guns and do maintenance. On more than one occasion, I had to hop into the pilot seat and jiggle the sticks because what? the stick jockeys couldn't figure it out. Zero training on how to do it. Just a dude in my ear from a helicopter behind us. Flew the sim a couple times. Crashed each time. Um, on one example, we were trying to plug into a C-130 and the pilots couldn't get it and needed to switch seats. As a senior dude, I get in there with a helicopter full of 30 troops and hold it as they got switched out seats. 
picks below pilots are not that much better than bus oh, drivers. Oh, I'm not going down wow. that road. I'm just saying, sign Tyler. Thanks, Tyler. I know a lot of pilots who are. Oh, you know guns. a lot of pilots. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do. Oh. You do. Name five have? pilots that you know. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Name drop. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one. Who else? Nobody knows that many pilots, man. They don't all right, I know like three pilots. Oh, all right, maybe three. Oh, man. The pilots don't want to be friends with the commoners because we're all idiots. Because we're doing this. We're talking. We're name dropping them on the air. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not outing the pilots I know. I know plenty of pilots. I just like that. Uh, I'm not disrespecting pilots. I'm respecting bus drivers. People <laughs> right. are looking at it the wrong way. I feel like... Uh, in the Brady Bunch, where she got the fake boyfriend. George Glass. George Glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. his name is George. <laughs> yeah. He lives in Canada. I'm right. Brian, my friend who's a pilot. Call him right now. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have a phone. He's in the air. He I can't will... talk. He's flying. The last pilot I talked to was at Salt and Smoke down at Ballpark Village. We were both sitting at a bar, and he was waiting for his flight to come in. And I was waiting to go to the Cardinals game. And that's about the only pilot that I've ever talked to. You guys were hanging out. Wait, where was it again? It was, it was Salt and Smoke. Isn't that downtown at Ballpark Village? Yes. Yes. Sitting at the bar waiting to go to the Cardinals game. Because okay. I was judging the Battle of the Bands. No, I was a, alone. A dear, dear friend who was a, who was a pilot. A uh, dear, dear friend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Todd. Todd. Todd Glass. 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 He goes to a different school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, happy so birthday, good. Riz. Hello. Thank you. I am listening to this morning show, and I think I know who is deleting you from the notable alumni list on your oh. high school's Wikipedia page. The woman you resented the mm -hmm. prom invite could be the culprit who is... It could be. It's somebody who calls himself Zimzalabim. Zimzalabim Bacardi. Zimzalabim. I don't know. Was that a pet name you gave to her? No. That's from a Tool record. <laughs> if you're a Tool fan, that's, that's a, deep, it's a deep cut. Now, you're a Tool fan. Yes. And you talk about it a lot on the show. Yes. So do you feel like it's a fan? A show fan that's doing this? I have no idea. Is it Maynard? This is Maynard, Maynard take, Tool. Dude, is Maynard <laughs> ripping you down? <laughs> Zimzalabim. Putting me on the notable alumni page on my... Uh, yeah. That sounds like they say Wikipedia it when they page. hit delete, too. Like, Zimzalabim. <laughs> he's at Merkin Dilly. Vineyards just deleting your Dilly. Wikipedia details. Yeah, that's great. Did you ever upset him? Did you interview I don't him? know who this is. Oh, Maynard from Tool? Yeah. No, the last time I interviewed him, it was a very pleasant experience. That's cool as hell. Oh, Zimzalabim, hmm. I'm going to find you. Oh, yeah. I have a specific set of skills. They mean my pilot yeah. friends are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> gonna come. <laughs> me and my pilot hellfire. friend. My Rain pilot. down hellfire. <laughs> He's going to fly me there in his totally real <laughs> stealth bomber. Yeah. 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 That he keeps bomber. at his house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a hanger at his house. Yeah, it's, uh, it's prototype. Yeah. Yeah, it's invisible. <laughs> stealth. Uh, next. All right. Uh, this was from Isabel. Good morning, Riz Show. Morning. Morning, friends. Just wanted to thank you for all the lively debate of would you rather see your parents having sex or going at it solo yesterday. My 19-year-old son works with me three days a week, and of course you guys picked a day that it happened to be one of those days. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's so great. thank you for making my drive into, to the, into work completely and totally and utterly awkward. And for the record, the answer is all are extremely awkward. <laughs> It's disgusting. Stay out of your parents' room when the damn door is shut. Yes, Thank you, that's, the main, that's the main takeaway. Riddle me this. The we, door is closed. Yeah, go. Knock. Always. Always knock. I don't understand this. We talked about that yesterday around 8.15. My mom texted me at 8.19, and she goes, that wasn't me. S sad face. And I go, what? Because, what wasn't her? Right, because you said stand up 69. <laughs> and I Sorry, go, Joe. What? <laughs> she never responded. So I am left in the. I, I want to be in the dark. No, you will never speak of this. I, what I, wasn't I, her? What is she that's saying? That's what I'm saying. She goes, "That wasn't me." Sad face. She was referring to something that that we talked about. Said. Right. Oh, maybe she just said. Yeah. She might, she wants a standing sixty nine. Nope. That's what she's I'm telling you. Yeah. Next. <laughs> bucket list. No, we're not doing next. <laughs> no, oh, we, I call we can next. Be next. <laughs> anyway, I just want to follow that's up. Part of my <laughs> job duties. I call next. <laughs> All right, this one comes from Christy B. For the love of everything holy, Rizzuto, please do not give middle schoolers stickers today. Signed, sincerely, a middle school teacher. 
Oh, okay. Learn said to give the middle schooler stickers. Mm-hmm. Jeremy, who also was a teacher, said it would be cool. And Jeremy knows a lot of pilots. Why is that? Is she just worried that it's going to be, uh, oh, they're going to be everywhere? Oh, That's good marketing yeah. for us. Yeah, it's very good marketing because we're YouTubers. That's right. I mean, who cares? Let's, That's, I agree, dude. Yeah. Let's get the gorilla marketing all over. Trapper keepers. Wildwood. Yeah. Kids still use trapper keepers? I would. Oh, they'll be on street signs and buses and. Yeah. Everywhere, dude. My face. Raising canes. It's your <laughs> face. It's going to be good. YouTuber, yeah. podcaster, radio. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm doing it. If you missed the beginning of the show, I'm uh, speaking at uh, career day, the middle school today. That's right. My daughter's middle school. So, uh, molding minds. That's mm-hmm. right. Maybe. You Gonna know, get kids excited about the industry. Maybe your daughter wouldn't want to see her dad's face stuck everywhere, though, you know? Maybe that'd be kind of weird for her. So maybe for her sake, don't. But also for the I show. I now marketing. want to because of that. Yeah. Aww. Well, you do you. I almost now want to just to drive her crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next. All right. Next. Let's see. What do I want to get into next? Hey, Riz. Hey. It was great seeing you again at Hot Shots on Saturday. Glad I got the opportunity to discuss coming on the show and playing just the two of us with you and the crew. You told me to send an email. So once again, oh, yeah, doing as you go. requested. Yeah. Well, you know what? Please that's let from, me know what works for you. That's from Melissa, right? Thanks, Melissa. That's correct. Uh, I, she was down at Captain Jim's last... I remember this. Oh, yeah, I remember it, too. Okay, last year. This was her bucket list And thing, she right? wants... her One of her bucket list items is to do just the two of us with us in the studio. Mm-hmm. And we are what? We are bucket list dream granters. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's our nonprofit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So next time we play just two of us or or one time down the road. Yes, Melissa, we will get you in the studio. Melissa, we've officially read this on the air. That's We're holding our feet to the fire. Does it have to be in studio? Because we have some opportunities coming up that we can't announce yet that she could probably come to and we could I play I think live. she wants to do here be on, on the, the air. air. Do All it right. as we See do. the hallway. So, fine. Melissa, you got Rafe to read your email. Nice work. It's binding. It's legally binding now. Now we got to make it happen. Uh, All right, two more, Rafe. All right. Hey, fellows, Lady King Scott. All right. I am behind and perpetually trying to catch up because of my job, but no matter how far behind, I refuse to miss an episode of Valentine's Day now. I wanted to share an insane bedroom injury that I had with you all. We discussed uh, bedroom injuries at one point on the show. The lucky lady and I are doing our thing. She had one of the most massive wooden headboards, and it was banging against the wall. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to me, she also had a big glass bowl covering one of the lights in the ceiling fan. Must have been a little loose. This loosened, exacerbated by the banging of the headboard, caused the glass covering to fall, hit a table, shattered, and cut my stomach open. Oh, Oh my God. God. I have a scar on my stomach from it. It's not that big, but it's a very interesting story behind it. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for the last. That's a battle wound. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's a battle wound. We talked about bourgeois battle wounds uh, at one point on here about like weird sex injuries so that's definitely a weird one that is yeah i never thought about that Dang. but there's a lot there's always almost a, almost always like a glass covering yeah. above a bed mm-hmm. and if you start going Weapons too hard is hanging above you the mirrors yes mm. all right one more rave uh well okay wow well, we really kicked that one around uh let's see here oh you got you got more on it no, no, no. Let's go. <laughs> this was for Roger. Hey, Rafe. You just to, is there a sex injury you want to tell us about? No, no, no. Hey, Rafe. Just wanted to drop a line on your impressive recall from March 6th show where you almost got the Muzzy commercial right from raw memory. The little girl at the start says, Je suis la jeune fille, which means I am a young girl. Three out of five stars on the translation. Six out of five stars for the hilarity that you were calling yourself a young girl on the air. <laughs> Muzzy. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, dude. There's like a lot of There's a lot of stuff that gets... What do you guys remember from your childhood? Man. The commercials get stuck up there, man. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, Muzzy's not the only one I got rattling around up there. I mean... Uh, what do you think about, like, often that you're just like, man, that just got ingrained? Because at a certain age, I feel like stuff gets ingrained in your head. Yeah. Oh, those, you know, Saturday mornings that I, you know, plunk myself down in front of the TV and I could, you know, any He-Man theme song or, you know, My Buddy commercial or Teddy Ruxman commercial mm-hmm. oh, or dude, all those... Yeah. All those commercials of my youth, if I if I hear a couple notes from one of those, I bet I'm you triggered. can can you sing my buddy? Do you know it right now off the top of your head? I bet you My can. buddy. My, my buddy. Wherever my buddy. I go, he's gonna go. My, my buddy, buddy. My buddy. My buddy. My, my buddy and me. See, I miss that that 
middle part there. But then, kid sister, mm, kid sister. <laughs> We're cashing in on both of the genders, kid, kid sister. sister. <laughs> kid sister, kid sister, and Steve. What about you? You got anything that's rattling around up um, there? I'm th well, I went back to it, and I, all I can see is, it's not necessarily a jingle, but I can see the intro to Are You Afraid of the Dark perfectly. Yeah. You know, from Nickelodeon. That was kind of spooky. Happy, happy, joy, joy. I was a Nickelodeon kid, so all of uh, all of that. Clar Clarissa explains it all. It's great. Yeah. Hey, dude. Visual stuff, though, hey not dude. necessarily audio. Eureka's Castle. My my brothers watch that, and that just is ingrained in my brain, dude. Like, yeah. if there was one kid game show you could be on. Oh, okay. remember? I mean, remember those kid game shows? A lot of good ones, dude. But Double the epic Dare. One. Yeah. If I could have been on Double Dare. With Mark Summers. Mm. Legend of the Hidden Temple. Yep. Oh, what, the mummies was, that would come so get cool. you? Yeah, no, that Freaked was cool, but, but... Dude, that was so cool. Forgot it was cool, but Double Dare. I remember at the playground by our house, we used to pretend that that was like the end, the obstacle course at the end. Yeah. And try to run that run that whole play set as mm. if Mark Summers was, at, was cheering us on. Getting slimed. Man, guts... Guts. Yeah. Guts was dope. Wild and Crazy Kids. That was a Nickelodeon one, right? Where you mm -hmm. get to do like crazy. It was almost like uh, it was almost like Fear Factor for kids. W wild and Crazy the Kids. That Temple Run. Legend of Legend, the Hidden Temple. Legend, Legend of the Hidden Temple. temple. Was yeah, dude, yeah, that, that one was, was a badass really cool. show. But that was like you had a great. You, you were on a green screen, right? No, you, which, there was no, like an obstacle. Was, yeah, there was an obstacle. Yeah, you know, which was the had, one where you're almost on a green screen? Mm. That I don't know. And yeah. you had to, like, uh, you had to do stuff, but you were in front of a green screen, and it looked like on TV you were in a video game or something. Hmm. I don't remember that one. Am I making that up? I don't know. Somebody's no, got to know. I'm sure. Legend of the Hidden Temple was no, when you had to, like, get the gold piece, up. and it got you ready for American Ninja Warrior when you were older. Yes. Yeah. I, I do remember that, but, but and Rafe, you know it. I It's in my head. As soon as you said it, give me a second. Kids game show, but you know, uh, Mark Summers from Double Dare is like a like a germaphobe. Like yeah, he has a obsessive hardcore... compulsive disorder. Wow! Like he had, I remember the episode of Sixty Minutes where he's smoothing the rug fringe in his house. You know how um, rugs will have little fringes yeah, yeah, yeah. on the ends. He needed them all to be straight down, and that's what I unfortunately think about each time I think of him because he was so particular. Uh, dude, really? also Carmen San Diego, I could be on that game. Yeah, that game was dope. Everybody that knew. game was dope. There was one called Nickelodeon Arcade. Was that it? I know what you're talking about. They put you in like a suit at the end, and your teammate would be telling you like, "Go left, go right," you, and it would show it on the screen. Yeah, and and you like reach up and you're killing aliens or something. I don't know. Hmm. Somebody's gonna know. I wonder what that. Dude, Carmen San Diego was was geography, and the end, you know, you'd run and put like the little little. Uh, it looked like uh, poles with the lights on on the different countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was... I could rock that, could rock that, that game. Show. Did you ever watch <laughs> Win Ben Stein's Money? Oh, yeah. I always thought that was... That would have been fun. Yeah, one. but that was for adults. I know, but I still watched it. No, I, I watched it, too. Yeah. Nick Arcade. Subsequent rounds involved interactive video game component to put contestants inside an actual video game. In these segments, the contestants were brought backstage and used a video monitor to see themselves inside the video game. Yeah, what year was that? Dude... Uh, I was in the 90s, but as soon as I saw, I was like, I know you can't see this picture, but as soon as I saw the set, I'm like, yeah, I remember it now. Yeah, that's 90s. Nick Arcade. I Nick, Nick Arcade. Arcade. Same guy hosted a lot of these. Get the picture. It was the guy that was later on. Make the grade. Wild and crazy kids. Slime time live. I do not remember. Who Double was the there. host? It was like the dude that was in, uh, he played the brother-in-law did he have curly hair yeah at that he time, passed away he ended up going bald but he passed away not too long ago he was like the kids game show host well not marks that'd be mark summers right yeah but mark summers only hosted double dare i thought he did other stuff and then he did food network stuff yeah that was the, so let in let keith ober Oh, Keith. Oh, he, yeah. was, he did remote control. He passed away. Dude, Legends, Legends of the Hidden Temple is where it's at, though. Yeah, that's I mean, that's the ultimate. I, those The guys would come out and get you. Yeah, it looked yeah. so. It was like Kids American Gladiator. It was so cool. Yeah, American Gladiator, not American Ninja Warrior. That's what I meant. Mm. What, what um, when you were a teenager and into high school, is there a game show that you really wanted to play as you got older? 
or wanted to be on. Like, I wanted to be on Singled Out so freaking bad. <laughs> yeah. but I was Is that even a game know. show? I guess it was. It's kind of a game show. Looks so much that, fun. Chris Hardwick. Yeah. And Jenny McCarthy. And then Carmen Electra. And then Carmen Electra. No, I, I, Remote Control was on. Remote when Control's I was, dope. You know, I was a kid with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Adam Sandler was on that one. Colin that Quinn host. Colin Quinn. Adam Sandler. Yeah, Win Ben, Win ben Stein's Money was also a cool yeah. show. I always wanted to do a couple of the classics. Will of Fortune, for sure. Yeah, Garrett says American uh, American Gladiator. Yeah, that, just you, wanted to shoot the tennis balls. You wanted to do Wheel of Fortune as a teen? Yeah. <laughs> we, my parents watched it. I had You're like a little old yeah, dude. Like Will. I want teenager didn't want to hang out with Pat Sajak, dude. <laughs> you know, Vanna. And Vanna. No, it was on, and we I watched it a ton as a kid. But also, Price is Right. I want to do that right, as a kid. Price is Right, of course. Of yeah. course, I just wanted to play Plinko. You don't want to be on Road Rules or anything like that. No, or oh, the Amazing I Race. Forgot about, yeah, no, the Amazing was. Race was later. My Road mom and I would be great. applied to be on the Amazing Race one time. We didn't get picked. You did? Yeah. What, Dang. What race was the Amazing one? I don't know. I mean, oh. it changed every year. Yeah. But we would do. I, I feel like we we'd either kill each other or do really well. I think it's what you got to have with your partner on the Amazing Race. You know. Aaron says, getting the aggro crack trophy on guts was all I wanted as a kid. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> all right, listen, we got to we gotta take a break. Thank you for the emails. It's uh, straight up 830. It's Tuesday. Crab on celebrities after the break. Driving a weather. Learn coming at you. It's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening on Sunday, June 2nd, so lock in your NASCAR tickets now. Go to www.raceway.com. EMS responding to an accident reported eastbound on Highway A at Fairview Church Road, as well as a stalled vehicle westbound 270 at 367. The right lane was closed earlier. Your weather today, gorgeous. 79 as the high, a little cloudier than it was yesterday. 49 as the low. Right now it's 50 out there at 830. All right, learn what he got. Are we all going on a blue voyage? Scott, are you planning to play the Jimmy Buffett tribute show that's coming up? Rest in peace to Eric Carmen And Al Pacino has some words for all of us who were talking trash on him yesterday. All right, we got that. We got your crappy mm. birthdays. We got the porno birthday. And I know Moon and I always say that 1994 was the greatest year in music. Mm -hmm. But was it? Is there another year that's maybe better? Ooh. All right, we'll, uh, we'll chop it up next day there. For the Bath Authority. Now, if your bath or shower is old, outdated as mold and mildew or broken tiles, you got to call my friends at the Bath Authority. Then they provide the highest quality bathroom remodeling products along with a world-class customer experience. Modern, durable tubs. The showers are designed with an exclusive high-tech polymer liner. High-tech polymer liner? Riz, what is that? Well, I'll tell you. Here's what it means to you. It means it's low maintenance, it's resistant to mold and mildew, it's easy to clean, and it's going to last for decades. In fact, it comes with a lifetime warranty. Replacement showers, walk-in tubs, tub-to-shower conversions, and more. Every unit custom-built. You pick the premium accents, you pick the accessories. Safety features like low-profile showers, grab bars, and shower seats. All Bath Authority products are 100% made in the USA and can be installed in as little as one day by certified factory techs. Call today at 314-347-0410. Get 1000 bucks off a new shower or bath plus 36 months of interest-free financing. Elevate your bathroom to a new level of luxury, style, and safety. Call today at 314-347-0410. Schedule your free in-home estimate today. Get 1000 bucks off a new shower or bath plus 36 months of interest-free financing. TheBathAuthority.com. A better bath awaits.
So uh, here we are, our very first Ho Ho Show of 2017, our Christmas show. Uh, you will be our first band that we will see, Two Thirds of Biffy Clyro. Gentlemen, how are you? Oh, it's really well. great to see you. Really well, and after that introduction, we're very excited uh, <laughs> to be opening up the Ho Ho, the Ho Ho party. Ho -ho, the yeah, ho, -ho, yeah. ho 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 party. The ho 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 party. And I feel like. Even if, I don't know if you know the Rise Against guys, and I know that musically you guys might not necessarily be in lockstep, but I feel like this is a really great rock and roll show from, you know, rock bands are a little bit different. Do you know those yeah, guys? Yeah, we, we, we don't know them. Not personally, we, we've, we've, we've <coughs> shared many festival bills in Europe with them. Those guys have been around for such a long time, and we, we hold them in the highest regard. So I think to play a show with them is a real honour for us, you know. And yeah, you, maybe not uh, musically uh, akin to each other. Sure. But I think there's a little bit of a crossover yeah. there. And, we, don't, uh, we don't really, f we don't fit bang on with with anyone really. With many there's bands. always, a, there's always like a slight discrepancy going on <laughs> sure. in, in the music world. So Rise Against are about as close as it gets, to be honest. But I would think that would kind of work for you yeah. as well, because then you can kind of be on a lot of different lineups, uh, on a lot of different bills. Yeah, that's that kind of it. Yeah, we, we, we find ourselves playing in heavy rock festivals and almost more mainstream pop festivals and kind of everything in between. And we're, we either kind of stick out like a sore thumb for the right reason or not. But we, we, we quite like that. We're, yeah. we're at home whenever we play. Very good, very good. Well, it's it's really a pleasure to have you back in town. Um, we were supposed to have you uh, a little bit earlier on this year. Uh, unfortunately, that was not able to happen. Um, but um, from what I understand from my sources inside of your camp, we've infiltrated it, by the way. You're big, gun, you're big Guns N' Roses guys? Oh, we love yes. Guns N' Roses. And, and so you were excited to go to where the riot in 91 happened? Oh, my God. <laughs> that's no, 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 that's it. It's a... Uh, we, we, we can... This is it. This is the month that my family is leaving for Florida, and we're doing it the right way. The more fun way, and the way that's going to save us the most money, and that is through Byerly RV. Byerly is the center of the RV world. We've had them right here in our backyard for 75 plus years. Three generations of family and locally owned. And you probably already know them from all the incredible RV shows, the expos, their RV sales, and their presence in our community. But did you know that they have a service department that just had a 16 bay expansion that they have an entire parts division that's bigger than any other that i've seen they've got a youtube channel to make sure that you are always prepared and maxing out the adventure of rving and they have rental services we are taking a beautiful super c from their rental fleet for spring break and me the kids my wife we are so excited it's a better family adventure than flying somewhere and it's saving us so much money if you're looking to get into the rv lifestyle or if you're an old pro you go to the center of the rv world and that's Byerly. Byerly RV. Tell them Moon sent you. Check out the website. Check out the YouTube channel. See all they have going on for our beautiful community here. And don't forget that RVing can be up to 60% less expensive for a family of four than other types of vacations. Get the adventure started at ByerlyRV.com. That's ByerlyRV.com. All right, it is Memorial Day weekend. We just got up to the farm. Job number one, feed the chickens. Let's go. Yes, one turkey, two turkeys. <laughs> yeah. All right, come on. Get the chicken out. Cut. Okay, got to feed the chickens. Here's what they eat. Look at here. Oh! Where camera guy? There we go. Hi, <laughs> chickens. Here we go. Who wants to eat? <laughs> Welcome back to the farm, and uh, I think it's time to check out the chicken house. All right, welcome to the chicken house. Let's see inside. Check this out. 
Look in the nest. Duck eggs, those will hatch in about 28 days, and we'll have five more ducks hopefully on the farm. So here's the pen. The ducks hang out here, the chickens hang out here. The doors are normally open because they just wander around, but this is home base. And that little door there closes at seven o'clock automatically, so everybody better be inside. So now you saw most of the animals. Next week, out to the field. We gotta do some work. Thanks for coming to the farm. Who is Trailer Trash Tammy? What happens when you combine random internet trends into a single video? What is a mukbang? And are we so desperate to be distracted from our own reality that we resorted to binging videos of people shoveling anything edible into their face hole? More on that today on The Number Two Show. Welcome back to The Number Two Show. Today, forget sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby. We've got something that tops them all and is twice as indulgent. Mukbangs. Mukbangs sound like something that would require a lot of explaining if your mom caught you watching one on the family computer. But, turns out, it's not something you find on Pornhub. It is kind of like food porn, though, where you witness the hard pounding of thousands of calories. Hey, about my son's eye doctor, that's Dr. Vasella over at Fenton Family Eye Care. Now, Dr. V, great dude. One of only two pediatric specialists in St. Louis affiliated with Treehouse Eyes that does myopia control for kids. Now, my son, he's nearsighted. And his prescription for his glasses keeps getting worse every year. And contacts are a pain. Uh, I'm yelling at the kid all the time, where are your glasses? I lost my glasses. I left them at school. Okay, so with Dr. Frisella and myopia control, my son puts in overnight contacts. Okay, so before he goes to bed, he puts in the, in the, in the contact lenses. When he gets them in the morning, he takes them out. He doesn't have to wear glasses all day long. I mean, it's, it's amazing. He doesn't have to wear glasses. He doesn't have, to, doesn't have to put the contacts in, and he can see all day long. And I think every parent should know about this. And basically, it's paused my son's prescription from getting worse. You just got to make an appointment. You got to go for a consultation. Consultations are absolutely free. Zero obligation. Go to FentonFamilyEyeCare.com and book that free myopia control appointment. That's FentonFamilyEyeCare.com and book that free myopia control appointment. FentonFamilyEyeCare.com. It is a very, very big day in the land of uh, Red Hot Chili Pepper fans everywhere, and I am so unbelievably honored to be joined today by Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Flea St. Louis is saying hello to you. I love St. Louis, and I fondly miss the raucous nights, at Mississippi nights that we used to have over there. And um, hello to everybody, love to one and all. Man, it's it's really great to hear your voice, but also, too, it's wonderful to have a new Red Hot Chili Peppers album that is out today, and John Frusciante back in the Chili Peppers. Flea, can you kind of talk to us a little bit about how he got back? You know, he didn't play it yesterday, but uh, today we'll play three and five giveaways some fabulous prizes, including tickets to go see Five Finger Death Punch with Marilyn Manson. Saturday night, August 10th, over at the Hollywood Casino Amphitheater, we got tickets to go see I Prevail with Hailstorm. Big summer show at Hollywood Undead on August 7th at the Amphitheater. We got tickets to go see Sum 41 at the Factory on April 27th. I'm sorry, April 24th. And uh, tickets to go, see thir- uh, to go see Third Eye Blind with Yellow Card, June 29th at the Amphitheater. So I know, you know, Moon and I say this a lot, and we think that 1994, probably the greatest year in rock and roll music. Yeah. So many great things came out in 1994. Mm-hmm. But, man, somebody made a good argument about 1991. Oh, yes. Temple of the Dog. Man, 1991. <sighs> Give a 1994 a run for its money. Did 10 come out in 1991? Oh, yeah. Did, um, which Nirvana album? Never mind. Never mind came out in 91. Dude, there are. Was that a big one? Was there one. are, within 44 days, I'll tell you what came out in 1991. Within 44 days. Pearl Jam's 10, Mm -hmm. Soundgarden's Bad Motorfinger, Nirvana's Nevermind, Metallica's Black Album, Chili Peppers' Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and Guns N' Roses both use your illusion records. Yeah. Dang. And I'm all within 44 days. There's also Primus selling the Seas of Cheese. Oh, I've got a list. Oh, okay. Okay, so 
All came out in 91. As I mentioned, 10, Bad Motor Finger, Nevermind, Black Album, Crazy. Temple of the Dog, Temple of the Dog, Chili Peppers, Blood Sugar, Sex Magic, U2's Octung Baby, Stevie Ray Vaughan's The Sky is Crying, Guns N' Roses, Use Your Illusions, R.E.M.'s Out of Time, Ozzy Osbourne, No More Tears, Rush, Roll the Bones, Van Halen for Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, mm -hmm. Smashing Pumpkins, mm -hmm. Gish, Tom Petty's Into the Great Wide Open, Sailing the Seas of Cheese from Primus, Alice Cooper's Hey Stupid, and Slave to the Grind from, from Skid Row. Wow. Damn. That is it. Whoo. Yeah, Genesis, man. We Can't Dance. Well, oh, yeah. I know. I'd, uh, throw that on the list. I mean, that really opened the decade. Yep. 1991 opened the 90s for us. And you're forgetting the big album of that year. It's Ween, the pod. Nope. Young Riz just getting out of middle school, junior high. <laughs> what? That's, that sounds funny. I love it. Why end of the world? our 1991 montage. Yeah. Ah, you, well, you get the point. Not a 1991 bad was a damn good year it for was. rock music. Dang. Changed everything. All those albums changed everything. Just like it, lots of people, I come from the KG world where everybody wants to talk about how the albums of the 60s and the 70s changed everything, and they did. We had that sort of experience in the 90s with 1991. With 1991. Yep. So here, here's the 1991. Cheers. Hip, hip. Hooray. hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. You hooray. know what's crazy is I was in first grade in 1991, <laughs> and I still had the impact of all those albums. I mean, and that... I know that sounds weird being, what, seven, eight years old, seven years old and you're in first mm -hmm. grade, but I remember getting into Nirvana and finding that music on radio. In first grade? In first grade. I mean, my we listened to WTAO down in Southern Illinois, and that is what it sounded yeah. like. And I fell in love with Pearl Jam and Nirvana. And of course, at the same time, started falling in love with bands like No Doubt. And that's my era of music that I found, that my parents didn't download onto me, you right. know? Mm -hmm. TAO. Deep cut. Yeah, that stuff would come on the radio or, you know, uh, somebody MTV. would turn me on to, you know, or MTV or somebody would turn me on to, you know, Pearl Jam's 10 and I get a tingling in my loins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something about this. Right. Mm. Something about this is awesome. Changing. Changing. Becoming a man. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I remember they bring the Metallica Black album up to somebody bring like a boombox with batteries in it up to the basketball courts in the summer. Where all the kids would hang out and play like pickup games, and it would just be on repeat. It's like the soundtrack of my childhood. Well, if you remember, like real Metallica fans did not like the Black Album. Well, they were so wrong. They were incensed. Mm -hmm. This is not Metallica. I it's honestly, palatable. Well, I like old Metallica too. But. <laughs> I like old Metallica. You can like old Metallica and that stuff too. It's yeah. okay. I didn't feel like the Black Album was a wild departure. Oh, if you like ask it, was, a, what was the record before that? It was it was Injustice well, but for All. Everything was, I guess, at ninety one. You're coming off of like hair metal, hair metal era, but that's it was dying. Just like I mean, I hate it because I loved like big hair bands, but like the ones that didn't evolve didn't make it. Well, it's because they yeah. were on MTV. You know, they wanted them to be the Thrash Kings for life. They didn't want them to actually sell out. In quotes. Oh right. yeah, well, but, you ask a Metallica fan, they sold out in nineteen ninety one. Yeah, sold out. Wow. I think it's just also. I was too young to know, growing as and I just had. I enjoyed it. Me too. I thought it was cool. I had, there was a kid up the street who was into Metallica. I remember he had the Injustice for All patch on the back of his jean jacket. Nice. And loved Anthrax too. He yeah. was super pissed about the Black Album. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. But he probably went to see them this year. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Today is uh, March twelfth. Back in the day, one hundred thirty years ago, eighteen ninety four, the first bottles of Coca Cola were sold. 67 years ago, 1957, Dr. Seuss publishes The Cat in the Hat. 
52 years ago, 1972, the great Gordie Howe retires after 26 seasons in the NHL. 28 years ago, 1996, Weird Al puts out his ninth record called Bad Hair Day with what on it? Bad Hair Day had Amish Paradise. Um, and Gump. Gump. Oh, yeah. Gump was on that. Obviously a polka. Uh, 17 years ago, 2007, Van Halen, R.E.M., Patti Smith, the Ronettes, and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 15 years ago, 2009, Bertie Madoff pleaded guilty to scamming $18 billion from Wall Street investors. Ponzi scheme is the largest financial fraud in U.S. history. And five years ago today in 2019, dozens are charged in the U.S. college admission scandal by the U.S. federal prosecutors, including Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman. Oh, Aunt Becky. That was five years ago today. And that's what happened back in the day. All right, time to find out what's going on in the world of music and entertainment with your crap on celebrities. And it's brought to you by Bright House Plumbing. Call the best. Flush the rest. BrightHouseCo.com. 636-600-0188. You know, and, and Chris brings up a good point. I think Metallica fans only pretended to not like it. Yeah. Once mainstream audiences did. Yeah. Sure. Because weren't they already mainstream before that, technically? I mean, they're on a major label. They were... Uh, I mean, giants. they were getting one... You know, one was being played on MTV mm -hmm. from Injustice for All. So they were starting to get some success. Yeah. 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 But they wanted to keep them, keep them for themselves. Right. Sure. Sure. Hey, let's talk about another album. The Blue Album from Weezer. The Blue Voyage that Weezer have been teasing for weeks is a fall tour that they're going to mark their 30th anniversary of their self-titled debut album. Um, they're going to be playing it in full, and the Voyage of the Blue Planet will uh, start out in September in St. Paul, Minnesota, wrapping up in October in Los Angeles. The closest they get to us here is actually up near Chicago. They will be playing at uh, Rose, Rosemont, Illinois, uh, September 6th. But man, I would travel. Not a fan. Are you not a fan? I would travel to see this album played I in like its entirety. I like some songs. You don't like the blue album, though? I mean, I, I wasn't that... Were you a Pinkerton person? No, I wasn't really a Weezer fan. Really? I, I, I kind of... I missed it. I mean, it was 30 years ago, so... You are a heavier 94. music fan, yeah. I would say. Yeah. I loved them. Uh, Flaming Lips and Dinosaur Jr. will be the support That's on this fun. Blue Voyage. So, I don't know. I might have to trek up to Chicago to see this. A tribute concert honoring Jimmy Buffett's going to take place this April. Were you invited? Um, yes, he actually did reach out, so I'm going to headline that. Oh, good. I'm it's decided now. <laughs> um, I immediately thought of your song mm -hmm. that you did. Why do I feel like a tribute concert for Jimmy Buffett should not be in L.A.? Why is it not on a beach somewhere? Yeah. Why is it not in well, Florida? LA. Like, didn't he live in Florida? Yeah, the Keys. Yeah, should, be the Keys. should be in the Huntington Keys. Huntington or Santa Monica or something? This will be at the Hollywood Bowl on April oh. 11th. It's called Keep the Party Going, a tribute to Jimmy Buffett. Performances will feature Paul McCartney, the Eagles, John Bon Jovi, Zach Brown, Jackson Brown, Brandy Carlisle, Kenny Chesney, Eric Church, Cheryl Crow, Pitbull, and others. Yeah, I feel like that should be a beach thing. I knew Chesney would be there, dude. Oh, yeah, he's the new, he's he's the the new, new rain. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, found out recently that Paul McCartney and Jimmy Buffett were really good friends. Mm. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Like, really, really good friends. What do you mean by that? No, I, I mean lovers. <laughs> they were lovers? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news. No, I mean, like, I think Paul McCartney visited Jimmy Buffett, like, when Jimmy Buffett was at the oh, end. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. Buffett passed away last September after battling a rare skin cancer at the age of 76. Sir Elton John got back behind the piano in front of a star-studded audience. He had his uh, annual Academy Awards viewing party to benefit his AIDS Foundation. The event raised a record setting $10.8 million, passing previous uh, totals set back in 2022 of just more than $1 million. So that's pretty cool that he raised a ton of money for this AIDS Foundation. Um, tons of people were in-house. Donatella Versace, Sharon Stone, uh, Danny DeVito was there, oh, Tim God. Allen. Pretty cool. Um, rest in peace to Eric Carmen. I just found this out this morning that you're a huge Eric Carmen fan. Dude, that guy had some bangers. He did have some bangers. He was the former lead vocalist of the Raspberries, <laughs> singer of All By Myself. <laughs> he died at the age of 74. Let's take a little trip down. Yeah, Eric here's Carmen my little, and I would play this every every year on Eric Carmen's birthday. Really? Like, hey, I want to remind people about Eric Carmen. This guy had some great songs. I thought you said Eric Cartman at first. <laughs> dude, come on, man. It's a banger, dude. This song's great. I just think of Patrick Swayze crawling. Not 
Cartman. Carmen. Carmen. Yeah, yeah Carmen was wasn't. Like, Whoa, he's what not happened that on old. South Park? <laughs> Carmen's only what nine or ten? Something yeah. Like that? Well, Eric Carmen died at the age of seventy-four. They haven't disclosed as to why. Rest in peace. Um, we talked yesterday about Al Pacino being a total weirdo at the Oscars on Sunday night, and it was very awkward whenever he announced the winner for Best Picture. He skipped over announcing all 10 of the nominees and instead yeah. just quickly said the winner. And he wrote on Twitter, he says, there seems to be some controversy about my not mentioning every film by name last night before announcing the Best Picture Award. I just want to be clear that it was not my intention to omit them, rather a choice by the producers well, not to have them said again and, once they were highlighted. Okay, and and uh, let me play a little piece. This is, this is from... The, it's the way he did it. Well, he did say the 10 films. Has he never seen the Oscars before? <laughs> not, maybe and, not. And when they say, and the Oscar goes to. Right. Like, there was none of that. I'm going to present it. Uh, 10 wonderful films uh, were nominated, but only one will take the award for Best Picture. Hoo-ah! And... Uh, I have to go to the envelope for that. Okay. And the and Oscar I goes will. to? Here it comes. <laughs> and my eyes see Oppenheimer. He's old yeah. as hell. This is how old people talk. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, awesome. I, mean, I mean, you hear the audience like, ah, oh, okay, okay. Is, this, is that the winner? He says, I was honored to be part of the evening and chose to follow the way they wished for this award to be presented. I realized that being nominated is a huge milestone in one's life and to not be fully recognized is offensive and hurtful. I say this as someone who profoundly relates with filmmakers, actors, and producers, so I deeply empathize with those who have been slighted by this oversight, and it's why I felt it necessary to oh, make this I don't statement. think anybody was slighted. Everybody'd be okay. Everybody's fine. Everybody's fine. fine. He sounded like he just ate a bag of Skittles. He might have. Right before he went on stage. He's got like an eight-month-old kid at home. He's a young. Isn't that Bobby De Niro? I think they both have kids. What's up with those guys? <laughs> those guys, they're be awesome. Humping. <laughs> those guys both have like kids under one years old. I know they're both eighty. Sad. Um, this is Spinal Tap Two has think. entered production in New Orleans. The original film was directed by Rob Reiner and opened in theaters in 1984. The film is a mockumentary following the heavy metal band Spinal Tap. Uh, cameos for This is Spinal Tap Two: Questlove, Trisha Yearwood, as well as Paul McCartney, Elton John, and Garth Brooks are all scheduled to be in the new movie. Nice. Oh man, I hope this doesn't spoil the legacy. Reiner will direct the sequel, Return to his role as Marty DeBerge. Man, you're really rolling the dice. Especially with that, what you just said would be guest starring in this. Yeah. I mean, it could be yeah. so, it could be extremely cheesy. I don't know. I just hope. Don't watch it then if you're worried. I have to watch it. I know. <laughs> but if it's anything like, yeah, but he's directing it. It'll be all right. Maybe. Huh. Probably not. Hey, what the hell's going on with Kate Middleton? Just you let me know. Listen to me. I was at Jenny Lewis on Sunday night, okay? And there were, the, there was, I, there were two men sitting in front of me. I was standing. And I, before Jenny came on, I happened to see one of the guys was on his phone and I got kind of curious, like a creeper and he was scrolling and he, he stopped on the Kate Middleton photo of her with her kids. It was, was the first photo that had come out since she'd been missing. Well, so she's, she had abdominal surgery a while ago. Yes. Nobody has seen her since, been recovering. since before the surgery. Mm -hmm. There's been all the speculation that she's dead. Yeah. Uh, William's having an affair. He's had a girlfriend, a side piece for a couple of years oh, now. God. So she puts out this picture. Right. <laughs> Immediately, the internet sleuths like Photoshop, 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 yes. Photoshop, Photoshop. There were some things about the photo that were edited. Um, like, for instance, Princess Charlotte's arm not lining up with her sleeve. And then there was a lack of focus on Prince George's little right hand. So now Kate is admitting that it's a manipulated photo. She apologized. She says, quote, like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I wanted to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone is celebrating and having a happy Mother's Day. And this is something that is now fueled the rumors. Yeah. Right. Because yeah, especially the signed Trish. So Buckingham it. Palace put out the picture uh -huh. and then put a very rare kill the picture like, so put it, like, hey, to all the new sites, like, kill the picture. It's been man manipulated. Uh-huh. But and apparently by very, Kate. That's very rare that that happens. <laughs> yeah. Now they're saying that if you look at Kate's face. <laughs> Were you the guy it's on the, the page the other day? the face she made on the cover of Vogue. Oh, no. And they put, like, the two pictures oh, on top boy. of each other. It's the same. Is Kate dead? Is Kate dead? Is this fake Kate? And you see there's the only other picture is in the car. And you can't even tell who's. Well, in the there was a picture that came out 
two weeks ago than a car with her mother. I don't know. Maybe she should just jump on Instagram Man. and be like, hey, you weirdos, I'm all good. Like, why something's that, up. Something's up. Something's up. Well, I, also, the couple weeks ago, the when they do the big change, what's it called? You know, the Changing Royal the, Guards, oh, yeah, yeah. Change of the Guards, they carried some a couple symbols that mean... A Was royal, it a coffin? Were they no, carrying a coffin? No, but they carried this thing that only usually reflects when the royal is, has died. What? And no one knew which one. And Weird as hell. I don't yeah. know what's going on. Well, dude. I know. Rafe's been following this, so yeah, yes. I'm in. We're doing conspiracy theories on number two show today. Oh, live. Bring this up. Bring it up. Anyway, yeah. that is your crap on celebrities. All right, so celebrity celebrating a birthday today. Jake Tapper from CNN is 55. Aaron Eckhart, Harvey Dent in the Dark Knight is 56. Daryl Strawberry, four-time World Series champ. I believe he lives out in St. Charles now. Yeah. He just survived a heart attack or something. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Daryl Strawberry is 62. Uh, Courtney B. Vance. Uh, Johnny Cochran on The People versus O.J. Simpson. He's Angela Bassett's husband. Graduated from Harvard and Yale. Wow. Courtney B. Vance <clears throat> is 64. Iron Maiden bassist and founder Steve Harris is 68. James, sweet baby James Taylor. Uh, 76 years old today. Beautiful man. Uh, Senator Mitt Romney is 77. And Lucille II from Arrested Development, <laughs> Liza Minnelli, is 78 today. Uh, today's Porno Birthday, which is being brought to you by Patricia's, where fun and fantasy meet, is a legendary he whore who I believe is currently incarcerated and not doing great. Yes. The Hedgehog, Ron Jeremy. <laughs> oh, the Hedgehog. God. We celebrate his birthday today. Uh, today's he whore has been in how many films has Ron Jeremy been in? Go ahead. Well, we had Scott. A, well, the lady yesterday was like 1500 or something, so I'm going to say he's. Got to be right around that. 15, I'll go 1,700. Uh, 1,700. Learn um, how many films. <laughs> how many days has it been since his is he in, started? Uh, Ron uh, Jeremy's. He's probably uh, been in a few. One a day. I'm going 20,000. No, I'm going uh, 1,500. 1,500. Uh, Rafe? Well, this is old school. This guy was pushing Bush back in the 70s. <laughs> there was only four or five guys back then. There weren't a lot of male porn stars back in the day because they didn't have, I don't know why. It was like, we talked about this. It was like Peter North, the Hedgehog, John Holmes. Yeah, yeah. His credits only go back to the 80s. So he Remember wasn't, I don't even, think he was even in the Even the 70s. 80s, though, dude. Like, name another guy from that era. So those guys were getting in. They were getting in. Yeah. And Ron Jeremy was uh, a phenom. So I'm going to say, I think upwards of over 2,000. 2,590 fine films. Damn. <laughs> oh, man. Including. Against All Bods, Alan McPheel, The Anus Family, Ass Gas and the Mystical Glop, <laughs> The Babes of Bonerville, Beaver and Butt Cheeks, The Butt Sisters, Do Sturgis, Dog the Booty Hunter, The Girls of Ball Street, Gluteus to the Maximus, Heidi's Heroes, Hung Wankenstein, <laughs> The TNA Team, Hung This Little Piggy Went to Porno. This who, little piggy went to porno. And who could forget his role <laughs> in 1993's Mistress Heine, the Beverly Hills butt broker? Okay. Hung Wankenstein. Yeah. Putting on the Ritz. Ron Jeremy <laughs> is 72 years old. That's your porno birthday. Those were your crappy birthdays, and that was your crap on celebrities. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Uh, let's give away some stuff. We'll play three and five. <laughs> Uh, Rafe will take the lead today. Uh, so Rafe will give you a category. You name three things in that category within five seconds. Two out of three categories, right? You win your choice of prizes. We've got tickets to go see Five Finger Death Punch with Marilyn Manson. We've got tickets to go see I Prevail with Hailstorm. Some 41 with The Interrupters. And Third Eye Blind with Yellow Card. If you want to play 314-624-3833, 618-398-3833. No ums or ahs to start your answer. Them's the rules. Three and five, next. All right, it's 9.04. It is Tuesday. Traveling and weather, learn coming at you. And it's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening Sunday, June 2nd. Get those NASCAR Cup Series tickets, wwtraceway.com. Emergency vehicles, northbound 270, just past Dorset. The right lane is blocked there. 74 will be the high today. A little overcast, but still gorgeous. 49 as the low tonight. And currently 49 degrees at 904.
joined by Seether. Gentlemen, how are you? It's great to see you, and thank you for being here with us. Uh, you know, the first thing I want to bring to your attention, and I'm sure that you guys don't keep track of this because you have way bigger things to do, but this is your sixth point fest, all right? Out of the 30-some-odd awesome. that we've done, you've done six of them. Not to mention birthday shows, Christmas shows. While other rock bands have kind of gone by the wayside, you guys have just been a constant core artist for us. I was looking last night, we have played like 26 different Seether songs in the history of our career, you know, in your career Thanks, and man. our career as well. You have just been such an important part of the station as the alternative format goes left and we stay rocking. You yeah, guys yeah. have been a really big part of that. And I just, as the music director of the radio station, just wanted to say thank you. And I'm sorry, Sean, if you're That's getting fine. eaten alive by something. I'm so what if you could stay in your home and yet sell it and take advantage of this crazy market right now? Well, I got some good news you can because you've been making house payments for years and you know that your home value has never been higher. So that means you're likely sitting on a small fortune there of equity, which is fantastic for you because that cash right there, that could be used to secure your retirement, solve all your financial burdens, enable you to travel everything you want. But the catch is you're not ready to move. Now, yeah, here's what's awesome is that with Truehold, they have the sell and stay lease back program, which is an absolutely beautiful financial strategy. You can sell your home to Truehold while the value is still high. You bank that equity and cash now. Stay as long as you like with an easy, affordable lease. And Truehold, they pay your property taxes and insurance and maintenance. And since Truehold unlocks your wealth without uprooting your life, get a hold of Truehold now. While home values are still high, call 1 855 300 9993 or visit truehold.com. The smarter, faster way to cash out without moving out. That's truehold.com. So if you change my mind a thousand times, you better hear them say, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I like it that way. Any man of mine better change the line. He better squeeze and a please and a I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing very well. And, I, and I'm going to tell you that I did something today and I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even bring it up that I'm doing. Okay. I wore a shirt specifically to impress you because I was interviewing you. <laughs> and, right. and normally I don't do that, right. but, I, I, but I did, but also too, and I can't see it, but I've got this awesome masked intruder shirt on. Uh, and I oh, just, I love it. Yeah. And I just figured that that would be one of those bands that you would be, you know, very cool. Like, that, that we're a band that Rise Against played with somewhere along the way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we have a Mask Intruder. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they're a Fat Records band. Yep. And, um, you know, I still consider us part of the Fat Records family. You know, like that's where we got our start. That's who first signed our band. Uh, Mentality. Mentality health. Guys, life is too short to go through it not feeling great. You want to be at 100% so you can take care of yourself, take care of everything that you need to take care of, and just feel good at the end and the beginning of the day. Mentality health is the best of the best. Men's health specialists, they specialize in making sure that we feel, look, and perform at our very best no matter what age, no matter what we're doing, no matter what the day brings or throws at us. Mentality Health isn't about frills. They're not about trying to be everything to everybody. They're men's specialists. So guys, if it's time to stop making excuses and start making changes, do it with the best. You want the best in your life so you can be the best for your life. That is Mentality Health. They got a South County and a West County location. So when you've decided it's time to stop making excuses and start making the right changes, start with Mentality Health at one of those two locations. You can get information, read testimonials from former pro athletes and guys just like you and me on the website, mentalityhealth.com. So here we are, way back Point Fest. Goldfinger, everybody. Shaka. Yes. Hey. Yes. And so here's the thing, okay? John, first things first. Seen the band a million times. Phenomenal band. 
you've changed members here, but now you've got a goddamn all-star team going on with our buddy Mike, and then we've got Phil here and Moon, and it's just Phil like, and Moon. Phil yeah, you know, it's funny. He's never called me that. I've never, wow. never called once. you that ever. And I'm sorry, but that <laughs> no, was the fine. first thing that popped it's into my head. It's the first <laughs> Moon was telling me to, because you know, we've I've known I've known Moon a long, long time, and yeah, uh, yeah. I've watched him transition into this amazing frontman of the of Greek Fire. It's just an incredible transformation that we've made from nice. when I first met him with this like afro yeah, out yeah. to here and just like this kid straight out of college did, actually did you go to college no i did not go this to college. kid straight out of high school <laughs> right, right. like did you go to high school i did go to high school i even finished with a kid <laughs> okay well it's it's really Me great too. to yeah. have you guys but how does how does mike get in the equation how does phil get, Milne get in the equation like how do you decide these guys because i know you obviously with the work you do as a producer you're I mean, there's tons of musicians everywhere that, yeah. that, that you can get to be a part of Goldfinger. Um, I, th I think the first time Goldfinger played with MXPX was probably 1996 up in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. Radio About show. That. Yeah, radio and show. I remember, like, I, like, same thing. I mean, Mike was a teenager when I first saw him play, yeah. whenever that was. And, and I've known him for forever and ever and ever. And I watched MXPX grow from, like, an opening, opening band into, like, headlining bigger than Goldfinger. It was, like, amazing watching. These are, you know, look at this guy. I mean, he's such a handsome he's guy, so great cute. songwriter, great <laughs> voice, great bass player, everything, you know? And so when we just started talking one day, you know, when Kelly joined Buck Cherry, it was sort of like I had tours booked, and I'm like, who would be my first choice? Right. My Carrera would be choice one. And I called him, and it all worked. And here we are. How about that? Here we are. Still doing it. Woo! And great new record, by the way. And you, well, and it is. <laughs> the, the knife is fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and I told Moon this, like, I don't buy CDs anymore. I'm a download vinyl guy, but I was buying something at the record store and they had the knife like right there at the display. And I was like, well, I got to get this. And it's fantastic. It's everything that I want in a Goldfinger record. Thank man. you. How do you download vinyl, by the way? Well, I don't download vinyl. <laughs> I just want to know a, because there if there's some new technology you know, on the radio that you know about, I need yeah. to learn. Well, it's good to know that I'm getting crap from you after just meeting you for the first time. That's fantastic. Spring right around the corner officially. I'm um, looking at the weather here. It's supposed to rain, you know, Wednesday into Thursday. Um, what's going on uh, as far as your roof goes? Everything all right up there? All the shingles in place? Is there water getting behind the walls? You have no idea because you haven't been up there. Even if you were up there, you put a ladder up against the side of the house, you climb up onto the roof, you don't know what you're looking for. You got to get the pros up there. Happy Roof Co. If you have a leaky roof, an old roof, a damaged roof, or if your roof is ugly. The Happy Roof Company should be your first call. In fact, if you call today, they'll have somebody out to look at your issue within 24 hours. Residential roofing, uh, commercial roofing, 10-year labor warranty on all shingle roofs, over 50 years combined experience, roofing, siding, gutters, financing available, A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, free estimates, competitive pricing. You should get your roof inspected every year or so. Call the Happy Roof Company, 314-665-3001. 314-665-3001 online at thehappyroof.com. It's the Happy Roof Company. They put the happy in happy endings. Well, here we are at the uh, Chaffetz Arena gigantic show tonight with the Killers, joined by uh, Brandon and Ronnie. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah. I love the album. Wonderful, wonderful is out now. It is. Uh, it's. It, it's such a great record. Um, I think very much worth the wait. I want to know first things first about Jackknife Lee yeah. uh, that uh, that produced this record for you. I know there were a couple of other guys as well that did a track. You get it? All right, let's give away some stuff. All right, today we're playing three and five. Uh, Rafe's going to take the helm today. So Rafe's going to give you a category. You name three things in that category within five seconds. Two out of three categories, right? You win. No ums or ahs to start your answer. Correct. Um, we got Five Finger Death Bunch, Marilyn Manson tickets, I Prevail Hailstorm tickets, Sum 41 Interrupters tickets, and Third Eye Blind Yellow Car tickets. 314-624-3833 or 618-398-3833. We go to the phones. And let me make sure my timer is ready to go. That's ready. And we'll start with Courtney in Jerseyville. Good morning, Courtney. Happy birthday, Riz. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Lord. All right. Here we go. Let's play three and five. Rafe. All right, Courtney, are you ready? I am, Rafe. All right, Courtney. Name three songs by Taylor Swift. You belong with me. Teardrops on my guitar. Take it off. Yo. What's up, Courtney? Wow. Wow. Okay. 
Well done. All right, Courtney. One for one. One for one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Name three living members of the royal family. William, Charles, and King Philip. Yes. Is Wait. King Philip alive? No. Nope. I think he just King Philip died. Philip died. Is dead. Oh, I think he just my died. He lives. King Philip was the queen's husband? I think yes. so. He think died he... before her. Yeah. Uh, no. Wait, is there another Philip, though? Oh, King Philip. She said, said King Philip. I think Prince Philip, but I think he also just died. Yeah, Prince Philip just... Prince Philip is dead. Oh, uh, all right. I would have okay. given you Prince Philip. Fine. Right. Prince Fielder. One more. One more. Oh, this is a mono one. I'm not going right. to do this to you. Uh, <laughs> all right. Name three things in the sky. Clouds, flames, rocket ships. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much handed for the tickets. Hang on, Courtney. Three things Clouds, in the flames, sky. Rocket ship. Sometimes people get caught up. Or saying um. <laughs> you want me to do, man? No, it's fine. Who's running this game? No, no, you're right. You're right. I, listen, I get to come. <laughs> Sometimes the inside things come out. I know. That's what we like about you. It's great. Uh, Dan yeah, in you, Old Monroe. You want to hear what the other choice was? That I'm going to do. I saw it. I saw it. Dan. Thank you. D d d exhibition. How are we doing? Doing well so far. Exhibition one. This doesn't count. I can say it. Okay. Say it. This doesn't count. Three European soccer clubs. Nope. Yeah. Exactly. See? That's a moon question. It's a moon question, and I vetoed it. <laughs> Didn't count. Okay. I Here we go. This counts now. See? I did your right. salad. All right. Are you ready? Name three ready. games played on the Riz show. Three and five. Uh, do a bitch. Uh, oh. Gosh, that was brain fart. Fuck, yeah. It's not Password. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Fine. It's fine. Here it comes. All right, Dan. Here Dan, comes, uh, name three animals larger than a house cat. Dog, giraffe, lion. Oh, Ooh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. It seems easy when <laughs> yeah. you say it out loud, but okay. yeah, you got in under the wire. <laughs> Comes down to this. All right, let's go. All right, Dan, here we go. Good luck with this. Name three country songs. I feel like a woman... Um, oh, we didn't ask how you I felt. Love. I asked for three country songs. <laughs> I love that. that oh, was confession! The one. I feel like a woman. Uh, I feel like a woman. And he's hung up. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a woman. John, you there? Happy anniversary, Riz. Hey, thanks, buddy. Here we go, John in Washington. All right, John. Name three sci-fi movies. Bad phone. Bad phone. Bad phone. I can't. I can't do it. Mm -mm. Johnny, there. You hear? No. No. We no. Phone, is, phone is caca. Uh, Mike in Collinsville. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Happy birthday, Riz. Thanks, buddy. Here we go. All right. Other than Earth, name three planets in our solar system. Venus, Mars, Jupiter. Venus, Mars, Ooh. Jupiter. Boom. Regular Neil deGrasse Tyson over here. Mm -hmm. Got a regular Neil deGrasse Tyson on our hands here. <laughs> All right, Neil. Name three large cities on the West Coast. Boston, D.C., West Buddy Coast. Buddy West. West Coast. Yeah. Not, the, not the East Coast. That's okay. I'm dyslexic sometimes. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Geographically dyslexic. Good right. with the sky. Not so good with the land. You know All right, I mean? Mike, final one. Here we go. All right, Mike, name three of your favorite songs. One, one Step Closer, Blackened. No. no. Hmm. Lincoln Park fan, that's cool. All right. I mean, that should have been, I guess you put on the spot. Uh, <laughs> what are my favorite yeah, songs? You never know. What are my favorite songs? That should have been a hand on the ticket. What are my favorite songs? It wasn't. Everybody turns into Seinfeld. Uh, Matt, hello. Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, how you doing? Yeah. How's your mother? <laughs> How's Is your mother? Great? Say hello to your mother. Yeah. All right, Matt, here we go. <laughs> Matt, name three things you eat with a burger. Pork patty, chicken patty, hamburger. Okay, three things you eat with a burger. Yeah. And maybe he's thinking like a double. With a down. burger? With a with burger. burger. I thought you said bread. No. Oh, well, you need to no. listen, pal. No, it's a, hey, it's a, wow, you're mean. 
Yeah, I am. I'm a judge. All right. Okay. It's Matt, not justice. Matt, it's, time, it's time to rebound. Learn. All right, Matt. I will try. <laughs> down. And, down. Learn. I will try to <laughs> enunciate. No, that's not on you, Rafe. That's on Matt. All right. Matt, name three people famous for being beautiful. Learn. Raven Riz. Oh, hey. yeah, baby. I'm yeah. going to take it. Glad I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. That's why our faces are on stickers, yet, that's don't right. you know. Yeah. All right, final one. Big Matt. pause between Learn and Us. I will fine. note that. I will note <laughs> that. All right, it's here nice we go. Didn't say anything about me, so I appreciate oh. it. Oh. Well, you. That goes without saying. What? It goes without saying. Name three 80s hair metal bands. Metallica, ACDC, oh, YouTube. Oh, man, no. I mean, would ACDC be no, hair metal I would, anyway? I play some ACDC on Monday Night Metal, so I would count it. Is that a hair metal band, though? Metal no, band. it's hard rock, but it's just, you know. Okay. All right. I mean, I wouldn't even say Metallica's a hair metal. I would have given Metallica just because oh, there was a point. Hair metal? hair metal. Oh, no, no, no. Hair metal. Oh, now, I, now you're not hearing me. Yeah. Am I? Well, no, no, I heard you. I got you. I know. I'm talking about I have selected. I'm picking picture. up what you're throwing down. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Poison, Motley Crue. Give me Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Give me Rat. Skid Row. Give me Skid Row. Give me Quiet Riot. These Vixen. Are all right. Yeah, brother. <laughs> all right, one final <laughs> contestant. Let's go to uh, Curtis. <laughs> Hello, Curtis. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, Curtis, here we go. Final contestant on three and five. Curtis, name three. Give me the names of three Transformers. Bumblebee. Nope. Oh. Optimus Prime. Oh. Even Optimus I know Prime. that. I'm an idiot. Starscream. 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 Yeah. Megatron. Okay. All right, the Curtis. Dinosaur <laughs> the, the dinosaur one. Megan Fox. Yes. Megan Fox, yes. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> yes, Shia LaBeouf. All right, name three things you'll see at the zoo. Giraffe, lion, monkey. Yes, yes you, will. you will. And learn on Saturday. Oh, my God, what? you guys. Monkey. Learn's learn going on. to the zoo on Saturday. I got okay. invited to go meet a sea lion on no. Saturday. Yes! I'm kissing a sea cool. lion on Saturday. I've never been more thrilled. Whew. I'm going to get sea lion herpes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How neat is that? That'll be fun. Yeah. All right. One final one. Here we go. Curtis. Curtis, name three winter sports. Hockey, playing, figure skating. Hockey. What was the middle one? Curling. Oh, curling? Okay. Yes. Nice work. Curling is a winter okay. sport. Yeah, definitely a winter sport. Mm. Okay. Hang on. You win. Well done. Uh, David's calling BS. You could eat. Two burgers, a burger, and a chicken patty, and the other food, too. Shut up. Yeah, you can. <laughs> but you're not a judge. Things so you eat with bread. But he didn't even, he thought you said bread. He, things you eat with bread. Well, yeah. that's not what he said. He said it with a burger. Okay. Listen, Shut up, man. <laughs> you choked, bro. It's fine. We had some winners. We had some losers. That's right. right either way, tomorrow. either way, we had a great time. Speaking of good times, up after the break, Learn has sports. Oh, and there's so much to talk about, Riz. So much to talk about. Blues game last night. Um, and I don't know about this Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. Mm. Uh, Do you have you have that? You're going to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. The stipulations. Uh, all right, 923, Tuesday, traffic and weather, one final look, learn coming at you. And it's brought to you by Worldwide Technology Raceway. The biggest race of 2024 is happening on Sunday, June 2nd. Get those NASCAR Cup Series tickets right now at www.raceway.com. We have an incident blocking the right lane of northbound 270 north of Dorset. Otherwise, you look pretty good out there. 74 and kind of cloudy today. Uh, 49 is the overnight low. Right now, it's 50 out there at 923. King Scott, Ways of the Blades. Today I'm going to teach you swords. First, you want to start with the holiday special, the great way to start an attack. They'll never see it coming. Next, you want to use the Festus backswing, especially if they use the Matthew Perry. Now you want to finish with the Canterbury Slice. It's a great follow-up if they're using the Crom's Delight or the Miniature Poke. Thank you for watching. This is King Scott's Ways of the Blades. The script on your future. Now imagine transforming your life and career in just a couple months. And this is all possible. Three easy steps with Centric. 
Step number one, decide to make a change. You've got the power to rewrite your story starting today. Step two, dive into Centrix's accelerated tech program. Whether you're into coding or cybersecurity or network administration, they've got you covered. In as little as four months, you can get the skills you need with hands-on training that set you up for real world success. And step number three, you step out, you start a new career. Centric's not just about learning, it's about launching. Launching you into a new career that's as dynamic and forward-moving as you are. Here's the best part. You choose how to learn. You can do on-site, you can do online, you can do day, you can do evening, or their flex option. Centrix Flexible Learning fits your life, not the other way around. With new programs starting all the time, the right moment is whenever you are ready. Change your life in just three easy steps today by going to centric.com slash Riz, C-E-N-T-R-I-Q dot com slash Riz. Well, big things happening in the 21 Pilots camp. And you know what? If you are going to talk about 21 Pilots, there are legitimately no better two people in which that you could call to talk about said band than our guys. Gentlemen, it's wonderful to see you again. Hello, and it's been a while. Hello from St. Louis. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it has We're been exciting. a while. Man, it's really great to, to see you guys again. And the first thing that we want to talk about is the 21 Pilots Cinema Experience. Now, it's coming out on May the 19th. Uh, there'll be a special encore on May the 22nd. But I want to know, you know, this, you know, this experience came about a year or so ago during the pandemic. And I'm curious, the show was so well done, so well produced. How long did it take you guys to put that whole thing even together in the first place for it to run? I think it was probably, uh, I guess we were talking about it was probably like seven or eight months um, from, from the very beginning. Um, and it was, you know, I mean, the way that, uh, we sort of had to go about doing it. Um, we we just kind of knew that um, because our our live show is so reliant on people um, that and and once all that stripped away, that we couldn't we couldn't just we couldn't just perform the. March is a critical time. The weather changing, it's a critical time to check your home's windows. If you're cracked or leaking, maybe they won't stay open or stay closed. It's time to call the pros at Window Nation. Right now, for every two windows you buy, you get two windows free. Did you hear that? Two windows free. No limit to how much you could save. Plus, you could save even more with zero down, zero interest, and no payments for 24 months. That's right. Window Nation's windows come with a lifetime warranty as well, and they can be installed in one day or less. Proven quality and service, it's no wonder thousands Thousands of homeowners, including my in-laws, have trusted Window Nation with their home. And you can too. So if your old finicky windows and high energy costs from this winter are cutting deep into your finances and you've decided to make a change, don't miss out. With an unlimited buy two, get two free, plus zero down, zero interest, and no payments for 24 months, you can't afford to wait. Plus, get a house of windows and get a free pair of cards tickets. It's easy. Call 866-90NATION. Tell them Moon sent you. Or go to the website to schedule your free in-home estimate. That's windownation.com. It's Riz, it's Jeff Burton backstage at Wayback Point Fest with Vaden and Donnie from the Toadies. Good Hello. afternoon, gentlemen. How you doing? Hello, how you doing? See, this is not that bad. I mean, you guys are, are, are from Texas, so this is this swampiness is all right. Yes. Oh, yeah, we yeah. need uh, just fine sweaters. This is sweater weather. <laughs> this is this is old hat for you guys. So. He took off a cardigan right before we started rolling, actually. <laughs> I have on. I took off my shirt. That's my sweater. <laughs> so you guys uh, were spinning some yarns before you know, before we just went on the uh, on the air here. Uh, I mean, do you realize the point is what over 25 years old? Yeah, 25. Do you remember yeah. coming to St. Louis in the in the uh, you know mid 90s and, and playing for the point or playing for St. Louis? I don't remember a whole lot in the mid 90s. Yeah, boy. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Truth, right there. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are you guys are point fest guys from back in the day, yeah, man. Yeah, way totally. back in the day. Yeah. What's any, your go any ahead. good memories from uh, from St. Louis from back in the day? Oh, jeez. Uh, we're kidding about the memory, right? No, no. it's gone. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mashup. Our first time here, we went and uh, I think my brother got his tongue stuck to the arch because it was yes, during. Yeah, that what happened. <laughs> Literally, does that sound? I mean, that sounds, it sounds exactly like right. it could have happened. Yeah, he no, it did happen. Oh, it, did. it did happen. No, he wanted he put his tongue to the arch and it did get stuck. So That's it was like hilarious. during I think January. So it was pretty cool. 
You know, maybe advice for uh, for a younger band up and coming now uh, is uh, maybe write everything down or document everything. Can you imagine the Toadies in in the uh, mid to late '90s and there be social media? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. No, thank you. <laughs> no. Do you think that's a decided, decidedly, uh, you know, uh, a, a disadvantage for bands nowadays? You know, there's no more anonymity. Uh, only if they want to have kids later mm. and <laughs> and avoid prison time. Avoid prison time. <laughs> yeah, that sounds very, very, very familiar. Yeah. Though. it really yeah. does. You know, think about think about the future. I think 50 years into the future, what would you like to see the legacy of the Toadies be? Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, hell, I don't know. I'm just stoked that people still want to see us, man. So, uh, I don't know. I know it's a tough question. <laughs> yes, I don't know. <laughs> the fact that there is a legacy even, I mean, that would be a good start, right? With my yes. luck, I'll still be here to see it, so, uh. <laughs> yeah, you will be. All right, for 50 years from now? Yeah. Do you guys, do you guys, at nowadays, these days, when you're on the road, do you look out and see people that you know have been around for a while and you guys kind of all grew up together you see those faces oh, yeah, out of the crowd yeah, you see people all over the country that you recognize and uh and like last night like there probably will be today there's people with their kids like little kids which is hilarious because you got an eight-year-old killed with x's on his hands which uh -huh. i said that's just kick ass yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. funny like i want a drink you know it's just like <laughs> it's not gonna happen it's a sign of good parenting though yeah Sure. 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 <laughs> yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll stick them in front of, of the amps and blow out their hearing at eight. Parenting. Parenting. It's a sign of, yeah, parenting because they couldn't get a babysitter. So. Yeah. Is, is it weird to see, like, you know, to see fans now with the kids and, and all that stuff? Uh, yeah. I mean, we've had fans name their kids after songs that I've written. That's really weird. Oh, really? Yeah, strange. Yeah, we've gotten and cool. uh, Super cool. Cool. Possum Kingdom McClary. We've gotten <laughs> Jigsaw Girl Jones. Uh, that was a weird one we got. Um, Happy Rattlers Revive. <laughs> Happy Face McGillicuddy. I forgot about that one. Rattlers Revival, you know, that one. Wait, no? No, okay. I don't think no, I'm sorry. Real. No, no. Well, that's funny. Yeah, that's good. Hey, you know what's flattering? Anybody but us. But I was gonna say you gotta have a positive reaction to that at least, if it's real. Cool. I mean, actually, the cool thing is to see parents bring their kids for their first shows. That yeah. just happened a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 13 and 14, and they're bringing their kids to come see us. Like, wow, that's really cool. You get to you see know? a kid who just learned how to make the horns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, oh, they're the, like yeah, the rock this? horns. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. There's your legacy right there that you were talking about. There you go. Right. That or Ronnie James Dio's, either one will take it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. You guys, back in you know, so uh, so you know, Rubberneck came out in '94, and I was before you know I knew I was talking to you guys. Um, looked at all the record releases from 1994. Williams is back with the number two show, a live number two show today after this show. That's right. Today at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be taking calls. You can call in right now, though, and leave a message about anything you want. Although today, I went to the Denver airport and Learn and I exchanged texts about all the conspiracy theories surrounding the Denver airport. I went on a deep dive of that, and we talked about whether or not Kate Middleton's even alive anymore today. So, if you got a conspiracy theory that you believe or you've heard or something's mm. wild, call in at 818-532-1420. That's 818-532-1420. And uh, leave me a message, and I'll pull it, and I'll talk about it on the number two show live at 11, or call in live, and maybe we can chat live. All right. Uh, but, yeah, today at 11, is, we're back, baby. Put on the, uh, the old YouTubes at 11. Mm -hmm. Sit that, back and enjoy. Is that number always the same? I believe so, yes. We should put that in our Twitter bio somewhere so people have it. Well, yeah. And do it. The the Denver airport, are you going to talk about the highway from Springfield? What? I, I don't Denver? know what. I don't what? know. What? Underground Springfield connects to Denver. Don't even the get so there's a There's a road. Oh. Yeah, and it goes all the way up to Maine and it goes all the way to Denver. And it's one of those top secret things. Lobster tunnel. Yeah. I am freaked out <laughs> so, in the best man. way. <laughs> so just prepare. I can't go to the Denver airport without understanding that Beyonce and Jay-Z are under it in the Illuminati. Okay? <laughs> I go in. I know what's going on. Oh, I... And the photo... The paintings that are around of the, Dude, the I, kids... You couldn't crazy. make it. I couldn't stop. And the balls once on she, the Bronco. Once you planted the seed, I couldn't stop. I was a get, I got to my gate, and there was a mural of a white horse. Oh, yeah. And I go, the pale a, rider, the white horse. The yep. horse... I bet that painting opens up. And the Mason's Monument there. There's... Mm -hmm. the, oh, it's a whole thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So good. the the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight is happening on July the twentieth. Once once it was announced, I go. I'm excited. Party at my house. Yeah, I took off work. Yes. I mean that's a Saturday. That's. <laughs> I'm not having a remote that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Saturday. Uh, we'll we'll hang at my house. We'll watch a fight. Like old you know old times. I remember my you know during the Tyson fights. You know, my dad would have, you know, people over or, you know, we'd go so, go to somewhere else. That's cool. It was always a thing. Yeah. It was always a thing. Jake and Logan Paul, their boxing matches don't exactly represent the height of in-ring competition. Some of the fights are jokes. But Jake's upcoming match against Mike Tyson might be the biggest stunt fight of them all. So there's a boxer named Derek uh, Chisora. I think I'm saying his last name right. He claims... And if, if this is true, I'm going to be so bummed out. He claims they're going to be in headgear. And they're going to have 18-ounce gloves on. And now, 18-ounce gloves are huge. Mm. Normally, for boxing matches, they use 8-ounce gloves, 8, 10-ounce gloves, 18-ounce, a lot of padding. Mm -hmm. Even for sparring, they use, like, 14-ounce gloves. So but does it still hurt when you get hit by it? <laughs> I guess so, right? The force... So, so for a pro, they might as well be having a pillow fight. Now, for the record, I don't want to be, I don't want leather, I wouldn't let either of them punch me with an 18 ounce glove. No. I would say Mike But I'm not a professional boxer. <laughs> Should we get one of these gloves and I'll smack you? Man, see what I don't that want feels. to get punched. Oh, Rafe? Who? Yeah, go ahead. Does that, does that kind of sully it for you a little she bit? She hits me all the time anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it's probably, it's an ex, is it technically an exhibition fight? Yeah, because I don't think anybody's going to sanction Mike right. Tyson. What does that mean? Like, in order for him to be a pro match, you need to be sanctioned by a boxing commission. He's going to be 57 years old. So nobody's yeah. sanctioning him? I, I don't think anybody's sanctioning him. Oh, man. Well, that's sad. He'd been sanctioned before, like many times, in his real career? Two Yes. Okay. I just don't know anything about this. I'm just asking questions. You need to have the bo the backing of a boxing commission to have a professional fight. Interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was the only two types. I didn't know if it was exhibition or sanctioned. I didn't know if there was something in the middle that's like. My point is, like golden gloves. Or is something? that why they're saying they're doing this? Is because like, well, it's exhibition. Because basically, what you're saying is like you're taking away Mike Tyson's punching power, and headgear. Oh, that kind of head sucks. Gear. Headgear and 18-ounce gloves. Is it because he's so old and they don't want to kill him? Well, I think it's for no. Paul. Now, Chisora, oh. the, the boxer, calls this a sparring match, adding, uh, it's a joke. You think I'm paying to watch this? Only kids will go and watch that, and only parents will give their kids money to watch that. Of course, you don't have to pay for it, you dope, as long as you have Netflix. Right. That's, that's <laughs> where it's going to This man doesn't air. understand streaming. And I'd like to apologize to Derek Chisora for calling him a dope. Uh, didn't mean it. Because he's a Cause pro boxer. <laughs> and he doesn't he use 18 ounce gloves. And I, uh... we sanctioned you, so you got to fight. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. That'd be a bummer. All right, fine. Party's still on. Okay. Ah, I've done party's party still on. Yeah. It is kind of. Like, that is all stuff to protect Jake Paul. Mike Tyson doesn't care. I promise you. His head trauma's done, been done, been yes. done. Yeah, but he knows. I don't think any more could be done. He's been hit so hard, like, Paul would not even get close to what he was. And, dude, he's the one bringing, I mean, they say, the, you know, the old adage in boxing is the first thing to go is your legs. Yeah. The yeah. last thing to go is your power. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Yeah, this is the, oh, nothing's been man. said officially yet, but that's that's the rumor. All right. Crazy. Here's Lauren in sports. Oh. Lauren, can you do this in two minutes? Yes, here we okay. go. Brought to you by DraftKings at Casino Queen. Call to book your bracket bash watch parties at DraftKings Sportsbook. Now, hey, last night the Blues were in Boston. Pavel Buchnevich played his 500th oh, game. Kasperi Kampanian nope. buried a goal one midway through the first period to get us on the board thanks to some bouncing off of those sideboards. The Bruins had a parade in the penalty box, which gave us a two-man advantage for almost a whole minute, Riz. Robert Thomas got a goal, and then Kevin Hayes got us to 3-0 and over the Bruins. 
Then there was a moment when Jeremy Swayman was trying to mess with Nathan Walker, to which we said, uh-uh-uh, uh-uh-uh. <laughs> then there was a whole moment where the fluky of the Bruins maybe scored, but guess what? He was offside, so those refs said, uh-uh-uh. Then Brandon Saad came up and got us another goal. The game ended 5-1 to one with St. Louis taking over the entire city of Boston, which was really special because for the second year in a row, the Blues scored five goals and won on Bobby Plager's birthday. Yeah. Nice. So That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool because his number was five. For the second year in a row, five yes. goals. Really cool yeah. stuff. Bobby Flager's birthday. The Blues come home tomorrow to We're host back, the Kings baby. at 630. I don't think so, but. <laughs> Let's go down to Jupiter. The Cardinals. Here we are. Looked pretty bad yesterday at Jupiter. Yeah. Preseason butts were kicked by the Washington Nationals, 11 to 4. J um, let's see, March Madness, Advent inspired calendar is coming to stores. An event to help college basketball fans enjoy March Madness, Coors Light has launched a 21 day Advent inspired calendar, which features tools that can help fans stay very calm with the chaos of March Madness as it's unfolding. Things like chill tea, some press on nails for all those nail biting moments, and a candle to light when saying a prayer for your team. Okay, big time in NFL yesterday. Rosters were shuffled thanks to all sorts of players getting cut. Free agents getting signed. One of the bigger moves was quarterback Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins, he left the Vikings to join the Falcons. Four-year deal worth $180 million with $100 million guaranteed. This guy has played everyone. Yes. And as far as, like, he's not the best quarterback. Middle of the road, has made half a billion dollars. He's a great businessman. amazing. Man. He's pretty good. Only three other players in NFL history have earned more money than Cousins in salary. Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, and Russell Wilson. He's not that good. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Like, he's good. But he's not, like, the elite, you know, first ballot Hall of Famer. Great. Mm -hmm. He's good. And yeah. this makes the Falcons immediately the number one uh, team to beat in the South, in the AFC South. Yesterday was also a bad day for New York Giants fans. Running back Saquon Barkley signed a three-year deal with the Eagles for $37.7 million. That's crazy. Let's talk about hoops for a second. The statue honoring Kobe Bryant at Crypto.com Arena has become a tourist attraction with fans getting all sorts of pictures. And it looks cool, but it has some typos on it. Etched in granite. <laughs> Oops. At the base of the statue is an image of a signed box score from Bryant's famous 2006 81 point game. On that box score, two names of the players are spelled wrong, as well as the word decision. Also, Muhammad Ali is getting inducted into another Hall of Fame that you maybe wouldn't expect the WWE Hall of Fame. Ali is going to be inducted during the Hall of Fame ceremony taking place on April 5th in Philly. The legendary heavyweight champ did have a bit of a relationship with professional wrestling as he fought an exhibition match against uh, Japanese pro wrestling legend Antonio Inoki in Tokyo in 1976. That was the same year that challenged WWF wrestler Gorilla Monsoon to a match. Ali also appeared as a special guest referee for the main event at WrestleMania in the year I was born, 1985, which saw Hulk Hogan and Mr. T face off against Roddy Piper and Paul Ordoff. Anyway, that's your <laughs> All right. Thanks. <laughs> Orndorff. Orndorff, oh, yes. Orndorf. Excellent. You're great. Excellent. You're great. Beautiful. You're great. Nice, guys. We're all smart. No notes. Yeah. No, yeah. That was all from her head. That was all from her head. All right, one final break. We'll come back, wrap her up. Oh, hey, hey, hey. How's it going, man? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. Have a, uh, have a seat, man. Just wanted to have a chat with you, King Scott's virginity. Just, uh, just to faces talk. around will service you no matter where you come from. You know, I mean, there's a lot of judgment out there. And let me say this: Alton Toyota is not going to judge you. You need something done to your vehicle. Maybe you bought it somewhere else. Maybe it's not even a Toyota. Guess what? You can still go up to Alton Toyota and get the best service of your lifetime, whether that is an oil change, tire rotation, maybe there's something going on with that engine, they can handle it all. And that is number one, uh, the thing that they are so proud of is their service department at Alton Toyota. Mungan S. Burkert, Alton Toyota. Now, of course you can buy a Toyota if you were there, and I highly suggest that you do. Maybe you've been thinking about a different type of vehicle to buy, and you just wanna get a kind of an outsider's perspective on that. Call my, pa my pal, Jamie, Jamie Burkhardt, up at Mungan S. Burkert, Alton Toyota, he will answer your call and give you advice, even if you're not buying a Toyota. He just wants you to get a good deal. And that phone number for the weirdos, and it is a VIP weirdo line, is 
2288. This is a dedicated line to just you, uh, listeners of the Rizzuto Show. 618-539-2288. And if you couldn't write that down um, and you just want to go to their website, it's easy too. AltonToyota.com. Wake up! It's when you gotta go on a table. And then you gotta go on a table. And then you gotta sit on a table. And then you trust in my. Slip and slide. That's just move down. Chop suey. Is our uh, guest on the phone? Uh, there's some guy named Bert on the phone. Oh. Bert. Hopefully it's... That's the guy I'm right, supposed to be calling, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the machine, Bert Kreischer on the phone. Hey, man! <laughs> that was well played, gentlemen. That was well played. <laughs> well, we're expecting a call from Bert Cummings, too, so we're yeah. not sure. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I told my, my son yesterday, I was like, hey, I have one of my favorite comedians on the show uh, tomorrow. He goes... Awesome, you have Kevin Hart on. I go, damn, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> my, daughters, my daughters and I, my daughters and I saw Jumanji, the first one, for the first time. Uh -huh. And I was like, I, I got out and I was like, God, I want to, like, text Kevin and tell him how great that movie was. And they're like, Kevin who? I said, Kevin Hart. And they go, you know Kevin Hart? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, Dad, come on. You don't have to lie to us. I was like, no, I know. I You've heard me talk about how Together Credit Union has been there for me and my family, really changed the game as far as our financial habits go. Especially because before this, you know, when I was young, growing up, I thought all financial institutions were the same. I thought they were all kind of created equal, doing the same things. Boy, was I wrong. And I immediately felt the difference when I became a member at Together Credit Union. And anybody can become a member at Together Credit Union. Right now, as a member, too, you get that exclusive City SC debit card from Together Credit Union because they are the official banking partner of City SC. It's the only place to find this official fan debit card. What's it get you? All sorts of stuff, like a free lifetime My City Plus membership, in-stadium discounts on food, beverages, and yes, merchandise, and of course, that express entry I love to talk about and take advantage of into all City SC matches. A special bonus right now, Together CU will send you a commemorative print of City Park Stadium, the home of St. Louis City SC while supplies last. How do you get the card? Well, you open any personal checking account online at togethercu.org. Or just stop by any of the 15 local branches. That means one of them's right by you, right now. Don't wait any longer. Become a member at Together Credit Union. TogetherCU.org. We're talking about shopping local, right? STLMattressDirect.com. Mattress Direct right here in St. Louis. Campbell Mattress made here in Missouri. Missouri made mattresses. Why pay to get a mattress made somewhere else and shipped here when you can get such a deal right here from Mattress Direct? And right now they're celebrating Campbell Mattress's 90th anniversary by giving you free sheets and two free pillows with the purchase of a Campbell mattress at Mattress Direct. Check them out now, stlmattressdirect.com. Time for spring cleaning, and if you're if you're just tired of that dirt, if you're tired of gross carpets, think about the dust, the dander, the bacteria. All that stuff is living and breeding in your carpets. It's it's in your upholstery, it's in your air ducts. It's got nowhere to go. There's only one real way to get that gunk out of the house, and that's by calling my cleaning heroes, our cleaning heroes, at Zero Res. Now, with Zero Res, is platinum rating cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water. They can extract all that nasty out to your home. It's going to look and smell like a home should, fresh and clean. No residue difference. That's what separates them from the competition. 
And of course, you got the zero res, got a loving guarantee. You know they're going to take care of you. So this month, get three rooms, zero resified from St. Louis's number one carpet cleaner starting at 119 and take 50 bucks off your air duct cleaning and 20% off all upholstery cleanings. Yo, it yourself and your family. Breathe healthy, happy, and clean. Call Zero Res 314-474-2020 or book online anytime. ZeroResSTL.com. Say you want the Red Show special. Spell forward or backward. It spells the same. Zero Res. It's 105.7 The Point. Donnie Fandango backstage. Way back Point Fest. Goldfinger, and we got everybody. The How you whole guys doing? Band. It's great to have you. Woo! Thanks for having us. Well, and, and welcome back to St. Louis. I know specifically people were absolutely stoked to see you guys and have you guys back here. And, uh, you know, our buddy Moon is waving that Goldfinger flag when you guys aren't here, man. Moon rules. Yeah, pretty much. I've known Moon way before Moon. Thanks, yeah. thanks buddy. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a really good man and, yeah. and an incredible musician, and it's an honor to have him in the band Aww. with us. Really, really incredible. Thanks, you know, and, John. And, and I say this, and we're going to do this. We're going to make him feel uncomfortable. We're going to talk about him right in front of him, all right? But you have access to probably thousands of musicians. Moon, we see what Moon does with Greek Fire and things. What was it about him that you that wanted you know, you wanted to bring him into Goldfinger. Obviously, he can do a lot of stuff, so I would assume that. He's a good-looking dude. There's that, too. The first conversation I think I ever had with Moon was, would you make out with Sting? And his answer was, of course, yes. Yeah, in, of an, course. in an instant. <laughs> yeah. So, can I get an autograph, and too? And we both were in agreement that we would both jerk him off, and that was actually what we were talking <laughs> that about. That actually is It wasn't true. about making out. Yeah. About Let's talk about health, fellas. Victory men's health i've been going there for almost a year now i started back when i started the show pert near a year ago and uh, man they got my health back on track i just went in yesterday i went to my personal trainer jamie he did a caliper test on me and i went from 26 percent body fat down to 11.5 just in the last few months and a lot of that is owed to victory men's health because they got me back on track they got my vitamin levels where they need to be they got my energy levels where they need to be because i went in i got my micronutrient testing done they got me on a regimen of vitamins and peptides and all sorts of good stuff going into my body that i didn't even know i was depleted on because who checks that stuff certainly not me uh but they do and they invest in your health as much as you are invested in your health and that's the thing that i really think is the best feature of victory men's health is how much they care about you having progress so don't wait they have four locations you should be one near you there's one in o'fallon illinois o'fallon missouri town and country and that brand spanking new facility in sunset hills so if you're near one of those schedule an appointment today go in take your health back in 2024 become the best version of you you can be for yourself for your family for the ladies for the men whatever you're into go get yourself taken care of for more information right now go to victorymenshealth.com that's victorymenshealth.com So here we are, way back Point Fest. Goldfinger, everybody. Shaka. Yes. Hey. Yes. And so here's the thing, okay? John, first things first. Seen the band a million times. Phenomenal band. You've changed members here, but now you've got a goddamn all-star team going on with our buddy Mike, and then we've got Phil here and Moon, and it's just... Phil like, and Moon. Phil you know, it's it funny, depends. he's never called me that. I've never, wow. never called once. you that ever. And I'm sorry, but that no, was the fine. first thing that popped it's into fault. my head. It's the first <laughs> Moon was telling me, because, you know, we've, I've, known, I've known Moon a long, long time, and yeah, uh, yeah. I've watched him transition into this amazing front man of, the, of Greek fire. It's just an incredible transformation that we've made from nice. when I first met him with this, like, afro yeah, out yeah. to here, and just like this <laughs> kid straight out of college. Did, actually, did you go to college? No, I did not go this to college. This kid straight out of high school. <laughs> right, right. Like, did you go to high school? I did go to high school. I even finished with a kid. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it's really Me great too. to yeah. have you guys, but how does, how does Mike get in the equation? How does Phil get, uh, Moon get in the equation? Like, how do you decide these guys? Because I know you, obviously, with the work you do as a producer, you're, I mean, there's tons of musicians everywhere that, yeah. that, that you can get to be a part of Goldfinger. Um, I, th I think the first time Goldfinger played with MXPX was probably 1996 up in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. 
radio Love show. That. Yeah, radio and show. I remember like same thing. I mean, Mike was a teenager when I first saw him play, yeah. whenever that was, and and I've known him for forever. And There's ever tons now. of people listen to this show that own a business, and you know what? Good on you. I, I can't imagine what it takes to go in every day and know that, you know, your backup is against the wall, and it's on you. Um, and some days that can be overwhelming. Well, the Better Business Bureau, they are there to make sure business owners know that you are not alone in what you do. They are there for resources and support. Uh, maybe you need some help with marketing or networking with other businesses in the like-minded fields or, you know, things that are similar. Um, they also do dispute resolution services. You know, if something does happen, maybe you don't know exactly how to handle that. All of this, all of these resources with the Better Business Bureau are a part of their accreditation program. And essentially, if you're a BBB accredited business, it gives consumers like me peace of mind. I know that you are committed to ethical and fair practices. I know that you care about me as the consumer because you want to stay at that tip top accreditation with the Better Business Bureau and have that A plus rating. And so whenever customers like me come call into BBB.org to look up, you know, decking companies or gardening companies or whatever, I know that I'm, you know, vetting out the best. So become an accredited member today, BBB.org or call locally 314-645-3300. There's a big tour, big show coming to St. Louis uh, April the 1st over at the Chaffetz Arena. And I am very stoked for the very first time to be chatting with Co Wetzel. Co, you'll be at Chaffetz. It is the uh, the Road to El Paso tour part one. And uh, we're playing the song Creeps. And uh, it's really nice to meet you, Co. Hey, man, I appreciate you having us on. Thank you for, uh, for jamming the music, dude. Now, no, no problem at all. And we got a lot to get to here. But I, you know, as somebody that's kind of new to you and 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 what you do, what was the first music in your life that caught your ear that made you, uh, you know, that started to like kind of lay the foundation for you being a, a very passionate music fan? Um, I would probably have to say Nirvana. You know, I, I grew up on all kinds of music uh, and then I, I found out who, who Nirvana was in, in the eighth grade or seventh or eighth grade. And uh, I don't know, man, they just they kind of grabbed, you know, Kurt's voice and the way that they they put all the music together was it was unlike anything I'd ever heard. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, I got to do this. <laughs> and so was it was it that record? Was it Nevermind and, you know, In Utero, whatever, Nirvana yeah, yeah. in general? So that was the one that was like, all right, I want to do this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I grew up playing music, and but it was always, you know, country. All right. And stuff like, so yeah, then I, on top of that, Co, when did you... Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I apologize. But right. so when did you feel like, you know what, I can do music for my life? Like, this is something that I can do. I want to do this. I want to make a living doing this. Yeah, I think it was more in college. You know, I played and I wrote through high school, uh, played gigs through high school and stuff. But uh, once I got into college, I was like, you know, screw school, screw, you know, I played football for a little bit in school. And I was like, you know, I'm not gonna make it to the NFL. I'm not gonna become a doctor. So uh, why not go, go get some free beer and, uh, you know, make a little money doing it, you know? So I, I saw that post, uh, I think you made yesterday about <laughs> your grandma on the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I found that to be so, so funny. So are you a Cowboy fan to this day because of grandma? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like I think, you know, not even 24 hours after I was born, I was in a Cowboy onesie. So yeah, since <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a day one. <laughs> that's that's so awesome because I remember I'm not kidding. You will not believe the deals that are happening at David Taylor Ellisville right now. I was just there talking to some of the sales guys, talking to some of the service people. First of all, this is the experience that you want from a home dealer. I had no idea a car dealership could be like this or could treat people like this. They are amazing. They really care about not just the sales and the deals that they can give you, but the service, the auto body. It's all there on the same campus. They really want to make sure that you are supported and your vehicle is supported for the entire journey of the vehicle. They're all about our community and right now they have some incredible deals 15 to 20 percent off of ram trucks i just drove a big horn for a week and i kind of fell in love with this thing the ram 1500 dt you can get 20 percent off of that if you're looking for a jeep i've been driving a gladiator for quite some time and that vehicle is amazing i have a mojave version and you can get 15 percent off of this one that i'm driving right now and let me tell you it's online pricing that you can trust the price you see is the price you pay i say that from experience because i found a vehicle at 
SailorStLouis.com. And my wife and I bought it. No hassles, no nothing. Now listen to this. Tell them Moon sent you and they'll give you an additional $500 towards your deal. The service department, the sales, the auto body. All of it is the new David Taylor Ellisville. True service. Do yourself a favor and check out the inventory at TaylorStLouis.com. Again, tell them Moon sent you and you get another $500 towards your deal. David Taylor Ellisville. TaylorStLouis.com. So uh, here we are, way back, Point Fest, the first interview of the day. It's real big fish, everybody. Well, Gentlemen, how are you? It's great to see you. Great, great to hey. see you. Fantastic. Hello. Oh, hey. Oh. hey. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, don't stop. No, more, please. please. More. It's really great to have you guys back. We, we have, over the years, done so many different things, so many shows. I did Talking to Dr. Huatma over at South County Urological, he will tell you that March is the busiest time of year for vasectomies at South County Urological. And it makes sense. March Madness, college basketball, guys get their vasectomies done on a Friday. They rest over the weekend. They watch basketball all weekend long. Ice themselves down, laying on the couch, no heavy lifting, no mowing the lawns, no throwing the kids around. Just, hey, take some time for yourself. Ice yourself down. You're back to work on Monday. That's how it works at South County Urological. Vasectomies done on Fridays. The no scalpel vasectomy. You go on on Friday, you rest over the weekend, you're back to work on Monday. I did it uh, almost 13 years ago now. A very quick procedure. My insurance covered my procedure. The biggest questions guys have is about their sex lives. Will my sex life be affected? No change in interest level or ability to do anything. Just no more kids. South County Urological, 314-843-8000, southcountyurological.com. We are backstage at Point Fest, and uh, Kevin from Candlebox joined. Hey, How are you, sir? Hey, Great I'm to good. see you, man. Great you to too. see you. So there is so much to, to talk about with you, and had the had the great fortune of being a chat with you a few weeks ago. But there's some things that I wanted to talk that we talked about then that I'd like to, to talk about again today. 25th anniversary of the Candlebox debut. Isn't that an, an amazing thing at this point? How do you, as the guy that did it and was the key element in this, how do you look back and see the staying power of this thing because it's still a very relevant record? I know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I wake up every day and I pinch myself that I've been fortunate enough to have this career, you know? I mean, um, it's, a wild, it, it's a wild thing to, to turn 49 years old and, and know that I've been doing this for 25 years and, and that people still listen to the record and, you know, the royalty check comes in every April and every October and you're just like, wow, this is crazy that this record still sells like it does, you know? I mean, it's, it's, I'm lucky we're one of the bands that was able to make money off of albums, you know? So uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's paid my rent for, for a long time. I'm very happy about that. Absolutely so. Now, let's, let's go back a little bit to, to the beginning of this, of this ride for you. Um, I would assume at that particular time in Seattle, Washington, there was a feeding frenzy four bands because that first tier had already signed and blown up and all that sort of thing. How did the courting of Candlebox happen and how did you settle on Maverick with Madonna? Well, uh, that's an interesting story. Um, our bass player wasn't 21 uh, when we started the band, so you weren't able to play in the clubs in Seattle. You had to be 21 in order to play in a bar. So we played a lot of like the all ages festivals or shows around town or you know, friends house parties, something like that. Um, so when he did turn 21, uh, June of 92, uh, we were invited to play a showcase last minute for BMI uh, in the city. Uh, they asked us to go on at 7 o'clock, doors were at 6.30. They're like, you got 20 minutes to impress whoever's here. And back then in, in Seattle, of course, like you said, everybody was looking for another band. Um, nobody really knew about us because we weren't on the radar yet. Um, other than
This is it. This is the call. This is the call if you are on your way to a job and you're bummed about it because it's just a job. It's not a career. Let me tell you about an opportunity for a career as an install floor layer with the Carpenters Union. This is a fantastic opportunity to have a lucrative career. Some of the most competitive health coverage and pension for you and your family. Hands-on, real-life work that's lucrative, creative, and meaningful. As a member of the union, you're going to have more than a job. This is a career. Excellent classroom and on-the-job training. Hands-on creative work in a lucrative industry means you'll continue to have opportunities to learn and enjoy fantastic benefits and make money towards your pension. Start today. Visit the website apply.ficstl.org That's apply.ficstl.org Once you get started, you start making money right away. As you learn, you earn and that's a beautiful thing. Apply to become an install floor layer with the Carpenters Union. Begin that new career today. Visit apply.ficstl.org That's apply dot f i c s t l dot org the great battles of our time man versus nature intellect versus instinct burrito versus butthole here in this fortress of solitude we reflect and ponder tough questions about life and ourselves and the toughest question of all may be what do i wish i could accomplish before i die mine eyes have seen the glory The proverbial bucket list. Why is it called that? Do you have one? Should you have one? If so, what should be on it? Let's dive into those questions today on the number two show. You know, they've always said to think outside the box, but here inside this box, we've had some of the most profound reflections. They say inspiration strikes in the most unexpected places. Sir Isaac Newton, an apple tree. Archimedes, a bathtub. Me, well, let's just say there's a reason I'm broadcasting from a bathroom stall. The bathroom. More than just tiles and toiletries, a vault of solace, a chamber of reflection. Ever think about how much history, philosophy, and yes, even strategy have been contemplated in spaces just like this? I'm pretty sure when Bill Shakespeare wrote to be or not to be, he carved it with the quill on a bathroom stall before he put pen to paper. How many of you have had those aha moments in the restroom? Think about it. You're all alone, free from distractions, and suddenly the answer to that problem you've been mulling over becomes as clear as the bathroom tiles. Recent studies, and by studies I mean a quick poll of a few of my friends, reveal that bathrooms are like unsung brainstorming chambers of the household. I'm pretty sure if we placed whiteboards in showers, we would have solved world hunger by now and probably perfected teleportation. But today we are switching gears to contemplate life's big picture, the journey. Which brings us to today's main topic. Follow me through the glory hole as we explore the bucket list. It's a concept most of us are familiar with, but how many of us truly understand its origin? The phrase kicking the bucket has been around longer than we might think. But why a bucket and why kick it? Historians theorize about a grim tie to execution, public hanging, to be more direct, with kicking our own bucket away as the last thing we do before we die. That's a stark contrast to the delightful and daring. All right, that is it for us. Donnie Fandango is next. Today's wrap-up is sponsored by Jack of the Box. And Jack wraps a little bit of healthy, a little bit of indulgence only at Jack. All right, what is today's podcast title? Do you know Mr. Beast? Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you got that coming up. Maybe some kid will search on the podcasts, Mr. Beast. Yeah. And they'll come across the Riz show. And fall in love with us. Fall in love with us. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. Uh, tomorrow, we'll talk to Chris Kerber, and I just heard that Benji Molina's coming in. Nice. I so. <gasps> love a Benji Molina. Yeah, I love any Molina is welcome here in the studio. Love any catching Molina. up with Not Marty talk? Molina. Not, no. Is he party Marty? What's Marty Marty? Not Marty Molina. That's fine. We have his fool me once. Yeah. Uh, Scott, what do you got left? Well, I got nothing too exciting. I'm going to help some people move today. So that's oh. exciting. But yeah, follow me. King Scott rules. How about that? How do they pay you? Because normally people drink beer when they have to help friends move. Yeah. Food? Uh, uh, coffee, probably. Communion oh. wine. It's, uh, 
Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good way to go, Scott. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lauren, what do you got? Just follow me on the socials at Learn Versus Radio. Just posted a picture of all three of my cats. Yes, I have three now because there's a stray that comes to my house twice a day, and it's a good time. Thanks. Uh, Rafe, number two show today, live at that's, 11. That's right, live at 11, 818-532-1420. Call in. We're talking about whatever you want, but preferably something related to conspiracy theories today. And then and tune in and watch on the YouTubes and follow me at I am Rafe Williams on all platforms. All right, that's at 11 o'clock today, a live number two show. All right, we leave you with a selection from our team members member the day. Brought to you by Hot Shot Sports Bar and Grill, St. Louis home for Blues Hockey. From Columbia, Illinois, William Goodrich is our team yeah. member today. And he wants to hear this song. Dude, yeah. enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy it, guys. Hell yeah. All right, see you tomorrow. Done it next. Bye. Bye. You're listening to The Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. Happy birthday, Rizzuto. All right, so uh, here we are uh, backstage, the Stiefel Theater. Mr. Nathaniel Waitlip, how you doing, sir? I'm great. I've heard there's been some uh, going back and forth about the pronunciation of the theater because this used to be the Keel Auditorium, right? It was Keel. Right. Then they changed it to the, oh gosh, what was it before this? It was the Peabody. The Peabody. And now the Stiefel. Okay, Stiefel. Well, what are you hearing on your side of things? I've heard people say Stiefel, Stiefel, you know. I also, until, you know, we got here, thought it was still Peabody. So. Right. Well, you know what? I've said it mistakenly on the air before to the point where somebody sends an email saying, hey, Donnie, just a reminder that it's the Stiefel and not the Peabody. Because, you know, I'm sure everybody It's a good thing we have people <laughs> trolling your show, you know? <laughs> right. So point right. out your mistakes. Right, right. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's great, to, it's great to have you in town again. One of the things that I'd love to know is when you come to St. Louis, what is your guest list number compared to, say, any other random city in the country? Uh, I was just joking about that with our tour manager because uh, my mom and Joseph's mom were here. So I think, you know, it's an average like 50 to 60 family members and friends. And, 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 and you know, and then there's some people that I don't even know. They're like, I'm friends with. I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know who the hell you are. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's always nice just to be around family and, and have the opportunity to, you know, be able to see everybody and, you know, and not, I, a lot of them don't get to like, you know, come to like a legendary theater like this and be backstage. Or I think my mom's actually out in the auditorium, like taking photos right now. So that's awesome. Which is cool, you know. So yeah. it's uh, it's exciting for them, and uh, you know, I always like to try to make everybody happy. So absolutely, which has got to be a tough thing to do a lot of times, though, too. But well, you can't make everybody. Yeah, happy. yeah. <laughs> but I got I got to tell you this. Um, it's just a little personal thing here, right quick, man. Yesterday I had like one of those days. You know what right. I mean? Like I was just grumpy, Gus. I got home, there was six things going on at one time, and I had to, I wanted to prep a couple things for our chat today, and so I put on the new record. And uh, man, I'm telling you what, and this is not just because we're talking. By the time I got to track number six, I was doing these crazy slides in my kitchen on my socks. Right on. Like I was in like a good, like I was multitasking with homework, making dinner, and prepping this interview, and like legitimately my mood had changed, and I got to thinking like, that is an amazing thing that you have the power to be able to do. You know what I mean? From wherever you were in Chicago, Illinois yesterday, you made Donnie Mueller a really happy guy <laughs> uh, just by putting together some great songs. That has got to be just a really amazing, uh, obviously it's an amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, the second record, you know, uh, the first one uh, was a surprise that, you know, people liked it, uh, you know, because for years you put out music and you just don't know what people are going to respond to, but you continue to do it out of, you know, love and passion for the art form itself and uh you know but then once you have something that's successful you're like well hell what are we gonna do now you know I'm, i actually feel that way as soon as we were finished making the second record i was like well that's exciting what are we gonna do next you right know? and so but you know luckily i'm with a bunch of great guys that we help kind of push each other and uh you know i'm kind of if we weren't on the road we'd be in the studio so um but i feel very fortunate and you know blessed that the songs came out of us, and you know, and I get to be here with you. Yeah. Now, now, are you a guy? So you're saying you're out on the road playing live with the guys, or you guys are in the studio? So do you like have a studio at your house? Are you kind of always making music, always kind of recording stuff, or? Uh, you know, I haven't for the past year and a half. I haven't really had a the time house. Oh. Um. So I've just kind of been living out of the suitcase. Um. But I'm trying to find a good spot, and you know, hoping that I have like a little bit of a sanctuary there to make music and. Uh, you know, and you know, Pat has a pretty good place 
uh, in his back, in the back of his house, and I actually was living in his basement. So, you know, so uh, we have, you know, different, I think Joseph has, Joseph has a little spot, and, um, but yeah, I mean, most of what we've been doing since the spring is just uh, just nonstop on the road. So, yeah. yeah, very good. I want to talk. I want to talk to you about Project Marigold. Yeah, um, I, I, I am. You know, I'm sure that you were one of those guys that when you had the ability, when you got the success, and were able to kind of do some positive things with it. This type of thing is one of the first things you wanted to do. So, can you talk a bit about it? I know it's it's made to to help with, with social programs and things like right. that. But I want to hear from your mouth what it's all about. Uh, well, it originally started one of my best friends and sort of mentor, who's still here in Rhineland, Missouri. He was injured in a construction accident, and his wife is a teacher. Uh, and then after that injury, you know, he had to try to reevaluate what he was going to do. And it kind of just made me think that, like, how many families are like that, you know, and especially, like, a lot of rural parts of the states, you know. Um, just, that, like, you need both partners to work uh, in order to support a family. Mm -hmm. And then when you have an accident and, you know, not everybody has the right insurance or, he, you know, if you're a contractor or a subcontractor, then you may not get any money for anything. And that's kind of his case. And I was like, well, how many families are like that? And so I started to talk to my management and just see if there was something we could do to try to help people in those similar situations. Um, and the idea originated from that, but as we started to kind of dig into Colorado and talk to some of, you know, um, at the time, some of Hickenlooper's staff, um, who's the governor of Colorado who was, uh, just try to see what ways we could help around Colorado. And when I first moved out there, we did a lot of work with homeless people, Joseph and I. And um, so we started to talk to, you know, Hickenlooper staff and realize that there's a huge problem with uh, homeless vets. There's about 300 of them living on this stream uh, in the middle of Denver. And so uh, instead of trying to come up with a, a solution, what I've learned from talking to people is you actually need to like get in there and be a part of what you see might be a problem and people in need and actually talk to them and find out what they need from us. And so um, we try to do that kind of work. Uh, we also, you know, Marigold Project is an endowment, so we donate money to other organizations that have kind of already cut through some of that red tape, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be state or city. Kind of already on the ground running. Right, sort of already thing. on the yeah, ground yeah. running. Um, like yesterday in Chicago, we worked with um, Jamal Cole, who works with My Block, My City. Um, shoot, what is it? It's my block, my city, my neighborhood. Uh, and just trying to work with kids in Southside Chicago to change their worldview because their perspective of things is the block that they live on, you know? And even, even as small as like just being a steward in your neighborhood and like, if you don't want rats, if you want, you know, your neighborhood to be clean, well then you're gonna have to go out and you're gonna have to clean the alley. Sure. You know, and like make sure things are neat and tidy so that when the city does come in with trash trucks, you know, at least clean. And, uh, but then also just, you know, he's like, these kids have never hailed a cab. They've never been downtown. From their perspective, they're like, we can be basketball players or football players or maybe musicians. And so just trying to change their worldview and know that there is more opportunity and try to create that opportunity. So, uh, you know, we still do a lot of stuff with farm aid, luckily. And, um, you know, and there's still, uh, actually in Columbia, Missouri, try to do to help out the, the Rural Crisis Center, Patchwork Farms, um, and they're constantly trying to work on legislation to protect family farmers still, you know, yeah. and that's crazy that, I think it was 79 when the Tractor Brigade, everyone drove their tractors to the White House lawn, and, you know, farmers are still fighting, and, uh, you know, suicide rates are up really high this last year, um, and so, from farmers just losing everything, so and so you know we just kind of sorry that's a mouthful. No, but, no, there's know, a lot, but I mean uh, there's a lot to do. There, there, there is a lot know? to do, and you know our, our um, you know we, we can't rely on just um, the civil servants to do it. We have to become a community and uh, set aside whatever differences we have. I feel like doing that, we come together and and actually make change for good, and uh, you know. But we'll see. I think it feels like the last couple of years, more so than a long time for me in my life, it feels as though the we need to do something about it is more ever present now than before. Because it kind of seemed like a few years ago, it was like, oh, well, this agency will take care of it, or some, these guys will take care of it. Well, now it seems like there's kind of a revolution in, okay, well, if we see that problem, we need to be the right. one, boots on the ground, helping to try to fix that. 
exactly. that, that issue and whatever that, that it is. So, I mean, I think that that's a great thing for all of us. And one thing real quick to wrap it up. I did not know that I needed to hear you sing CCR until I heard you sing CCR. Oh, right. oh man. So you're doing that Americana Awards, I guess, right, right. Through, through CMT, and they show this little clip of you just ripping through CCR. It was amazing to hear. Uh, yeah, you know, it was funny. I walked in, there's, you know, a bunch of the guys in the band, or uh, Buddy Miller, and just, you know, really massively famous people, musicians that I really respect. and. They crank into that song, and you know, I remember having like the just the live tape cassette, you know, with like keep on chugling and all that in sure. my car when I was a kid. And um, I was like, oh, I know the song, no problem. But boy, that range is, I thought my eyes were gonna pop out of my head. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I got a headache now. So, yeah. But uh, you know, it's fun just to collaborate with those people and uh, you know, continue to you know, uh, pay respect to the you know, the, all the musicians that helped me. And encourage me and influence me to get to where I'm at. You know? so. Well, it's Nathaniel. It's really always a great pleasure. I can't wait to see you tonight. I'm telling you this, man. I need this show tonight. I need to dance right. and sweat a little bit. I'm gonna have a couple beers and get a little dumb. All so, right, sounds good. All right, Nathaniel Rayliff, uh, backstage, Steeple Theater Point Holo Show. And then you gotta go on a table. And then you gotta sit on a table. And then you trust in my. Down to the slip and slide. That's just move downs. Chop suey. Alright, so uh, here we are, way back, Point Fest, the first interview of the day. It's real big fish, everybody. Well, Gentlemen, how are you? It's great to see you. Great, great to hey. see you. Fantastic. Hello. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, don't stop. No, more, please. Please, more. It's really great to have you guys back. We, we have, over the years, done so many different things, so many shows. Yeah. I did legitimately the worst stage intro I've ever done in my life at a real big fish show in Mississippi Nights <laughs> through no fault of your own. I came up on stage too late your cue music that night was billy jean from michael jackson i'll never forget and i'm getting up there and i'm doing my spiel and aaron you came up behind me and we're like are you done yet donnie are you are you done are you done with the intro yes i am thank you and then you guys went out and, and rocked it but it's really great to have you here man thank so you guys for coming fault. out no it was not your fault no, no no somebody probably told me wrong but but <laughs> do you remember any of those you know uh, older shows here like because you we've had you at the amphitheater i mean oh, yeah. mississippi nights every, i mean all over the place i was just telling you guys a story about first time i tried like really hot hot sauce i wasn't into it back in the old days but uh the singer of smash mouth at one of these festivals gave me dave's insanity sauce or something and i was like and that was here that was here my first time trying hot sauce. I don't Are even remember. Excited? I don't even remember you guys <laughs> being. <laughs> I don't Scarful remember you guys being here with Smash Mouth. Even. Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe it was somewhere in Florida. Was, I think it was Blues Traveler. Blues. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it could have been. Who knows? Maybe it was the Spin Doctors that gave me. You know what? I will still. No, see. it was Geggy Toth. Wow, oh wow. We are going That's deep into the 90s reference <laughs> of the 90s. I only know the Whoever You Are song. I have nothing else going on with Giggy Ta, even remotely. Marcy Playground. Would that have been funnier? Sex and Candy, St. Joe and the yeah. School Bus. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I could do the single game all day. Uh, all day. So, you know, one of the things... Who sang that song? If you see K. If you see K. What song is it? die. I don't know. Which it's the '90s song. Okay. '90s. <laughs> you said you know about the '90s. Well, I, I mean, I think I know a lot you know about singles. the '90s, but but I don't know like necessarily everything. Okay, he does. I really, All right. I really thought that we were going good places when the interview started. Now I'm questioning whether the you interview were. started. <laughs> 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 never, never, oh never, never a good sign. Uh, I was gonna tell a great story about hot sauce, but I blew it. Yep. Well, Too no, late. I mean, it was it was a good story unless it was from Florida, and then maybe. Maybe it lost a little bit of its thunder. I had hot sauce. So I had so much to work with. Smash mouth, hot, <laughs> hot sauce. sauce. There, there is a lot. Cats. Mm. I was going to ask Blew you about it. how this band always has like the greatest horn section of all time, and but now it does it. Yeah. 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 I was, yeah. I was, yep, I was you're right. Wondering that too. <laughs> but, but Chicago it, can suck it. Yeah. <laughs> the band, not the city. The band. <laughs> 
I bought my dad a Chicago box set for his birthday a few years ago. He still and he was like, I already it. got all these. No, Shut no, up. It was like a six discer, man. It was the most old school Chicago that you could ever want. And nice. He, I mean, cherishes it. It's all That's the transit great. authority That's stuff. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I've never, that has been a band, like my, my dad taught me so much about music, but that was one of those bands that when he put it on, I'd be like, Oh no, this is not for me. But 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 I think I'm wrong. This I mean, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band and everything else. Well, so you're you're like more of the Peter Cetera era, you know, the power ballad. Okay. I'm gonna tell you something that there's nothing wrong with a good power ballad. Good band name, time, Peter Cetera. Peter Cetera song in Karate Kid Two is pretty freaking great. It, it definitely. <laughs> is. I mean, you know, it really is a pinnacle part of that movie as well. Can so you it, sing a little bit of it for us? I am a man who will fight for your honor. I'll be. I cannot believe I'm doing this. That's I a new found. That that's a newfound <laughs> glory song. <Yeah. laughs> Pretty much the same band. Screen to stage album. <laughs> right, whatever it's called. The the long and short of it. All I wanted to do in this interview was tell you that I think you guys are fantastic. Cool. We're really See stoked ya. to have you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And 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 you're just one of those bands that like. I mean, still, when we do Way Back Weekends, the requests for beer, and she has a girlfriend now, and Sellout is one that we still play. Uh -oh. I mean, See, I told you we should put she has a girlfriend now on the set list. Oh. It's not too late. We didn't we'll play yet. We'll do it. I'm just saying that there would be people in St. Louis. There will, it was it. either like she has a girlfriend now or Blues Jam. We chose Blues Jam because it's a festival. We played right. a country jam the other People night. People love hearing new stuff from a band that only has 40 minutes to play. <laughs> <laughs> we are so far beyond. She Lots of time to play now. new songs and jams. I watched a, I, I was at a show the other day, and the lead singer made the statement, hey, this is, this is one of our new songs. And... Like, I have never seen the turnabout Whoa. to the bar and bathroom as I did. Like, so much so that I felt bad and stayed in that spot because I didn't want to join the rest of the people that were rushing I'm going to say that right before beer. <laughs> <laughs> Just and compose the new song at Soundcheck. And people are going to start walking. And then all of a sudden, 14 minutes long. <laughs> goes and like this. <laughs> guys, again, thank you so much. It's great to see you. Real Big Fish, Way Back Point Fest. You guys are the best. Thank you. Yeah, Sorry about you. his shirt. <laughs>by the one and the only Brent Smith of Shine Down. I forgot uh, how that uh, that song goes. <laughs> All I heard was ding 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 ding. I'm like, what 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 are the actual words? I don't think anybody actually knows. What's is that the... girls? Yes. It is. Yeah. There we go. That is some 80s. You know what? We got to bring hardcore. it back for the weekends, right? Okay. The holiday weekends. So we got Brent Smith, Shine Down. It's a Point Big Summer show. Uh, couldn't be more excited to have you guys, Jelly Roll, back in St. Louis. Yep. And John Harvey for the first time. And John Harvey. It's going to be insane. So this is the Planet Zero World Tour. It and, is. You know, I'm not supposed to play favorites, but I'm a little obsessed with the album. Cool. <laughs> a little obsessed with it. Now, what I think makes this album so interesting and so cool is that every few songs... There's a a, a Siri type AI siren. voice siren. Siren. Okay, can you tell me a little bit about Siren? I can tell you how it was born. Um, the dynamic of this album, because our last record was Attention, Attention, mm -hmm. which was a story album and was always meant to be conceptual. We did not set out to make a conceptual piece again with Planet Zero. It just kind of fell into place, but. You know, we wrote this album in the midst of a pandemic. Sure. And uh, there was a lot of things going on in the United States. There was a lot of things going on in the entire world. Um, and I just remember getting to Charleston with Eric, Eric Bass, our bass player, who's also the producer, engineer, and the mixer of Planet the Zero. The brain. Yep. <laughs> and I remember it was like June of 2020, and, and he just looked at me, and we, it was pretty early on in the writing process, but he just said, it feels like we're on Planet Zero yeah. right now. And so it just opened up a floodgate of emotions and very, very thought-provoking ideas, and a lot of the subject matter were things that we had never tackled before, but very rarely does an artist and an audience and a world, not just a country, mm -hmm. uh, you know, experience something like a pandemic for the first time, at least in our generation, the last one was 100 years yeah. ago. <laughs> and so we're, we're all in the same playing field. 
and we, we had to write about what was going on, but we also needed to make sure that we talked about the road forward. Mm -hmm. And the only way, I don't care who you are, the only road forward is together. Amen. You can have opinions, you can have disagreements and all those types of things, you know, and nurture those elements with each other as human beings, but we are much stronger together. So it's a very ferocious record, but it's also a very triumphant record. Absolutely, and I think that siren voice kind of, it says the quiet part out loud, what we're all thinking, yeah. and it, it really puts it in the forefront. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Daylight is Shinedown's 19th number one. It's insane. How, how does that feel? Not real. <laughs> well, the other thing that's crazy about it is, uh, you know, we've Daylight is actually the 29th single that we've released as yeah. a band. So it's the it's the 19th number one at Rock Radio um, in the United States. We actually hold the record for that. But that all goes to you guys and girls. And honestly, I've said this before. I will continue to say it. Shine Down Nation is the most incredible fan base mm -hmm. on the planet. Uh, we only have one boss. It just happens to be everybody in the audience. So all that is because of you and the and the station and the public. You know, not just in the United States but globally. Sure. So it all goes back to the fan base. Yeah, that's something. You know, I've I've been a fan. Like I had, you know, when I was an angsty teenager, I had 45 as my MySpace song. Cool. You know, <laughs> and I I remember going to like the Carnival of Madness shows yep. and, and and the circus theme. And it was such a, a give and take relationship with you guys and it's always been like that and now daylight it's been huge for you obviously and you guys just released a reimagined version can you tell yeah. me a little bit about that how that came about the reimagine is all once again uh in the corner of mr bass um you know they came to us luckily they came to us early mm -hmm. about it and said this is what we want to do we understand that you just released the record with the version that's on the album but if we were to ask you to kind of reimagine it what would you do and so, uh, you know, Eric basically had to request from Barry a couple of things that he needed, request some things from Zach because we were out here on sure. the road. Well, Rob Zombie will be here a little bit later on this summer along with Alice Cooper out at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. That's how we begin a Tuesday show. How are you? My name is Donnie Fandango. This hour, I'll have your chance to win some tickets to see Five Finger Death Punch. I've got Alt 101 coming up in 12 noon, after 12 noon rather. And we'll also see the Killers this summer as a part of the Evolution Festival in Forest Park. Show details for that one and any other show coming to the Lou. Concert calendar section on 1057thepoint.com. And it's Riz. We are backstage at Point Fest and say hi to P.O.D. Hello, fellas. Hello, hello. What's up? What's up? I can hear him right now saying hello. Uh, welcome back to St. Louis. Welcome back to Point yeah. Fest. Yeah. St. Louis. St. Louis, indeed. In the house. You like it here? Oh, yeah. We've been yeah. coming here for many, many, many years. Any, uh, I want to say a few decades. Yeah. It's been a while. For sure. Any, uh, any memories, special memories of St. Louis? Mm. Um, it is, but it's not a good one. We actually went to a, we were, we were touring in a van back in the day and we went to the movie theater by the train station. Uh -huh. And it was like the only movie theater on the planet that's ever ran out of popcorn. Really? I didn't even think they yeah, had popcorn. They didn't have popcorn. They didn't have popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. Like, and we, we were like, this is how St. Louis does it, no popcorn? What's up with that? Our, uh, our radio station used to be down by that movie yep. theater, by the yeah. train station. Yep. And somebody got axed to death in front of that theater. Axed to death. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Like, there's no good memories right there. You know what I mean? And popcorn, that, axed to death. Popcorn, yeah. no popcorn, and axed yeah, to death. Axed. I think there actually is something that... You know, right. a connection That's there. Right. Yeah. But uh, that theater right now is still empty. I think it's been empty for 15 years now. Venue? I think, Come on. Wow. I you, think know what the, you know what the downfall of that theater was? No popcorn. No popcorn. I think the, the poster for Dr. Doolittle 2 is still hanging. What a trip. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, that, in that movie theater. But all in all, you know what I mean? We've been coming to, to St. Louis for a long time. You know, Pops, we always play Pops. Oh, Pops is like great. That. Well, yeah. we love, we love having you here. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time for POD doing your guys' thing. How have you survived all this time? Wow. Well, you know, we take our vitamins. <laughs> well, <laughs> lots cardio. Of lots of water, cardio. No, actually, you know what? Just uh, learning how to uh, get along and, 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 you know, our, our friendships, you know, respect and all the years of touring the world together. We're either on a bus, train, or an airplane together. And um, just respect. And, like, we're like brothers. We, mm -hmm. we get along and sometimes we don't. And learning to accept each other for who we are and stuff like that, I think that helps. I mean, there's not many bands that can actually say that the original core yeah. is together. And, yeah. and we are 27 years later. As 
Long time. 27 long years, man. 27 years. Yeah. That is a long time. I mean, we've done a few Ozfests. I think we hold the record. Here. Yeah. Yeah. We actually yeah. hold the record for playing in this parking lot. Huh. Not the main thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I believe you. How do you guys still make? How do you guys still stay motivated to to play the you know to play alive still? Or Youth of the Nation still? Some of the really old stuff. Well, people people still come out to the shows worldwide. It's not just here in the states. And regardless if they speak English or not, it they, they it sing it, and it just makes a connection, man. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, I mean, there's no greater feeling than getting on stage and seeing a sea of people of, that you do completely don't know on a personal level connecting with the music that you created. And we're, sing along. Yeah, yeah we're definitely a, a positive band, too, so a lot of our um, <clears throat> music, I think, has definitely helped people get through some hard times, and a lot of times we get uh, people come up to us and tell us how much our music may have inspired mm -hmm. them to get off drugs or yeah, and it keeps on and life, it keeps you know on I mean? impacting like the youth. Like so, the the parents of the parents now like they they love the message of our band, so they 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 pass it on down to to their kids. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Their kids grow up listening, and then it just keeps going. Yeah, and going, you know what I mean. So That's it's all. So cool it's a see generational that. thing at yeah, this to point. Yeah, see that I circle. Mean, yeah, yeah. It's a trip because at shows we'll ask how many people have seen us before, and you'll see hands go up. Uh -huh. How many people haven't? And like half of the room has her hands in the air, and you're like, wow, <laughs> what you, Just think about, our so 27 years, just think the, 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 the kids that were seeing you in the 90s are now growing up and are now bringing their kids, kids yeah. to POD shows. Yeah, That's gotta be a trip to even see that. Yeah, yeah that's a trip. So yeah. what, what advice would you give to new bands? You know, what, what is the misconception of it about being a big band? That the young <laughs> bands would, Man, uh, you guys must get paid a gazillion dollars, and oh, you know it's limos everywhere. And There's definitely some peaks and valleys, and you just gotta weather the storm, man. People, I think people give up too quick sometimes mm -hmm. on them, on, the, on them, on themselves and their music and everything else. I think you just gotta stay the course, man. I mean, stay true to what it is that you do and what you believe in, and just you keep grinding. Love it. You know what I mean? You, you gotta, gotta love it. Too, yeah, of course. Sure. This isn't the game to get into to make a ton of money anymore. If that's all you're in it for, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's definitely a byproduct of doing great things, but. Because everyone's getting their hand in the pot. Yeah. And you're just like, wow, we had a nice big pie. Now we get this little piece and we have to <laughs> yeah. share it amongst There's four a lot hands. of hands out. Yeah. So yeah. Some yeah. crumbs, <laughs> homie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so a young band comes up to you and, to say, and says, what? And you go, it ain't like that at all. It's, you know what? He's like, if it's a young band, it's like, you know what? Make sure you get along with the dudes you're jamming with first. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And if you got an attitude, get rid of it. Yeah. Because you're going to be gone tomorrow, straight yeah. up. You know what I mean? It's frustrating, especially now. I mean, you know, there's the, the way you sell records, the way you do all that stuff, like Marcos was saying, ain't the same as it used to be. You know what I mean? Even that was hard. That was harder, I think. Now you get, you know, the, with all the digital age, that's cool. So people get a, they get a false sense because they'll do something real quick and then they fall off. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't yeah. quit. Yep. And it's like, hey, you, if you're in it, you're in it to yeah. win it, not, not half-ass. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of bands break up or, or make a wrong move. And you What's go, man, funny, why are these guys doing this? We were just talking about this today on the bus. I was we, listening. We, we, we'll, well, check it out. We've seen a lot of bands and a lot, I mean, a lot of trends come and go in our, in our, uh, in our career. Mm -hmm. We saw the ska thing came and went. The pop punk thing came and went. Right now, everyone's on this Greta Van Fee, like trying to be like Zeppelin. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and i like, oh, let me see. This band was popular, so all the labels were like, we need a band just like that one. Yeah. yeah. And when we were doing it, it was like, you know, there was a lot of bands coming out kind of similar to what we were doing. We get it, but we're like, man, we're like this old freight train that's just chugging yeah. along. <laughs> Solid steel. <laughs> it's like, you know what it is? Like, it's, you know, here's the radar. It's like, just a little under the radar, just to keep, keep, keep going, yeah, keep yeah, going. Yeah. And the longevity is, is 27 years is, an, yeah. is, is amazing. Time, yeah. It's amazing. And it's how people come out and go, man, I'm here to see POD. Yeah. yeah. We get it. We get it all the time. People are like, we'll see people, and they'll be like, "Man, I, I, I can't believe you." Got, oh no, they'll be like, "You guys are still, you guys are still playing." And we'll yeah. be like, "Yeah, yeah." Oh, we just got got back from around the world or whatever, and we're like, we expect them to like be knowing what's going on with us, but they don't. You know what yeah. I mean? And so you're like, you gotta you gotta recreate fans all the time, every city. You know what I mean? Well, I, I know cool. your lead singer, Sonny, maybe, you know, I don't know if people misconstrued his words, but uh, gotten a little, I wouldn't say trouble, but got some heat for saying the younger bands are not respecting the older bands. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know what, man? Was that something that was taken kind of out of context? That was a band. That was a band that was trying to get some hype yeah, on them. Nobody really cares about them. And they're freaking but... done and gone. You know what I mean? Like they're they were trying to get controversy so they can get a little spike in their action. But... So I don't know if you guys want to if you want to look this up, but you know, Sonny said something about respect. Another band, I forget their name. Yeah. Yeah. Came out and said, "Well, screw exactly. you know, screw exactly. POD." You know, yeah, but they're... you know why? 
because they were butthurt because they were promised our tour, which we knew nothing about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they were all hurt, so they're like, screw POD. Well, Hey, you're like a scorned ex-girlfriend because you wanted to be That we never knew about. That we never knew about. You wanted to be on the tour. We had no clue yeah, about no it. Idea. Now you're going to you try was. to get some publicity out of it. It's stupid. Long story short, it's all done and gone. Yeah. But I think there's still is something to be said about, though, a respect for the guys that have done it for so many years. Yeah, I back, I back what he said 100%. As, 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 as if I was in a younger band, I would want to learn everything I could off you guys because you guys have done everything. That is true. Like, well, like know, we man, look up to the bands that we look up to, Bad Brains. You know what I mean? All the bands that we look at, we, we give them respect. Who, who was the first big band you guys went out on the road with? Uh, Primus. Primus. Primus was the first band. They to took us out yeah. on the first big national tour. We were like, we're out on tour with Primus? Wow. Yeah. What did you learn from them? That How to treat people. Yeah. Like, they treated us really good, man. You know, sometimes you open up for these bands, and it's like they kind of um, put a cap on your sound. volume, your sound and stuff like that. And they just, you know, they don't treat you, know, just don't treat you really well. What's the Almighty Primus treated us really good, and he said, you guys can play as loud as you wanted to. Mm. So it's like, I remember playing, thinking, oh, we're going to kill this, and we do our thing, and Primus would get on, and the place would go nuts. Yeah. But they just, you know, they just treated us good, you know, good people. Well, they're secure as a band. Secure, like, it's the yeah. Almighty Primus. Yeah. No one's going to do what they do. Uh-huh. Right. So they were just, they taught us how to kind of treat the bands underneath us. Yeah. When we take bands out on the road. And, and were you there as a young band just to absorb? Did you just absorb the whole thing? Like watch these guys night in and night out, day in and day out what they do? Yeah, it was cool. I mean, at that point, we had been touring for many years on our own. You know uh-huh. what I mean? That was the first big, big band that kind of took us, you know what I mean, to do that. But it was all, another thing that was cool was he told us, like, uh, Les, he's like, you know what? We're taking you guys out now, but you guys are gonna blow up, and we're gonna ask you guys to take us out on tour, and you guys will probably forget about us. And we're like, hell no! <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, promise. We would love to do that, but he he knew like the wave, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even 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 um, uh, uh, Stone Temple Pilots when we got signed to Atlantic, they told us the same thing. They're like, dude, enjoy the wave, enjoy yeah. the wave. You guys are on top right now. We were on top, and you know, we just just enjoy the wave. It's definitely I mean, peaks and valleys, that's for sure. So we know we got a lot of insight from the. From the dudes that were doing it at a bigger level, yeah. not necessarily longer, but like at a bigger level, longer, and they were just giving us some insight, and it was cool to see their side of it. So those are the good experiences. Now, when you're a younger band and you go out with somebody else, did, was anybody like, I don't, I don't need these guys showing me up anymore? Oh, that happens to this day. You'll see a band that just puts a cap on sound, and wow. you're like, wow, yeah. they're, they're telling us we can't, we can't crank. Yeah. And then you're like sitting there going, what's the, what's the problem Sometimes here, they can be a real douche. <laughs> wow. <laughs> real doucher. Even still to this day, huh? <laughs> All right. So what, I'm, I'm going I'm to leave you with this one question. I'll, I'll go down the row here. What's POD's legacy? When you guys are, are hanging it up, whatever, what is POD's legacy? Well, for me, it's heart. Getting on stage, taking that heart, whether it's their singer or the bass player, the drummer, guitar player. We had a lot of heart. We're like that fighter in the ring that's going up against all odds. Mm-hmm. We're like Rocky Balboa. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Underdog. And we whooping that ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we might come back in the whatever 12th round or 10th round, whatever it is these days. But that was P.O.D. And, you know, we get a little discouraged at times because oh, we should be on the main stage. But we got, we're the kings of the side stage yeah, and we're we'll headlining. Take we'll take that. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good. We're still going to knock people out. I'm just going to say, uh, we've had bands play the side stage and the main stage, and the side stage is where it's at because there's no seats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. Oh, definitely, definitely. Go ahead, Trey. Marco said it pretty good, man. But I just, I think just staying true to POD and just who we are and not, you know, trying to um, be something we're not. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, but he, he, that's it. Marcus nailed it. <laughs> he nailed it, man. All right, well, what do you got? I'm, I, I'm the same, same boat as what these guys said, but, like, I like to be known as, like, the band that played the music that they wanted to play but had something to say, and mm-hmm. they backed it up, and they didn't really turn from it. Um, that's what I love about our band the most, that people come out to the show and they, they connect, you know what I mean, with the things that we're saying, and they enjoy the music that we're playing. And also, in this day and age, it's nice to see positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a positive show, mm-hmm. people having fun, forgetting about, you know, the, the whatever's going on, and, and, you know, rocking out. We really try to... Uh Take what you just said and, and put that on and put that out from the stage. Well, you guys have been walking the walk for 27 years and it's, you know, it's appreciated. Thanks, it's not easy, man, because, you know, there's that side of us when we see these little disrespectful punks. Oh, yeah, like, we'll get oh, gangster, yeah. don't even trip. <laughs> like, we're like, hey, you know what, man? 
we're nice, but we're not a bunch of punching bags. You oh, know no, that saying? ain't never going to happen. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. Have a great time today. POD. Live thank from you. Point thank you, Riz. Time to save some green. Go visit my good friends over at Mount Top Motor Company out there in Troy. They have an incredible lineup of cars, trucks, SUVs. In fact, you can see the whole, whole inventory right now at mounttopmotors.com. And to top it off, no payments for 90 days. They have some of the best financing around, all kinds of ways to save some money. And what's amazing about them is they're just down to earth. It's a no pressure environment. So you're gonna find the right car. You're gonna enjoy the process because they're amazing. So aim higher, go to Mount Top Motor Company. It's mounttopmotors.com. All right, it's Riz, it's Jeff Burton backstage at Point Fest with Eric and Jeff from Stone Temple Pilots. All right, how you doing today? You Good, seem, how are you? You seem like uh, you're like a morning radio show where you're all a amped lot up of, on caffeine. Did you know I do a morning radio I show? Do? Yeah. All right. And a lot of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Uh, good morning. Actually, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi. It's kind of morning. That's why to I'm me, commenting yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, so how have the shows been so far? I mean, I mean, Jeff's the new guy. So what, uh, what hazing has been going on or any? Do you ever see uh, Full Metal Jacket? Well, Five Finger Death Punch will be back in St. Louis on August the 10th at Hollywood Casino Amphitheater. And if you would like to go, why don't you be calling number 10 right now and I'll get you a free pair of lawn tickets to see Five Finger from Missouri. 314-624-3833. From the ill side, 618-398-3833. Color number 10, you're going to see Five Figure Death Punch on August the 10th. Tickets for this show go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. Concert calendar section of 1057thepoint.com can help you out. thousand times, you better hear them say, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I like it that way. Look at this, your dream home. You're renting right now. How about buying a home and building some equity? Look at you, an adult buying a house, maybe your first house. So listen, there are so many pitfalls out there. You could go with the big out of town bank where they treat you just like a number, or you could go with Kevin Putney, the local guy who treats you like a human being. 314-862-0123. He's gonna make the whole loan process simple and painless. It's easy, you call, you qualify, you close. One, two, three, call, qualify, close. That's it, Kevin Putney's gonna find the mortgage that fits your needs. A loan is like a fingerprint. One fingerprint, one loan specific to everyone. Make that call, the process is simple. 314-862-0123, online at 123mortgage.com. I'm going to my house. All right, backstage at Point Fest, and for the first time playing our fantastic festival, a rock and roll band that we have come to like quite a bit in the last six to nine months. Uh, gentlemen, uh, it's great, great to see you from Bad Flower. Welcome to St. Louis and welcome to Point Fest. Thank it's great you to have very you here. much. It's great Thank to you. be here. So I talking wanna, into the fart mics. Talk, talking into the fart mics. Absolutely. Um, the first thing that I just want to like kind of cut straight to it. The, the song Promise Me, we're playing right now, oh, cool, and I good. love it. Thank you. Like, I absolutely love it. When we play it, I honestly feel like it jumps out of the speakers and just, I don't know, man, I think it just sounds great, but it definitely sounds different than the yeah. first two singles before it. I'm assuming that that was a purposeful yeah. move on you guys' part. I think if it was up to me, Promise Me would have been the first single. But uh, there were tactics involved in, in, as to why we went and did it in the order that we did. And I'm glad that we did it in the order that we did because Ghost was such a huge success. And then Heroin, we didn't expect to also be such a huge, huge success. So it was cool to sort of like seal that and now come out with our song that is way less on the, the rock side that everybody knows us to be. Mm -hmm. And it, it shows more of, of who we really are, which is a more diverse group. Right, right. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Promise Me went number one at Active Rock over the week. Heroin. Heroin went, went, Heroin went, did, went yeah. number one. I was like, it did? Uh, no. <laughs> There we go. Hey, already screwed up this interview. Yeah, no, heroin, heroin is currently number we're, we're one. We just went there. I, the reason that I say that is because on the alternative side of things, yeah. Promise Me is, is the one that we are, are, playing, are right. playing right now. Totally. But, but, you know, when you see those kinds of things happen, when you see, you know, the song move up the charts and see people start to play it and really react to it, as a young band, 
I just cannot imagine that sort of a feeling. Uh, it has to be just a really rewarding thing because I'm sure it's something they've been working on for quite some time. Obviously, have a lot of a lot invested in it. When you start seeing the the comeback, more yeah. people at the gigs, how does that trigger in your mind? It is rewarding, but it also like it uh, it becomes normalized really fast, and that's that's the thing that we didn't expect to happen that a lot of people don't realize happens is. We never really have that moment where we're like, oh my goodness, we've made it. Look at look at all these things that we have. It's just sort of like you keep hitting these small tiers and small mm-hmm. tiers and small tiers and eventually you reach a certain point. And if you do sort of look over that cliff at all, at all your past and everything that you sort of went through to get to that point, it's pretty impressive and it's pr- pretty fun to look at it. But we don't spend a lot of time doing that. We right. just keep moving forward. Right. Well, and I think that, that most bands will kind of say this similar. Yeah, because we I mean? never, we'll never feel like we've made it to any degree. Like there's no level of success that feels like the end or the pinnacle point we thought we always thought there was you know like in the very beginning it was we just want to get on tour we just want to be the the support band on the tour and then we we had that oh we just want to sign with a a record label then we got that we just want to you know have our own fans who sing the the lyrics back to our songs we have it like we kept getting achieving these things that we wanted and and um they never felt like it was the end which is a good thing right right well i i I was talking to the guys in see there about this just a few minutes ago Sometimes when you are writing, I've heard from those that are talented enough to write songs, which I am not one, um, that sometimes they don't like to listen to other things while they write because it unduly yeah. kind of influences them. Is, yes. that, is that something? Oh yeah, it's a real thing. Well? For sure. Yeah. It's not that we don't like to listen to other things, but if you do, chances are some little piece of what you're, you've been into is going to be... Uh, it's going to be in your your new music. It's and, just the way it is. Like and, a little chord chord progression, a little lyric change, like little some tiny little thing. It's going to like recycle itself into your new work. So then, do you hear that and go? At I was listening to X and oh, X at the time. Y- y- yeah. Out. Sh- sure. But but we also embrace that. Like if it's not straight up plagiarism or if it's not stealing, it's like it's kind of cool. Right. You know. And we I'd, I'd even admit to that at times. Like listen to this one part in that song. It sounds just like this. Clearly, I was listening to a lot to a lot of that at the time. Did I read this? And I could have read this wrong. And if I did, it'll be embarrassing moment number two. Is in our Spice interview. Girls? <laughs> no, no. Okay. Did you guys record the I don't know how, but they found me record? <laughs> no, not the record. Uh, a choke? I, I mixed the song. Okay. And I recorded the drums in, in our house. Oh, okay. The same place where we recorded heroin, which is also on the radio. Yeah, I just tweeted that. that that's because, what, okay. Yeah, Ryan was texting me and he's like, dude, how cool is it that the song that I recorded in your in your kitchen is on the radio right now. And I was like, oh, I don't even think you realize, but the same kitchen, we recorded our song and it's number one on the radio right now. And it's kind of cool. There's two. It was on my drum set too. Two songs. Did he use your kit? I'm pretty sure he used the- Oh, he did, the yeah, toms. yeah, yeah. He used his snare. But that's right, that's but right. I saw those guys two weeks ago for the first time. Yeah. It was great. incredible. Yeah, they're such a good band. I mean, it was, and I'm not here to talk about another band. Oh, I'm no, talking it's, about it's, your band, you know? Okay. But like, it was one of those things where like, you where you feel like you're watching something before it gets really big and i have heard people say that very same thing about seeing you guys not only here today but but in, in past or in, in people that have seen you like in industry things that started last year were like you got to check out this band bad right Forward because cool. they're right on the cusp of you know of breaking out and that's when i first heard you and it was about a year ago and we have been been playing you ever since what is what nice is, segue from them back to us that was perfect you know, like you snaked right back into it i try to be a professional when it's all great. possible but you know we, we we're very happy to have you guys here and again we're we're very thrilled to have you know, one of the things I like, and I feel like the station is very successful when there's all kinds of different types of alternative on the radio station. Right. And I think that you guys are are very unique in what you do, and we're very thankful to have you here today and oh, look forward you. to uh, continued thank success you. and really hope we get you back here maybe for Christmas or something along those lines. Sure. You know, I mean, I yeah. know there's plenty Christmas. of Christmas. Send, send all the right emails to the right people and That's you can right. make it happen. Yeah. yeah, I don't do those emails. I don't do them either. All right, good. <laughs> it's uh, the gentleman from Bad Flower backstage at Point Fest. Thank you guys very Thank much. Thank you. That was great. Thanks. Ever found yourself in the middle of your daily deuce and thought, huh, I wish this was funnier? Today's your lucky day. Welcome to the number two show. I'm your host, Rafe Williams, stand-up comedian plus size male model and co-host of The Rizzuto Show on 105.7 The Point. What is the number two show? Well, it's me on the toilet talking to you on the toilet, just like it sounds. In each episode, we'll plunge into riveting topics that'll have you rolling in the stall with laughter, so much so that it might freak out whoever's sitting next to you, but I say, hey, lean in, make a friend. Sometimes it's just me. Other times, I'll have interviews with special guests. 
Not now, obviously, dumbass. This is a promo. I'll also have musical performances. Ever heard of tiny desk concerts? How about tiny stall concerts? I'd like to see those nerds over at NPR try that. Is this a genius idea? I don't want to toot my own horn, but you're goddamn right it is. Enjoy the number two show. Don't forget to wipe. Change my mind a thousand times. You better hear them say, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I like it that way. Any man of mine better change the line. He better squeeze in a please and a look at this your dream home you're renting right now. How about buying a home? and building some equity. Look at you, an adult buying a house, maybe your first house. So listen, there are so many pitfalls out there. You could go with the big out of town bank where they treat you just like a number, or you could go with Kevin Putney, the local guy who treats you like a human being. 314-862-0123. He's gonna make the whole loan process simple and painless. It's easy, you call, you qualify, you close. One, two, three, call, qualify, close. That's it. Kevin Putney's gonna find the mortgage that fits your needs. A loan is like a fingerprint. One fingerprint, one loan specific to everyone. Make that call. The process is simple. 314-862-0123, online at one, two. So starting next week, March Music Mayhem is back. 64 bands battling it out to see who will be crowned this year's March Music Mayhem champion. Get yourself signed up. Make your picks now at 1057thepoint.com. And this is brought to you. By our friends over at Amco Ranger and by Anton's Plumbing, Heating and Cooling and Energy Experts.